Good afternoon in Europe. Good morning in America. It's championship day for the GSI Club Sports Series by Ivra. 15 teams are still in mathematical contention for the title across four classes. And after over 3,000 kilometers of racing so far this season, championships in LMP3, Cup, Sport, and TCR will all come down to this one final race of frenetic 700 kilometers at Interlagos. My name is Joey Tebbin. Alongside me is Lorenzo Bonder, who will be with you for the entirety of the race today. I'll be stepping out for Connery Maddock in a couple of hours, but behind the scenes for all those hours as well will be our producer, Dustin Ollis. But Lorenzo, we go to Interlagos once more. We were just here for the Endurance Series a couple of weeks ago. That was absolute chaos, frenetic all the way around. And now we're going to do that with uh, two or three more classes and four championships on the line. Yeah, it's going to be insane. Uh, if we're basically going what the, the Endurance Series kind of like provided us, then we can be for a very compelling race from start to finish, no doubt. Compelling is definitely going to be a word for it. Frenetic, crazy, insane. We're going to break out the, th the, th the thesaurus, if I can figure out how to say it, because it is going to be a lot of fun today. It is the championship finale. We kick things off with the preseason race at Daytona, or actually not the preseason race at Daytona. I should say the uh, season opener at Daytona. The preseason race was at Most Sport, then Road America, Road Atlanta, Indianapolis, VIR. It was an American tour for the first five rounds of the season. And everything finishes off here, a little bit further south in South America, in Brazil, 3,000 kilometers, 3,100 kilometers have been raced so far, multiple different winners in every class. It has been highly competitive this season, highly even. And when we take you through those championship uh, standings in each class, it's between three and four teams in each class that are still eligible, mathematically eligible for the championship. There's going to be a lot of math. We're going to be struggling with our calculators all day today, but we'll figure it out somehow, as this is how the format is going to work for the event. Qualifying, if you've never seen it in the GSI Club Sports Series by Ivra, is class by class. Each class gets 15 minutes of their own time on the track to uh, nail one lap and find themselves as high up the grid as they can possibly ask for. Then a little bit of a warm-up, a little bit of a gridding session, and then the green flag flies. A little bit later, 134 laps theorized on the clock, 700 kilometers. It's a long day. It's not quite the endurance series, Lorenzo, but it's an endurance race of its own. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a shorter race, but I think in this one, teams will have the sprint uh, the endurance mindset you cannot race uh, like this is a sprint like they probably would race uh any of the race out of the races in the season where we had 500 kilometers even 700 kilometer races i think this one goes with, with the endurance mentality just because it is interlagos it brings something different it's always chaotic there's always something happening uh but if i remember correctly Last time we actually did club sport at Endorago's, I might be wrong. We 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 went green flag all the way. You could certainly be right. I honestly could not tell you that, but if it is anything to go by, last time we were at Interlagos, Hydra Race G or uh, at VIR rather, Hydra Race Geodesic won last time out. Last time in Interlagos, we'll pull up the results to uh, get you the most recent results there in a couple of moments. But these are the four classes that'll do battle in the GSI Club Sports Series as they have all season. LMP3, it's single make. It is open setup though. So you can decide, you want to reward yourself on the straight line, on that long front straight at Interlagos, or in the tight and twisty middle sector. The cup class is the Porsche Cup class, to be specific, single make as well. And then the club class is our GT4 class. Aston Martin, McLaren, Mercedes, and Porsche all on offer. TCR class, three cars on offer with the Audi, the Honda, and the Hyundai models in that TCR class. That's a lot of cars. My, uh, my math is correct. That's nine cars. That could be very difficult, even though that is only a one-digit number. But that is a lot of different vehicles on track. And if you've never been with us for this series, you are going to be prepared for something absolutely insane. This is what you've missed for the first five rounds of the season so far. Team Hoisingvelt leads the championship in TCR. But as I mentioned, there are four teams in math mathematical contention theoretically the maximum amount, amount of points you can score in this series is 134 100 points for the win 34 points for leading and halfway the minimum points you can score is zero if you dnf and fail to run the uh, minimum amount of laps to score points so that means the team hoisting felt impulse racing hydra race geodesic racing and Brabham Esports in a little bit of an underdog position are all still theoretically mathematically eligible for the championship 
things would have to go pretty crazy, Lorenzo, for it not to go to Team Hoisingvelt or Impulse Racing, though, because they've won every single race so far this season. And we'll see if that changes. Maybe something could flip around. Brown and Esports, you never know what they could do. But Lorenzo, it is time for qualifying. Cars are on track right now from the TCR class. Mm -hmm. And it may be slightly closed qualifying within the classes. It's not closed qualifying on track, though, as it's all the TCR cars together on track. Use the draft to your advantage if you find a buddy. Yeah, this is like a draft fast, basically, from start to finish. This is one of the tracks you can follow the drivers closely to one another. It's going to be an interesting one. How they will tackle that? Who's going to be leading the pack? Even leading the pack is actually a really good thing because you're going to be in this draft train and sharing uh, with other drivers. But uh, one one fatal mistake over here, and this, this is the important stuff we haven't even talked about, uh, Interlagos, which uh, I have a love-hate relationship with Interlagos the iRacing version, because iRacing version has some uh, off-track limits that are, in real life, they're okay, but for iRacing, they're very strict. So you have to be nailing your lap uh, while trying to have, you know, follow these off-tracks. For example, at uh, Mergul, at like turn number four, right? Uh, where you can, you go slightly into the green astroturf, you got a, you got an off track. So you have to be mindful of that every single time. And I'm going to do it for the first time today, Lorenzo. Jun So. Jun So. Jun So. There you go. I'm trying my best. One of these days I'm going to master it, but the leaders crossing the line for the first time in TCR. Laps are now hot. First laps on the board for Obsidian. They put it up on pole. Wave Italy second, Impulse third. But now you're really on the clock. Tires are warmed up. The fuel's starting to burn off. We're going to start to see these lap times come down, I think, for the entirety of these 15 minutes, Lorenzo. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's not going to be like the GT4 or, or GT3 Cup strategy, and maybe even the LMP3, where you're going to do like one, maybe two fast laps. Over here, this is actually a very interesting topic. For these cars, for the other cars, not these ones specifically, uh, you can actually do two hot laps, maybe three hot laps, and then come back into the pit lane. These cars, like you said, their tires have uh, warmed up a little bit. But for you to get a proper uh, optimal performance, you need to have, a, I would say, maybe two to three laps already ran uh, with the car already. So basically two fast laps and one, uh, and one out lap, that would be enough for you to you know, set optimal times around the track. And we'll update you on this as the race goes on. But the rule in the club sports series is that in order to score points for a race, in order to be classified, you have to complete 90% of the laps completed by the winning car in your class. So theoretically, if there's an early DNF or even a late DNF for any car in this class, they could be coming home totally empty handed. If there's an early DNF, it'll be even more totally empty handed because that would mean no halfway points and no end of the race points. That's why there's still four teams in contention. I do have to give a big shout out to Casper and the uh, Ivor admins. They actually have a live points sheet for us, so we don't have to do much math of our own in the booth, which is always very difficult. Asking commentators to do math, we should be able to look over and uh, tell you the exact numbers as they come in. Second laps in the board, Lorenzo, and that's the improvement I was talking about. Gonzalo Fabi with the quadruple draft improves by a full second to put it on pole. And, and we can kind of say, like, Gonzalo would be the, you know, the home driver of sorts. Drives in Interlagos quite a lot in, in South American and Brazilian championships from uh, from time to time. So I, I would say probably the most experienced driver in terms of, you know, driving in Brazil, if you want to pick, you know, regionality and everything. But uh, good lap from Wave Italy, a team that uh, we normally would expect to be at the top of the board, you know, having at least a win or fighting for top three, but a struggling to get within that top three for the time being. And I think this is the race there they have to get it perfect every single time and come with, with a little bit of luck to get into that top three unfortunately wave italy have not had the most luck this season haven't won a race yet and at vir they had a 60 second penalty added to their uh, post race time which i think took them out of mathematical contention for the championship this week they've been strong though they've been on the podium and uh, this could be Maybe not a championship day for them, but it could definitely still be a big day to uh, put a big statement win on the board and then look forward to next season where they can fight for the championship again. Patrick Kubinji crosses the line for Team Hoisingvelt. We're talking about the importance of the draft, Lorenzo. No draft whatsoever, and he's only a tenth off pole. Now, this is an interesting thing, like I said before. Interlagos is a track that uh, is, I think draft benefits you 
after the Junção, right? Because you're gonna have this big straight esque, right? Because it is not really a straight. You have like two left hand curves for you to get into the center. And it's like you're gonna see Jordan Bachmeyer, you know, do his lap 242.895 that will bring him into fourth place. There you go, Impulse doing his lap as well, but I don't think that was an improvement for Impulse. But I think the interesting aspect is, other than that, the, the, the long straights, the half portion of the track, the, the, the more, uh, you know, truncated portion of the track where you have the hairpins and everything, the draft is not going to benefit you way, way that much. So uh, this is uh, why clean air is not also a bad idea from time to time. Alice Pleva in the Veloster trying to take the back of this train, trying to stick on the, uh, the last precipice of the draft. Seems to be slightly difficult, though. Draft range in a closed wheel car like that, in a TCR car that's basically a, a blob. It's basically a rectangle on the track. I think you do need to be a little bit close to get the full effect of it, but he's certainly pushing, coming up the hill, hopping the curbs. Alas is pushing, and he definitely needs to be seventh place. Not the worst place in the world to start when it's such a small class like this. There's plenty of time to improve in the race. But track position is always important. It's important for confidence, and it's important for setting up the first half of the race. To, uh, to start ahead of the field before the traffic even comes into consideration. Not only that, but I think for Interlagos, it's going to be important for uh, traffic management because you can, can you can kind of dictate your own life. And because we have four, three other classes to contend with, and sometimes these these corners are going to be key for, especially for GT4s whenever they come around the TCRs. TCRs have more aerodynamic range than the GT4s does. But uh, because of a smaller class, I think this can prove to be a eased up race for them. But it, but because the track is small, it's going to be truncated every every single lap they go on. Here we go. Any help from the draft from any of these guys? Looks like the answer is no. Times all staying essentially identical. But now Pleva does have that quadruple draft. You see a uh, Fabi in the Wave Italy car, the black and uh, black and red. Hyundai in third in line. That's going to be a double draft for him. It's going to be a singular draft for the second car in line, the 133 of Obsidian, and it's going to be no draft whatsoever for the Hydra Race Geodesic number 162. A little bit further back through Yun Sao, the team Hoisingveld number 148. Patrick Kabinji still the loneliest boy in the world. He's got no help whatsoever, but as we saw in that previous lap, he might not even need any. Things are tracking somewhat well for him by my timing. It looks like he may be a couple of tenths up. Could this potentially be a pole lap for the loner Patrick Kabinji? Let's see as he brings it across the line, past pit lane, and to the line. Is it going to be improving on a 142.6? It is. If my timing screen is correct, yes, it is. Team Hoisingfeldt and Patrick Kabinji put it on pole. The championship leaders putting themselves in the best position. Absolutely. So that is a really good scenario for them. As uh, you can see, Mark, uh, Marcel Jokheim uh, from Impulse Racing now leading through Juncel. And let's see if he's uh, going to make an improvement. Weird to see Impulse not having the best of days with that Honda Civic right there. But uh, still a lot of time in, the, in, in in qualifying. But I don't think that Jokheim is right now focused on having a hot lap. He's going to let Jordan, ba Jordan Beckbeier lead the two-car pack. So now he's going to follow suit and open up his lap. It's slightly difficult to keep track of the timing here because it is a full session with race control just sending cars out on track. But I believe we have about six or six or five minutes left, five or six minutes left for a qualifying. So still a couple more laps to go. Wave Italy put it back on pole. The draft definitely helps. Gonzalo Fabi up top now by a full two tenths. He's going to drop back in line now and let the Hydra Race Geodesic car get a little bit further forward. And I think that may be a slightly heroic thing on paper. I think that's actually Gonzalo just trying to get back in line and set something up for a lap in one lap's time. Yeah, or maybe cool down the tires a little bit, you know, just follow suit. Uh, the driver from Hydra Race Geodesic, which is Sam Blaise, uh, as now he leads the pack. You have Fabi, Polasek, and Pleva in this train. And uh, it's always important for you to cool down the tires. You need to cool down these tires. And uh, while they seem to maintain a little bit of life with the car still light as well, you can actually do really good laps around in Orlagos. If you've been watching Race Spot TV on some other nights, you've seen Michael Polasek on a very, very hot streak in uh, one of his other leagues in the Porsche Club of America. 
He is uh, he's a member of his uh, local region. Did some esports events for that series as well. Did two races, won both of those races. If you want to know the uh, level of driver that Michael Polasek is, he's going to be looking for a little bit more glory here today. Hydra Race Geodesic, maybe another tale of what might have been this season. They're still in championship contention, theoretically, 106 points off the championship lead, but they've been very fast at times. There have been times when it looked like it might be a Hydra Race Geodesic sweep in all four classes. It was never the case, though, as Sam Blees and this TCR were never able to win a race. That could finally happen, though, in the final round of the season. He crosses the line. 142-7 for the 162. Puts them dead in the middle of the field. Fourth of seven. Yeah, that's that's a really good position for the time being. As Plava had runs wide into the center S, uh, but comes back into tow, but kind of breaks away a little bit of how the action is going to uh, fiddle out for this potential final lap here at Interlagos. And, uh, this is every car open. other than the uh, than the Hoisingveld car. They've all yeah. left him. They all left him. It's kind of like uh, forever alone. I don't want to be forever alone. Well, we know you won't be, at least, Lorenzo. Oh, I know, I know. I I'm I'm ready. Like uh, I'm ready for whatever gives it to me. You know, Interlagos always gives something, and I'm I'm, I'm ready for it. We'll be talking about Lorenzo's new life update a lot over the next couple of hours. I can only guarantee that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see if we can guarantee Patrick Kabinji an improvement. Looks like the answer is no, but you want to talk about consistency. Almost exactly the same lap time for Patrick Kabinji across the line. No improvement, no draft. But is oh my goodness, F1? I think an F1 qualifying session has broken out, Lorenzo. Yeah, uh, you, it's kind of like you go, no, I go, you go, no, I go, no, you go, no, I go. I think they will still make it around in time to set one more lap, but... It's, uh, it's a little bit of a game of chicken. Alice Pleva, last driver in qualifying right now. Maybe the uh, maybe the scapegoat out front, forced to start up front. Then you got Hydra Race Geodesic, you've got Brabham, you've got Obsidian, you've got Impulse, and you've got Wave Italy on pole and last in line. That's, uh, that's what, a, a quintuple draft, potentially, for Gonzalo Fabi? Yeah. Uh... It's 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 an ask or ask file or like uh, someone said in our YouTube chat. Yeah, we we are reading YouTube. We are reading our race spot chat over here. Uh, the conga line. Indeed, it's a party. It's always a party in their life. Actually, let me let me just make a quick statement. This is not the conga line. You can say this is the samba line. Because there it you is go. Brazil. Conga's uh, yeah, conga's Spanish. Yeah. Nothing against conga. I like the conga line, but uh. We got to we got to regionalize a little bit. Exactly. The great Congo versus Samba wars of the uh, of the history of South America. Let's ride on board with Gonzalo Fabi for what very well could be the final lap of this qualifying session. As you mentioned Lorenzo, sort of a home driver, a couple of a uh, couple of hundred miles away in Argentina, but representing South America all the same without any Argentinian tracks on the service. Patrick Kabinji, the loner who's not in this train improves to uh, second place. He still needs a couple of extra tenths, though. And with Gonzalo stealing the draft off that impulse number 122 behind, we could see an improvement on this final lap, Lorenzo. I don't think it's going to come from Alice Pleva. He is uh, forced all the way wide, and uh, he'll be done exiting Pinherino. But still five more cars here, all in contention for pole, with about three corners to go. Yeah, absolutely. Looking at Fabi's lines, really fast lines out of him. And you can see also... Having someone like Jokheim uh, pushing ahead in in the train line is always good. As I think, uh, I think there was a Hydra race car that was left behind uh, around Junção at the entry of Junção. So uh, let's see what every lapse will be in water uh, in about like ten, five seconds. Five, four, three, two. One, I counted that pretty fast. I think Lorenzo was actually accurate, but one, two, three, four, five cars across the line. Fabi does improve by a couple of thousands. Doesn't improve his position, though, because he's still on pole. Obsidian puts it up to second, though. Hoisingfeld third, Brabham fourth, Impulse fifth. And now I think it all comes down to Patrick Kabinji. Final lap for him. Can he find two tenths all on his lonesome? Everybody else comes down pit lane. Qualifying's over for the TCR class. This is the final lap that'll count. And it all comes down to mashing that throttle to the floor and Patrick Kabinji trying to do it on his own. And does he have the pace in that uh, Veloster, though, to match? Not quite. It is an improvement, but it is an improvement. It puts him in second. 
P2, good for Team Hoisingfeld. The championship leaders will start ahead of all of their championship rivals. It'll be second, though, behind Wave Italy. Still a comfortable position, though. We'll do some math for the championship all night long, all day long. But uh, if you finish second, even second at the end of the race, plus second at halfway, that's 120 points versus 134 points, the maximum, even if uh, Team Hoisingfeld finishes second to Impulse, for example, they would still win the championship. There's one of your championship scenarios. But let's take a look at the results from the TCR portion of this qualifying session. This will be your grid in TCR. Wave Italy will lead the field to green in TCR ahead of championship leaders Team Hoisingfeld. Obsidian and Brabham are row number two. Brabham still in championship contention, theoretically. They just need a little bit of craziness or a lot of bit of craziness, I should say, with Hoisingfeld. Impulse and Hydra Race Geodesic all running into big trouble. Speaking of Impulse and Hydra Race Geodesic, potentially a, a lower qualifying position than they were expecting. Jochheim and Blees fifth and sixth, and Alice Pleva was kind of getting kicked around there in the qualifying session. Still put in a pretty solid lap time, only 1.5 seconds off Gonzalo Fabi on pole. I mean, the core team start seventh and last in TCR. It's a very small class though, Lorenzo. It's the slowest class of all. And that means they do uh, sometimes have the possibility of getting bullied around. It may come down to how the traffic treats these TCR cars more than how they treat each other at the end of these 700 yeah. kilometers. Absolutely. We're not going to see full aggression, I think, from these cars when the race starts. I think they're going to try to follow suit one another. But we know from the get-go, we, we're probably going to see something like Benji and Fabi trying to work together to try to break away as the best that they can uh, at the start of the race. And Paul's like the other guys following suit. And then when traffic comes, you're going to see who's going to come out on top. So looking forward to see uh, this race in a little bit for TCR. Should be the more interesting category, despite being one of the lowest in numbers. Well, let's keep the carousel of entertainment going. We got three more classes to go through in qualifying here. And this is the sport class, the GT4 class, we should say. And this championship separated by 124 points between first and fourth. That means that Hydra Race Geodesic, Impulse, RJD, and Huge Ass are all still in championship contention. There's lots of scenarios that are going to have to go well for Huge Ass to make that happen, but they've definitely done some uh, pretty incredible things this season. I think if I remember correctly, back at Road Atlanta, they had an excellent fuel save to the end of the race to pick up a second place, and that very well could be what keeps them in championship contention today. Mm -hmm. RJD was on a similar strategy, didn't go quite their way. They ended up in third at that Road Atlanta race. Impulse and Hydra Race Geodesic, they're going to be the real main characters here. Hydra Race Geodesic winners at Road Atlanta and VIR. Impulse winners in Indianapolis. Then it was Geeks Energy, Fiercely Forward, and uh, Glacier Racing that won the other two events the first two rounds of the season. They had some bad luck. They're out of contention, though, in this championship. And I can't wait to get this started. It's a slightly big margin at the top. 41 points between Hydra Race Geodesic and Impulse. But that can flip around very, very quickly. And uh, it's going to come down to this final race. But qualifying underway for the sport class now. And uh, quite a bit busier, Lorenzo. It's not seven cars in this class. It's more like uh, more like about 23. Yeah, I think it is the biggest uh, car uh, field that we have in Ivra. And four different models. The McLaren, the Mercedes, the Aston Martin, and the Porsche. And all four represent them, if I'm not mistaken. It's a little bit of a reverse best place. You see a lot of them. You see a couple of McLarens. You did see the Aston Martin from Satellite Racing. And uh, there is, I believe, uh, one. Or there's the BMW as well, I should say, of a uh, huge ass in their traditional BMW. And yeah, I believe that is the, uh, the fourth entrant. There are no Porsches in the field. It's the BMW, actually, that uh, makes up the fourth car in this category. Oh, yeah, it's because I think Hydro Race, uh, the geodesic team runs the Porsche at the, at the 24 Hours eSports Series, not the, not the McLaren. But I think, I don't know if they, I cannot remember if they run both cars uh, in there. But nevertheless, it's always good representation throughout the board. Um, meanwhile, on sport, it's, it's, it's funny to think this has kind of like been the, just a Ram uh, and John Betaforge show, if you think about it. Yeah, two of the best drivers in a GT4 car on iRacing, and it shouldn't really be a surprise that as the first laps come in, who else is it on pole at the moment but Hydra Race Geodesic's Justin Ream. It's so difficult to beat him, Lorenzo. You and I both know from this series, 
from uh, other league competition in the PRL in the GT4 series. He was totally dominant in uh, Porsche Canada competition in his home country. Very, very fast there as well. That guy knows how to drive a, a GT4 car. Maybe better than anybody else. Yeah, uh, I would argue he's uh, he's probably one of the best active racers, if not the best North, Amer uh, North American active racer on GT4s, right? 100%. Uh, uh, because that is his expertise. I've never seen Justin Rehm uh, outside of a car that is not a GT4, to be very honest yeah. with you. He knows his niche. The thing that's difficult, though, is if you think about the best North American GT4 driver, I feel like we think about Justin Ream and we think about John Badefer, but we never get to see them compete with each other because they're uh, they're in the same car a bunch of the time. Yeah, absolutely. And but uh, but also John is uh, very good on GT3s. He's very good on prototypes. I think he drives the prototype on the entrance series, if I remember correctly. So uh, in the IndyCar as well. In the IndyCar as well. In the cars, I, I've dabbled a few laps against John, John, even though I got my butt kicked most of the time. But, well, I'm coming back to Indy cars, so I gotta, I gotta deserve a beatdown. We're getting you back. We're getting you back in the in high level Lorenzo competition. That's what we want to see. Impulse Racing in the top five currently. Sasha Anglesey, the driver chosen to qualify this car. It's still early days. There's been a couple of trains formed. None of them have really stuck together like they did in the TCR class, though. There's a lot of loners out there, and uh, and it's coming down to thousands now with no draft to help a lot of these cars. Yeah, in, in, GT, in GT4s, you're still going to have this draft fest, but uh, it, it's like the TCR. It's not going to work a lot on the curves, but it is going to work 100% when you go around the straight. I think more so than, than the TCRs already. Right, so it's going to be an interesting one. Uh, and uh, update on the Porsche because we have an update on the Porsche. You said that we had no Porsches, we had a Porsche. I wasn't, I know I wasn't going crazy. Um, the Porsche is banned for the, from this race. Uh, oh, yeah, the four, they did, you were right, they did have the 463 at Hydra Race Studio Essex, but they're uh, they're not here today. You're exactly right. Yeah, they're 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 in the naughty list. Oh, no. Yes, unfortunately, that is uh, that is one of the things that can happen in the club sports series. You're a little bit too naughty. You can get parked for a day, but I have a feeling we may see that Porsche back if it's uh, if it's a little bit more active next season. Seen a lot of times coming in now. Hydra Race Geodesic still on pole. Glacier and Impulse rounding out the top three. RJD and Hugh Jass in the top five. Ronald Grossman trying to get Core Sim Racing off the bottom, and he improves by a full second. That's absolutely going to get them off the bottom. Puts them an unlucky 13th, though. Ronald's going to be looking for a little bit more time in that lone Mercedes with no draft help around him. Absolutely. Meanwhile, looking at Frederick Schwartz for uh, Geeks Energy uh, by Fiercely Forward, looking to see if he can bounce back uh, from the from for some of these uh, final GT4 races that he has done. Uh, not the not been the brightest moment for Frederick Schwartz in GT4s uh, th throughout the season but uh, looking for a good bounce back in the final race of the season. Geeks Energy, Fiercely Forward, they have definitely had some pretty solid results in the recent past. Remember back to the last Endurance Series round, the 1,000 kilometers of Spa? It was an underdog win for this team in the, uh, in the overall class. I believe won for the first time in the series, for, uh, for the first time in three or four years. So they're mm -hmm. definitely running on an Ivra high right now. And uh, and the draft, a double draft for Frederick may help him a little bit here. Doesn't look like it. I think he's realized that lap time may be not going his way. I think he may have backed off a little bit there, but I could be very wrong. It's a long straight. The perspective's hard to see. Is there going to be an improvement? The answer is, in fact, no. It's going to be another lap for Frederick Schwartz to see if he can improve. Yeah, and you're seeing, and this is where we're going to start to see this, uh, you know, dub, uh, singular outlap, double uh, double fast lap, or a singular outlap, and uh, one fast lap, then coming to the pit lane, right? A thing that is going to uh, go on for quite a while now. So it's going to be an interesting uh, thing that we're going to be looking for in this qualifying, and then onwards, of course. Lorenzo, I need you to be my eyes. Do you remember when the, uh, when the clock started for this session? Was it at like 48 minutes, 50 minutes? Something like that. Yeah, we, we have time. We have time. Yeah, I got to I got to remember the clock. It's always hard in this qualifying session. I think it officially started at. 
Our timing says it starts at 1410, which was 10 minutes ago. And there should be five more minutes, but I think that might be slightly different. We might just have to wait for uh, for the final lap well, to come in. I can get you that info really quickly. Yes, if you could do that, that would be awesome. Because it was very easy in TCR, because everybody came down pit lane at the same time, but we have to we have to keep track of the clock slightly more diligently this time. Yeah, absolutely. I think we started at 46, something like that. 45, right. 46. So at Actually, 31. 47, 47, 47. Okay, so at 32, we'll take the checkered flag. Remember that number, everybody. And by everybody, I mean I'm pointing at myself. I need to remember that. But uh, Sven Demmel for huge ass in the big draft coming down the front straight of the uh, echelon Mercedes of Zach Hebert. This is a, a very good session so far for huge ass. P5 in that BMW is good stuff, and it may be an improvement here with that full draft. It is indeed an improvement by a couple of thousands, and a couple of thousands is all you need in a field as close as this. Hugh Jass and Sven Demmel go to third. Happy to see their, uh, that BMW going strong. Uh, we, know, we often don't see that BMW being featured in, in, onto, the, onto the top five, so uh, good to know that uh, the German brand being represented strongly over here. Yeah, this was the first GT4 on iRacing all those, uh, all those years ago. Maybe fallen uh, by the wayside, it is... I think some drivers think a little bit clunky, a little bit awkward, and very tall and heavy. But if you can drive it, there's uh, there's definitely some drivers that like this car, yeah. and occasionally it does get a good draw with uh, with the season, with the BOP in official racing, and just with uh, with driver comfort in league competition. I mean, still the only car though, and they're going to pull down pit lane. I mean, also another thing that we have to talk about is um, about the M4 specifically is they still have the best version of the M4 because I cannot still take the M4 with the actual GT4 that we have racing in, at a Europe GT4 Challenge, at IMSA Pilot, with that front grille that is hideous. Please take that away. Uh, the M3 is okay, but the M4, no. Please, no. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's awkwardly big. I feel like grills have, grills have been getting bigger for every car, like even the Mercedes. Like that is not how big a Mercedes grill was a couple of years ago. It's definitely it's it's embiggened. Yeah, uh, I, I don't I don't know. Uh, I, part of me thinks this is error. Of course, they're gonna say, "Oh, but it's brand new. We gotta show up the, you know, the, all the all the logos and emblems and blah 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 blah." The thing is. Of course, you're going to talk about, oh, this is aerodynamical as well, because you're going to have allowed the air intake into the engine. It's going to, uh, you know, cool down the car better, blah, 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 blah. But sometimes, think about the, the aesthetics. It's not going to work. Jeremy Rouleau is the driver we're uh, putting our Panopticon on, and he'll round through Jun Sao down the front straight, full throttle. Wave Italy did very, very well in TCR qualifying. They'll start from pole in the lowest class, but in the second lowest class, can Jeremy Rouleau make it two Wave Italy cars on pole? Past pit lane entry, past the attenuator, keeps it pointed straight. It's going to be an improvement by, again, just one-tenth of a second. That will get him two extra spots. Won't quite be pole like his TCR counterpart, but it'll be P6 for now with a couple of minutes left in sport qualifying. Yeah, absolutely. As... Uh... I think right now is the is the go time for everybody. You know, looking at Justin Ram doing his laps, and uh, let's see if that McLaren uh, still has more strength in him and uh, can make Zach Brown happy somewhere. I don't know who, where would he be nowadays. Could be in uh, leaving Australia. Could be going back to the United States. Uh, it, we never know. That that man is everywhere. He could be on the moon for all we know. You never, you never know what Zach's getting up. Have to. we, have we sent the rockets to the moon yet? Like, has Elon Musk achieved that achievement yet? Well, Justin Ream has just gone to the moon. He's on pole already by about two tenths. He didn't even need to do that, and yet he still says, "I'm improving. I'm finding more time." Improves to uh, the first driver in the 138.7s. Jonas Vanner, good lap from him in the RJ Day, RJD Aston Martin. He puts it P2 and uh, gets that little bit closer to the back of Reem. Still needs about two tenths to knock him off pole, though. It is a massive margin by sport class standards so far. 
Yeah, absolutely. And you know what the interesting thing is, like, if you're thinking about it, about stuff. Geodesic is a, you can say, is a dinosaur brand. Like, he's been long in eye racing, right? He's in P1. Glacier racing is, old, is nearly as old as myself. Well, I'm 32, and you're going to 33. It's, it's been going on for 14 years. In P3, Hu Jazz is also old. In P4, and Impulse, uh, in P5, also a very uh, old team of sorts. So, good to know traditional teams are onto the top five, providing, uh, you know, the traditional teams running strong. What do you think the oldest team in sim racing is? Ooh. There's your trivia question. What's the oldest one? Because I have no idea. Good question. Um, we could argue that maybe... I'm not going to say Redline, because I think Redline is not as old. But I would argue maybe Coenda or Redline or Glacier are... Are in there. Are and there for any, those like, reading uh, YouTube chat, I'm not calling you guys out. I'm calling the you guys teens old, <laughs> but that is all the good stuff. I'm 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 making a compliment. Okay. Are there any of those like? Because I know the Finns, they've been at it for a long time. There's some of those leagues that started on like Grand Prix Legends and like offline racing. Are any of them totally uh, totally connected by the timeline? Have there any of them been around since like the 90s? Good question. Um, if there's any fins in the chat, let us know. Johnny, help us. I know you're reading the chat. Jacob O'Reilly, though, crosses the line. No improvement for him in terms of position. Improvement, indeed, in terms of time. But if you want to know how close this class is, one second separating 17 cars, and it might only be eight-tenths of a second if Justin Ream wasn't here because he has put it on pole in the sport class. Clock is uh, ticking down to zero for the uh, the sport class on track. Wave Italy, they know they're not going to improve. Jeremy Rouleau rolls that Mercedes down pit lane. There's only a few more stragglers left to go. XBD Emerald, maybe one more lap for them. It's not looking good. The red on the ticker means they're not looking to improve, but there'll still be one more lap for Cano Lopez and one more lap a little bit further back for the purple and black Mercedes of Zach Hebert. See what Canyo can do. Lots of green around Interlagos. You got lots of natural greenery. You've got the green walls. You've got the green flags even. Let's see if we can do this green car proud. Bring it up into the top 10. It's not looking good. And it's especially not looking good because Canyo pulls it down pit lane, as does Zach Hebert and the rest of the field as well. Uh, they're all but done. Qualifying is done, basically. So, yep, checkered flag for the sport class and... Basically, we can break out the race spot soundboard once again because in a GT4 qualifying session on Race Spot TV, who else could start from pole but the Hydra Race Geodesic McLaren of Justin Ream? He'll lead the field to green in that car. RJD gets P2 after an excellent lap from Jonas Fanner, and Glacier Racing with Marco Nermolo rounds out the top three. They're trying to keep their championship chances alive. Might need some bad luck for the number 462, though. Hugh Jass, excellent qualifying for that BMW. Sven Demmel puts it P4. Then Sasha Anglesey and Jeremy Rouleau round out the top six. Uh, Geeks Energy and Fiercely Forward. Satellite, Saybelt, and Geeks Energy round out the top 10 on the grid. But the hits are going to keep on coming. It's a big sport field. XBD, Emerald, and K Kramer make up row six. Then Core and German Sim Racing, a pair of Germans. Archer and Echelon, Hyperion and the Rusty Spatulas, and Boots and VDS by Undercut. Round out 19 cars in the sport field this week. The smallest field we've had all season, but still plenty of action amidst all of those teams. The Rusty Spatulas starting from the back. We know they're going to be looking forward, and uh, there's going to be tons of action in that class. But there's two more classes to go. Qualifying is not over. Up in the speed one more time. We're lowering the amount of cars one more time, though. Single make Porsche Cup class and four or three teams, rather. The smallest championship field in contention. ATRS, Visceral, and SimCity Racing, all within mathematical contention. Unfortunately, Olympus just a few points short to actually consider themselves in contention. But ATRS, they've been the strongest all season. Three out of five wins so far. Road America, Road Atlanta, Indianapolis, Visceral won the last race of VIR, though, and SimCity Racing won the opening round of Daytona. It's all three winners in contention here, but it's one of the most separated championships in the field, Lorenzo. It's going to need some uh, bad luck for ATRS for Visceral and SimCity to have a shot again. Yeah, absolutely. At ATRS, uh, besides the first race, has won or nearly won all races moving forward. 
has been a dominant team, uh, have proven themselves against the competition. So looking forward to see how Interlagos will fare to them. This in qualifying for for cups is going to be interesting as well. We'll talk about. Here we go. Speaking of qualifying for cup, cars on track instantly. Remember the clock in about uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes time, and uh, there is the championship leader, the ATRS number 313, or number 913 rather. Check my eyes, Sebastian Hove, getting ready to set his first lap time. But we've upped the speed once again, Lorenzo. I think that means we've upped the dirty air a little bit more, and uh, we're going to see a whole new dynamic. It's not the same train as the TCRs. We saw even less of a draft train in the uh, sport class and the GT4s. And now it looks like we got a bunch of loners here in the cup class. Yeah, here's going to be more like, uh, you know, finding and finding the track. You know, you know, clean air is going to be king for you. If you can maintain a really good distance of the car in front of you while maintaining the draft range and being able by, to be sucked in by that uh, by that air on the on the straight line, this should help you a little bit. But uh, the the uh, the bread and butter over here, I think, is going to be one fast lap. Uh, sorry, one out lap, maybe one fast lap, and coming into the pit lane. The second lap is going to be risky because this track burns up the rears real quick. With so many of the elevation changes and all, and and and, uh, and the curves and the and the range of the curves, so looking forward to see uh, the first laps coming in as Sim City is on the top of the board for the time being. Yeah, first lap time on the board. Mister Z Dalton Zavadil puts it on top, but these are not uh, legitimate lap times coming in right now. These are going to be improved upon with every single lap. Hydra Race, Geodesic, Olympus, Visceral. Those were all out laps for them. They'll be able to move up, but. Maybe they won't be able to knock off Mr. Z, a very fast qualifying driver when he uh, when he wants to be. And uh, so far, 135-1. That is the only legitimate lap time set so far. I imagine it might be beaten by the uh, sheer amount of purple on the screen right now, but you never know what Mr. Z can pull off. You never know what Patrick Hingston can pull off in the Visceral number 901. A little bit of an underdog hmm. is Visceral right now, but they're looking forward. And uh, if they can put it on pole, that makes their job that little bit easier. Since when Hingston made the move to Visceral? Good question. He was from, he was from Apex Tech. Let's see. Let me let me check the entry list over here. That is interesting. Uh, seeing a former ATRS driver into the team as well, a specialist under uh, under the under the Cup car. So it's going to be an interesting one moving forward. We know those timing boards are going to go up and down. It's going to be an interesting one because I think uh, Dalton Salvador did only one fast lap. As now Sinteri Martikainen on all top of the board by a tenth of a second. The other visceral car is going to be a visceral one, two here. Patrick Hingston across the line, 134, 999. It's not quite a one, two. It's a one, three with SimCity Racing, the meat in the sandwich at the moment. Sebastian Hove, his first legitimate lap is on the clock right now. It's not looking great. I don't see purple. There's definitely going to be green as Hove brings it across the line. 145. Again, not a legitimate lap. Sebastian still, I think, warming up for a truly fast lap. He'll go around one more time to get a uh, more legitimate lap time on the board. It's a legitimate lap time for Jason Gerard. One second off in the SRN numbers 974. Pascal Costa looking for some time in the Impulse Racing Porsche as well. Another outlap. Many, many seconds off the pace, but they're just trying to baby those tires, Lorenzo. Get some heat in them and go for a truly fast lap the next time around. Yeah, I would argue, I think, in this calendar uh, that we have for Ivra, grabbing it really quickly. In my point of view, this has to be the second hardest slot for you to nail it perfectly because Royal Atlanta might be number one because you have so many track uh, elevation changes. You have the asses and everything and the bumps, especially out going outside of turn number six. So uh, it, it that's what makes it a little bit more tricky. But like I said before, uh, Interlagos is a track that can play its tricks on everybody else. So uh, looking forward to see uh, if anybody can actually beat uh, Marty Kainen's lap on top of the board. Always a tough job. Let's see if Mr. Z can pull it off as he brings it across the line. Doesn't look great. He brings it all the way against the wall to minimize that lap time. Does not minimize it enough, though. Slower than even his fastest. I think we might see Mr. Z bring it back to the pits and reset. Thomas Cope is currently coping with a, a slightly slower lap time than he'd Good like. Pump. But I think this strategy, Lorenzo, of backing off 
setting up a legitimate lap. It's definitely been working for all three of those teams at the bottom of the board. Olympus across the line puts it uh, puts it on a 134.3. That's P2, only a couple of thousands off. Orion, P3 as well. Pascal Costa in the impulse, number 915, knows he's not going to improve and brings it down pit lane. Yeah, going to put in new tires, new rubber, and uh, going to set himself for the next launch. Meanwhile, we're looking to see Terry Martikainen's don't know if this is a faster lap for Martikainen, though. It, he's on pace, but uh, we know that uh, the, you can make the slightest mistakes over here. You cook the rears. If you cook the rears, your lap is done. You're not going to be able to improve. Definitely a little bit of a scare when you see uh, Thomas Cope and Olympus getting within 30,000th. So Santori definitely inclined to push a little bit more. Mike Dam for Orion as well. Good lap time to get him within uh, two tenths of Santori's fastest. But through Jun Sao, back on the throttle, and you're just you're just waiting at this point. You've done all you can do through the first part of the or through the first majority of the lap, through uh, all 12 corners, and now it's just full throttle. It's letting the clock do the work. Let's see, can Santra Martkine and pull himself even further forward from the rest of the field? Yes, oh, he yeah. can. Two more tents found. That's gonna make everybody's job even more difficult trying to knock Visceral off a pole. Yeah, it just makes the, you know, the difficulty level increase from hard to really hard. So uh, good luck to the other drivers try to beat that time. Might we see a 33? I think we might be able to see a 33 in the final stages, but uh, it's going to take something. Oystein Herfjord crossed the line. Decent lap time, basically dead in the middle of the field for the Hydra Race Geodesic number 962. Unfortunately, this is another one of those Hydra Race Geodesic entries that didn't quite have the same luck of their uh, LMP3 or Sport counterparts. Again, in consideration for the win at times, Road America could have gone their way and uh, a couple of other events could have gone their way as well. They weren't able to pick up a win in that cup car, though. Here is one car that hasn't set a legitimate lap time yet, though. The number 915, they've been setting a lap up. They've been preparing for uh, for a legitimate lap, but Pascal Costa has not been able to get a real lap time on the board. This time around, though, he's going to bring it to the line, and he'll be on the clock to hopefully get a legitimate lap time in and not start based on uh, 14 seconds behind pole. No, this is, he's going for two slow laps. You can even see by the More. way that he's driving. He's yeah, not even going into to turn one. Game. So talk us through what this actually does, Lorenzo, because it does look a little bit goofy from the outside, crawling around at uh, at 14 seconds off the pace. But what is Pascal building up here? What advantages is this going to give him on that third lap when he finally starts to push? You know, the tires are going to the tires are not only warm, but your fuel pressure, it's your fuel temperature is going to be at a optimal level, water temperature as well. But uh, like I said before, tires are for Interlagos is key for you to nail the perfect lap. So uh, you really don't want to be over rotating through a corner. You really want to be, you know, as smooth as you can be uh, through every single elevation change in track figure. But uh, Joey, we have a breaking development uh, that is going to be big, allegedly Oof. in uh, and not in this class, but the first class that we ran on qualifying. Yeah, indeed. Active race control, still active in qualifying, and they've reviewed TCR qualifying from uh, about a half an hour ago. Gonzalo Fabi has incurred a penalty for the Wave Italy racing team, overtaking a car, or uh, not overtaking a car, rather taking a car off track at turn 12 on their fastest lap. And that means that Gonzalo Fabi will take a 20 second penalty or that car rather for wave italy will take a 20 second penalty in the tcr class they do still get to start from pole but they will have to serve that penalty within the first 90 minutes of the race and that is going to be quite painful for wave italy now we ride on board with pascal costa though this is the money lap he's on the clock now let's ride on board as he pushes it let's see if it was all worth it
So this looked very smooth to me so far, Lorenzo. Times are starting to come down though, so it's a good thing Pascal started to push at this moment. Sebastian Hove puts the ATRS car P2. Dalton Zavadil takes SimCity Racing to P4, but one more corner for Pascal Costa. He is in the purple. He is on track to take pole away from Santa Martikainen. Out of Yun Sao, full throttle to the line. Has it all been worth it for Pascal Costa? We'll find out in about 10 seconds. Yeah, it's gonna be an interesting one. I would say less than 10 seconds, like four seconds. One, two, three, done. Oh, one tenth short for Pascal Costa. But even then, excellent lap to uh, to even get within one tenth of Santra Martikainen in that visceral Porsche. Speaking of Santra Martikainen, here he is. Every time someone's gotten close to him in qualifying, he's only improved and he's only extended that pole position gap. Let's see if he can do it again. Yes, indeed he can. First driver. Oh, just kidding. Time changed. Got a little bit tricked there. I thought he was the first driver in the 133s, but unfortunately the clock disagreed. Said he actually did a 134. He will stay on pole, but he won't get that honor of being the first driver in the 133s just yet. No, not yet. Uh, we still have a few drivers that uh, are yet to do their laps around the track, but you can see lots of reds around the board. So probably some drivers cooling down their laps, uh, their tires down, or trying to maintain within uh, optimum range temperature. So uh, looking forward to see how my damn slap is going to uh, look like as uh, you can see the ATRS uh, leading car right in front of him. So with Sebastian Hove uh, attempt, starting to attempt his uh, final run here in qualifying. Mike Dam has been as high as P3 in this session. It's been as low as P6 now. Let's see if he can pick those three spots back up as he brings it across the line. Is it going to be happy words from Mike Dam? Yes, it is. Two tenths picked up. Orion back to P3 and the hands of Mike Dam. Absolutely, but uh, this is not over yet. We still have Sebastian Hove, who's actually uh, a little bit better on his Delta, but looking forward to see what... Uh, the leading car in the championship will look like as in a hard race, they will need the track positioning to, you know, find themselves potentially uh, sealing the championship at, in the cup. So uh, what does he have left in that uh, Porsche 992 car? I believe these are going to be the last laps for the cup class as the clock ticks closer and closer to 15 minutes in those final uh, session or for those final seconds for the uh, LMP3 class coming up. Well, let's see. We've got we've got almost a train forming. You've got Dalton Zavadil in the SimCity racing car. You've got Sebastian Hove, ATRS, and you've got uh, Mike Dam and Orion just that little bit further back. I think they're probably separated enough that the draft isn't going to help very much, but they are uh, they are somewhat close. And we'll see if any of these three can improve. And you know what? Maybe, maybe Mike Dam will be able to latch onto that draft by just the littlest bit. No, absolutely, he's not. He sends it off on the exit of Mergulio. Mike Dam's qualifying session comes to an end in spectacular style, and Orion will only start as good as third. Damn. Indeed. You finally you finally beat me to it. You finally got the opportunity. Yeah. See what Sebastian Hove can do. Dalton Zavadil's done. Hove's not done. Picks up two thousandths. And now Mike can say damn as ACRS dumps them out of the top three. Nice one. As uh, still, we have a few other drivers around the track. Jason Groff for SRN. I think he might be the only one who's going to do an improvement on his lap, but I don't think this is going to be a pole setting lap. No, not a pole setting lap, but one spot of improvement. SRN puts it P9. Very strong team in a GT3 competition in the Endurance Series and uh, definitely competitive in the Cup class in this series as well. But I think that will be the end. Everybody bringing it down pit lane. And Santorim Artikainen. Oh, no. He's going to go for one more lap. He's going to bring it across the line. It's not going to be an improvement, though. Santorim will start from pole in the visceral number 997. That is a very fast fin, Lorenzo, and almost untouchable. Yeah, nearly right untouchable, if I remember correctly. For, uh, also part of a Williams Academy, so uh, doing really good at doing his justice to uh, to where he is as well. And Visceral in the cup class currently sit 44 or 54 points off ATRS, so uh, Santorum March kind of needs to do everything. His whole team needs to do everything they can if they want to steal this championship from ATRS, but they've started in only the best way with pole position in that number 997. Pascal Costa and Impulse will start from P2, 
Then the championship leaders, ATRS, they'll start from P3. They've got quite a cushion, though. 54 points. They can afford to have a slightly mediocre day as long as they keep it within that uh, that 54-point range. Orion, good qualifying from them. They'll start from P4. Olympus and SimCity. SimCity still on the precipice of championship contention. It'll be P6 for them. Then K. Kramer and Hydra Race Geodesic round out the top eight. SRN and Visceral round out the top 10, that second Visceral car in P10. Then Olympus Esports had a good start to the session, but Christian Arp couldn't quite keep it up there. P11 and last in the cup class will be the starting position for them, but... Again, it's a small class. It's a long race. Anything can happen. You're going to see all 11 of those Porsche Cup cars in contention for this win over the next 700 kilometers. But we've got one last qualifying session. It's the top class, the LMP3 class. And this, once again, is going to come down to the final race between four teams. Hydra Race Geodesic, the number 62 team. Core Sim Racing, Prestanda Nomad, and the second Hydra Race Geodesic team, the number 64. All four of these teams are in contention, Lorenzo. And the one in fourth, the number 64, they're the defending winners of VIR coming into this. Yeah, absolutely. I think the win of VIR gave him a little bit of a, you know, second win in coming into the final race and put him into contention. Only, uh, I'd say, less than, a, it's less than 100 points. I would estimate about 85 points that separates them of sorts. 75 separates them. So it's going to be an interesting one coming into the final round. 134 points on offer means that uh, Boots and VDS slightly out of range. The third Hydra Race Jude SGL MP3 slightly out of range and uh, K Kramer as well. But they're going to have a heated battle for fifth in the championship for uh, the best of the rest, we can say. But qualifying is underway. The final 15 minutes now tick down on the clock and we prepare to set pole position in LMP3. And this might be the most important one, Lorenzo, because the difference between Hydra Race Jude Essek and Core, 16 points. The difference between first and second is more than 16 points. The championship could come down to one singular position, depending on which of these teams ends up winning today or even which of these teams just ends up finishing ahead of each other today. Now, it's going to be an interesting uh, one to take a look at this closest you know, by a whole fraction, you know, by a whole field on everybody else's category in terms of competition. Looking forward to see this one. And more interestingly, first time in a long time that I recall that core is actually fighting for a championship, especially in prototypes. And by the way, as everybody is on their outlaps right now, setting up for a legitimate fast lap, I should clarify that penalty for uh, Gonzalo Fabi and Wave Italy and TCR. The reason they got that penalty is because coming out of Yun Sao, uh, Gonzalo took an off track to maximize his speed coming down the front straight, and that was deemed illegal by race control, improved his lap time without an off track on the fast lap, but with an off track setting it up, getting extra speed onto the front straight. And that is what earned that Wave Italy car, that 20-second penalty. They'll have to serve that within the first 90 minutes of the race, coming up in uh, just about 12 minutes or so, or about 20 minutes or so, we should say. But first lap time's coming down onto the board now. Hydra Race Geodesic up top. Hydra Race Geodesic B2. And everybody just getting those first lap times in. But just like in the cup class, you're going to see a ton of improvement here as these laps go on and as these tires start to warm up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely, but but it's not it's not gonna be like I think if might follow the same range as the cup and, and and sport. You know, we're gonna see maybe two fast laps come to the pit lane, but we're not gonna see two slow out laps. I think only one fa one only one slow lap will be enough for you to be in the optimal tire temperature range because of the no ABSs and and and. And other, I think if I remember, the LMP3 might not have traction control. If I remember correctly, you can you can uh, call me out on that, Joey. But um, it's going to be an interesting qualifying, nevertheless, as uh, we're seeing minor improvements for everybody in the board. So uh, we're going to see that timing screen go down even more. Yeah, the number 62 has been the Graham Sanders and Miguel Vigo mobile for the majority of the season. The number 64 has been Austin Young and uh, Brandon Roseboro and a couple of appearances by Bo Rigger. And uh, the number 72 has been slightly more of a, a rotating cast of characters. But Miguel Vigo has been the uh, driver chosen for qualifying in this number 62. He's going to bring it across the line for a more legitimate lap time. A little bit more speed. 129.2 for the number 62. 
but lots of time left. Ten more minutes to improve that lap time. And Alan Bertram in, in, in the purple Borat Nexus, or the formerly really purple Borat Borat car, car today, today, saying he brings him across the line. 129.4 puts, uh, puts Alec P, P3 in the number three. Yeah, I do miss the purple on this car, Lorenzo. As Hydra Race Geodesic puts it one, two, three in class. Talk about domination there. It's been absolutely purple for them. Moradness may have lost the purple, but I think it's all gone to Hydra Race Geodesic. Yeah, uh, they probably have something on their on their dock, on their setup that is uh, overpowering everybody else in the track. So looking for it. that is really good to know. Right on board with the Prestanda Nomad car of Jason Dilworth. He's been very, very fast this season in his own right. And the Prestanda Nomad, one of the easiest liveries to pick out in the field, I think. That bright teal, you cannot confuse that with any other team. You see a Prestanda Nomad car, and you know it's a Prestanda Nomad car. And uh, I always have to applaud them for that. Yeah. You know, maintaining your uh, your brand. You got you got to keep your brand strong. You got to run the colors that, uh, you know, represent your brand, well, And that teal... Looking good, looking fresh. And I love that uh, that sponsor on the side of their car, Extraversed. Love that one. That's good stuff. But uh, let's see what Jason Dilworth can do as he brings it across the line. Is it going to be extra worst for him? No, it's going to be an improvement by three tenths of a second. Jumps him up a couple of spots. Geeks Energy and Fiercely Forward jump up a couple of spots as well. It's the number 23, Pedro Valencia behind the wheel gets that car into the top five. Sophia Ridpath, though, behind the wheel of the Olympus car going for one more lap. Adam State for WSR and Butt Kicker improves by two tenths as well. I don't know if it's track evolution or what, Lorenzo, but it has been an improvement festival in these last couple seconds. Yeah, no, I think it's a natural progression of the car, you know, being a little bit lighter, Joey, and uh, being able to improve the time. So it's, so it's going to be an interesting one moving for it uh, as uh, something might have happened around the track and uh, I was wondering uh, Joey didn't you call this car with a downforce of a banana uh, yes that was at Daytona that was at the season opener right can you, I think can I you was, break uh, down can you break down for everybody that is relatively new what do you mean of this car having the downforce of a banana well I should say at Daytona it definitely had the downforce of a banana it was very slippery you have to reward yourself for the straight lines there I think at Interlagos, there's a little bit more downforce than a banana. We might even be getting into uh, we might even be getting into aloe vera territory. I think that has some good downforce. <laughs> oh my god! Because <laughs> you need a little bit more than a banana for Interlagos. You got to keep yourself stuck to the track a little bit. You, you need a like a we we call it tutti frutti, which is basically the mix of fruits. A fruit yeah, mix. every fruit, like one of those hats that has all the fruits on top. Yeah. Oh, that, oh. Was a, that, yeah, that was a spin for Jason Dilworth directly in front of in front of Sophia Ridpath. Uh, Jason rids himself from the path of Sophia, but uh, that is not going to be an improvement for them. And that may be a journey down pit lane for Dilworth after uh, after stretching those tires out a little bit coming down the Senna S. Yeah, unfortunately, and uh, you took the you took the line out of me. Well done. Well done. Well done me. I'm doing good. But uh, let's let's see what happened. Let's see what happened to old Jason coming down the hill very very hot coming in and then very very hot coming down as well yeah unfortunately uh i think that was the second or third time in a row that i actually cooked the Senna S. and uh they say if you cannot do it once if you cannot do it twice you're gonna be able to do it thrice so uh it, it did pr it did prove that uh, lightning strikes thrice at the same place indeed it does Hydra Race Geodesic 1, 2, 3. I need to take our attention to that again because it is number 62, number 64, number 72, 1, 2, 3. Miguel Vigo currently on pole. Brandon Roseboro second. And then uh, Lorenzo Duino, who's in the third car. Yeah, we Duino is in the third car. There we go. That's good. That's good stuff right there. We're doing good gags today, Lorenzo. We do, we do, we're doing, they're providing us plenty. Exactly. If your name is David Duino, you're kind of just asking for us to have fun there. Yeah. It's kind of like me in Brazil, of sorts. Like, my name in Brazil, my last name in Brazil is uh, is the name of a superglue. Do you know that? I mean, that makes sense. I mean, in English, that sounds like the name of a superglue, too. Bonder, yeah. Bonder. Lorenzo Bonder. Lorenzo Gluer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
uh, you you do know once this qualifying is over uh, or any single time Dustin All is going to put like uh, Joey Tebbin and, Lo and Lorenzo Gluer right yeah. on the Lorenzo Gluer the, is going to be there. Yeah, on the bottom on the bottom of the screen, right? He w he will. It's it's coming. But uh, do we know that David Duino has just improved to P2? Indeed we do. Couple of extra tenths, couple of extra thousandths means that it's no longer a Hydra Race Geodesic 1 2 3. It's a Hydra Race Geodesic 1 Two, three. Yeah. This is slightly different order. And there you there go. It is. Lorenzo Super Duper Glue. Yeah, don't ask me, though. That's a different account. That's probably one of those bots. Yeah, yeah it's like it's my secret uh, bot that I use to inflame uh, any F1 discussions. Super Glue in bio. Here's the core sim racing number 80. Pascal Styx. Speaking of glue, this guy's name Styx, but he is out of Yunsao. One more lap for him, maybe two more, depending on how the timing goes. It's not gone uh, core's way so far in qualifying. They do not want to be P6 with a Hydra Race Geodesic 1, 2, 3. They need to break up the monotony a little bit. Pascal across the line. 129.3, that's an improvement again. It doesn't break up the 1-2-3, though. How do you break down the Hydra Race Geodesic Armada? Let's see if Brandon Rosebro can just improve on the Hydra Race Geodesic Armada and put himself on pole. Indeed, he can. He it's not a Hydra Race Geodesic 1-2-3 anymore. It's a Hydra Race Geodesic 1-2-3. Yeah, he definitely rose to the challenge, and uh, Sticks can, can stick a uh, really good lap. But Sophia is in uh, is in good business here because her path is completely ridded of any other cars. And uh, P10 for this Olympus LMP3. I feel like we normally associate Olympus with those Porsches, whether it's in the Cup class, whether it's in the GT3 class. But the Olympus, uh, the Olympus prototype, doing well in its own right as well. Yeah, doing really good as uh, as of, of as of now. A little bit of difficulty for Sophia to get around uh, Junsel right there, but. Uh don't think it's going to be able to be a massive improvement down on her lap. Dead even with the normal lap time. Are we going to see one of those rare 129.8 improves to a 129.8? Across the line comes Sophia. No, just a little bit slower. Three tenths down on that fastest lap, but still two minutes 45 left on the clock. Still two more potential laps for uh, for everybody and that includes pascal sticks he's going to bring it across the line already improved on that previous lap is this finally going to be enough to break into the hydra race geodesic one two three it's going to be more than that it's going to be enough for pole for the core racing number 80. now he made it sticks now he did alec bergstrom across the line no improvement for him needs four extra thousands to break into the hydra race geodesic zone but we've learned, Lorenzo, that those three cars are indeed beatable. They may still improve, though. Still lap times on the board. Another Sebastian from ATRS is Sebastian Show. P6 for him. It's a, it's a pretty good showing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, P solid so far, but uh, looking forward to see what the uh, Hydra Racing uh, Armada has in store to, to put up around the track. You know, weirdly speaking, we haven't seen anything hydro in this race. We haven't seen any water. Uh, I know these gar cars, unfortunately, I'm, like we cannot ra race in rain yet here. But uh, One surely day. they have the power. I have a feeling it might come in the Endurance Series finale when we go to Fuji in, uh, in a couple of days or a couple of weeks' time. I have a feeling we might see some rain there, but... Unfortunately, the LMP3 and TCR and GT4 and Porsche Cup, we may have to wait a couple more moments for uh, for them to yeah. get rain. But David Duino, third of the Hydra Race Geodesic drivers in qualifying right now, fourth in total after that excellent lap from Pascal Styx. He's trying to get glory back to Hydra Race Geodesic, though, and he may have a little bit of help from the uh, WSR Esports butt kicker car in front. They're pulling off line. Adam State, I think, is going to bring it down pit lane potentially. No, he's going to keep it out on track. He is going to give a little bit of a draft to Duino, though, and he crosses the line. No improvement of position. An improvement of time, though, puts Duino that little bit closer to pole. He's got one more lap, though. Yeah, and Stakes are, is not even partaking in qualifying anymore. So basically, he just uh, let the, you Americans do, the, do your best against me now. Uh, yeah. 
the Fiorid path. I think, yes, she's going to be the first driver to complete this qualifying session. We'll get to the line with uh, with zero seconds left in the clock. Currently P12 for Olympus. Head of Team Hoisingfeld. They're uh, down in the bottom, an unlucky 13th, but Sophia rounds Jun Sao for the final time, and the clock's going to tick to zero as the Olympus number 21 powers to the line. Is it going to be an improvement on P12? Only a couple of tenths are needed to uh, break into the top 10 and knock Prestanda Nomad out. Let's see what Sophia can do all the way to the Armco on the inside. Is it an improvement on a 129.8? It is not. 129.9 for Olympus. They'll start P12. Team Hoisingfeld going to look to improve as well. Simon Graf coming through the smoke screen across the line. It's tracking not well at all. Simon Graf down pit lane. That's why it wasn't tracking well. But Miguel Vigo only needs 10 thousandths of a second to put it on pole. He is going to bring it to the line. Is it going to be a 128 for the first time today? Yes, it is. 128.9 for Miguel Vigo puts Hydra Race Geodesic back on pole. Yeah, and uh, it's gonna it basically now gonna make Core become the meat of this Hydra Race sandwich, because nobody else is gonna be able to improve. Am I lying? Oh God! <laughs> Brandon Roseboro does improve, doesn't get himself down into the 128s, but still a 129.003 for Roseboro puts it a Hydra Race Geodesic one two back in the books. Wow. Gonna be P7 for Pedro Valencia and Geeks Energy fiercely forward. Moradness P5. But no more laps for Pascal Sticks and Core. That means the end of the session for the LMP3 class. And that means our grid is officially set for the race coming up soon. Miguel Vigo and Hydra Race Geodesic, the championship leaders, will start from pole ahead of their uh, championship rivals and teammates, the number 64 team from Hydra Race Geodesic as well. Core, they need a good day. They need a win if they want to win this championship, or at least they need to finish ahead of Hydra Race Geodesic. They'll start that from behind, though. And the third Hydra Race Geodesic team, it wasn't quite a 1 2 3, it was a 1 2 4 for the number uh, 72 team at the end of that train. Alec Bergstrom brought the more Adnus number three to P5, then ATRS, Geeks Energy and Fiercely Forward, Delatraz, WSR Butt Kicker, and Prestanda Nomad will round out the top 10 in the LMP3 class. K Kramer, Olympus, and Hoisingfeld will start 11th, 12th, and 13th. A slightly smaller class than we've seen in LMP3 this season. We've seen fields as big as, uh, as 15 cars, if I remember correctly, but still plenty of action. And you saw how close that qualifying session was, Lorenzo. A tenth of a second, less than a tenth of a second separating the top three. That is going to be an absolute brawl for the next 700 kilometers. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be insanity when this race starts. And uh, looking forward to see how they will fare around the track. And uh, I think Core will go, uh, you know, gates out, gloves out, and uh, not being afraid to throw a few punches while we still have a little bit of warm up before this race even starts. Indeed, as everything gets set up, as uh, race control prepares to do their business, as the grid gets officially set, you get a couple of extra laps to uh, warm up the car, get yourself back and prepared and ready. Won't change the grid at all. There's nothing that uh, that really matters here, but you will see all those drivers, Lorenzo, who qualified the cars, just getting a couple of extra laps in, maybe getting into uh, race fuel preparedness instead of qualifying fuel preparedness and uh, preparing to get this 700 kilometer race started. Yeah, absolutely. And also gonna be, they're gonna prepare over here and warm up for the illegal scent, right? And the uh, multi-class racing that we didn't get to see in qualifying just yet because of the separation, but we do have the grid ready for you. And we'll, uh, we'll take you through that as warm up continues. LMP3 will lead the field to green. It'll be a Hydra Race Geodesic 1-2 Miguel Vigo in the number 62 will lead the field to green ahead of the number 64 from Hydra Race Geodesic. Both of them are in championship contention. The number 64, though, needs to beat that number 62 by nearly 100 points if they want to win the championship. Core Sim Racing. Still alive in the championship. P3, though, for Pascal Sticks. And then the third Hydra Race Geodesic team will start with P4 ahead of Alec Bergstrom, who's going in the wrong direction somehow for the more Adnus M squad. He'll start alongside Brandon Blakesley, who will start that ATRS car in P6. Geeks Energy fiercely forward. Delatraz, WSR butt kicker, Prestanda Nomad, K Kramer, and Olympus bring us down to the end of the top dozen. And 13th and last in LMP3 will be Team Hoisingfeld. You saw that a couple of moments ago. You know the tale of LMP3. 
in the cup class. It's Visceral and Impulse starting on the front row. Visceral's in championship contention. Impulse, not quite the same, still fighting for glory and their first win of the season in the final round. ATRS championship leaders will start from third. They're still in championship winning position as things stand, but they need to make sure they don't run into bad luck. So they start alongside Orion, then Olympus and SimCity Racing round out the top six. SimCity, the last contenders in the uh, championship battle. Noah Chilla will start that K Kramer car from P7 alongside Oystein Herfjord. And then Jason Gerard, Patrick Hingston and Christian Arp, SRN Visceral and Olympus round out 11 cars in the cup class. The sport class, I shouldn't really be surprised to tell you that Justin Ream will lead the field to green in the Hydra race geodesic McLaren. He'll start alongside RJD's Jonas Vanner in the Aston Martin. The Finn Marco Nermala for Glacier Racing starts alongside the huge ass driver Sven Demmel and then Impulse Racing and Wave Italy round out the top six. E7 in qualifying in sport went to Frederick Schwartz and Geeks Energy and Fiercely Forward. Satellite Racing in the Dr. Dabber Aston Martin P8 alongside or ahead of i should say saybelt esports and the regular old geeks energy sim racing car in p10 xbd emerald nk kramer round out the top dozen then core sim racing german sim racing archer racing and echelon sim sport round out the top 16 hyperion racing's nathan deering will be p17 alongside mika takala of the rusty spatulas looking to move forward remy malaberti will start last in the sport class shotgun on the field in the boots and vds by undercut car definitely looking for an undercut from a little bit further back there then gonzalo fabi will start from pole in that wave italy racing number 161 they'll have to serve a 20 second penalty though in that car in the first 90 minutes of this race due to a qualifying infraction Team Hoisingfeld championship leaders in TCR will have Patrick Kabinji starting from the outside of the front row, then Michael Polisek and Obsidian P3, Jordan Bachmeyer and Brabham holding on to the barest hope of a championship still. They'll start for P4 ahead of second place in the championship, Impulse Racing and Marcel Jochheim. Hydra Race Geodesic with Sam Bleach third in the championship. They're in contention as well. And Alice Pleva and Core, they're just along for the ride. P7 and TCR, shotgun on the entire field. They'll be looking forward and hoping to avoid any trouble on lap one over at Core in the number 146. But that's a lot of cars, Lorenzo, to take on Interlagos for 700 kilometers. And there are a lot of championship contenders. I'll run you through those really quick one more time before we get into the race. In LMP3, it is Hydra Race Geodesic, Core Sim Racing, Prestanda Nomad, and the second Hydra Race Geodesic team that are in contention. In Cup, it's ATRS Visceral and Sim City. In Sport, it's Hydra Race Geodesic, Impulse, RJD, and Hugh Jass. And in TCR, it's Hoisingfeld, Impulse, Hydra Race Geodesic, and Bravami Sports. We're going to remind you of that many, many times over the next couple hours, but remember those names. Those are the ones who are going to be fighting for this championship in, uh, in 700 kilometers time. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be insanity, and uh, and thankfully, we're going to see it in the weather conditions. 27 ambient, 36 degrees on track with a humidity of 54%. Uh, 40 kilometers is the speed, mostly cloudy, and it's 220 in the 30th of March in Sim, um, which should provide us a, a fairly chill race as the race winds down uh, during the lap. So... Uh, it's not going to be at its hottest, like some Paolo hottest, like sometimes we see 70 degrees on track. And yes, that that, that does exist in I racing. But uh, this time, no, it's going to be chilled mostly throughout the whole way. Yeah, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's uh, that's not even I feel like that would be cold for Brazil. It's 80 degrees and you're going out there in a, in a winter coat. What? Program. It's like how in Florida, if it's like 60 degrees, people think that's the most freezing thing in the world. And up here in Connecticut, if it's 60 degrees, people are like, oh, my God, it's summer finally. No, oh, OK, 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 OK. So 26 degrees in Sao Paulo, it says it's regular weather, right? They say it's cold when it goes below 18. Right? Rio de Janeiro is something like that. If you go to Rio de Janeiro, they're going to say anything below 20. It's cold. It's really cold. I come from a city down south of Brazil, next to Argentina, where I say if it is zero degrees, or maybe less than zero degrees, then I'm gonna say it's cold. There you go. So you, you basically have the same situation we do, where people's uh, people's internal temperatures are very different, and it's very confusing. 
Yeah, basically. And, and to make and to make things even better, I live in Porto here in Portugal. It's it's nearly the same thing. This is good for the warm up as well, as uh, you get a couple of moments of multi-class racing at least, just to get get yourself back in the rhythm. Checkered flag does come out to uh, set us to the field or set us to the actual race fairly quickly. You don't get the full 50 minutes, but those are going to be still a couple of valuable laps for all these teams and drivers. Lorenzo get themselves in the rhythm because it is not a very long pace lap around here. We will be straight into the thick of the action in just a couple of moments. Yeah, absolutely. The cars are going to line up right next to Junso. And uh, after that, we're going to go green flag all the way and uh, looking forward to see potentially four hours of action if we go green flag all the way. But uh, we know Sao Paulo always delivers something extra. Yeah, I have a feeling we uh, might not go a full 700 think, kilometers with no cautions. Yeah, I, 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 you know what, Joey? Since we have time and we have Dustin Nollis here at Production Booth, we should have a poll on our YouTube chat. Ooh, uh, we should. How many yellow flags or if at all we're going to get in this race? Like zero, one, two, three plus. I'm here for it. I can hear Dustin typing in the background. Yes. yes. So that, uh, that yes. poll will be in the YouTube chat momentarily. If you are curious at home, the last time we ran Interlagos in the Club Sport Series was actually last season, back when it was just Cup, Sport, and TCR. It was Visceral that won in Cup. It was uh, Geodesic, back when they were sponsored by a different company who won in Sport. And it was Hoisingfeld who won in TCR. So there's your, uh, your Interlagos history for the day. And just now, the poll has dropped in the YouTube chat. How many yellows will we get today in this Club Sport Series race? I don't know, Lorenzo. I'm feeling two. I put two. Like, uh, I think we, we are on the same page. I know people are saying three plus. Three plus uh, is easily three. is easily winning right now. Yeah, easily. He's like, he's beating them by a long mile. But uh, I'm not seeing too many votes. I need more votes, people. Get in the They're, votes. Get in the votes in. Get in the Pokemon votes Pokemon go to the polls. Yeah. 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 Also, we... Uh, I would like to remind any insider traders and sports bettors that uh, if you do make your driver crash to bring out another yellow to make your poll win, we will uh, unfortunately have to call the uh, the uh, the sports betting uh, overseers, wherever that is. The FTC, maybe we might have to call them. Yeah. Uh, what is the what, is that the one in America? That's the that's the Federal Trade Commission. So I don't know if they have okay. anything to do with sports betting. But who who knows who has anything to do with sports betting nowadays? It's a, it's a free for all. Yeah, that is true. Is it legal in Brazil? Sports betting. Uh, sports betting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the. It, it would be amazing how many you know, sports betting companies you have in Brazil, and and they sponsor teams. It is. Uh, it's very widespread. So who knows? Maybe some of those virtual fans out there. They might have bets on the uh, the championship finale here. Will it be Hydra Race Geodesic who wins the championship in LMP3? Or will it be Hydra Race Geodesic? Or will it be Core? Or will it be the, uh, the one other team in championship contention who could potentially be the underdog there? Prestanda Nomad, you don't have to wait much longer. We've been here for about an hour. We've had qualifying in the books. We've had a little warm up in the books to get everybody ready. And now it's crunch time. It is championship day in the GSI Club Sport Series by Ivra. 700 kilometers to decide four champions in four classes in this series. It has been some fantastic years so far for the GSI Club Sport Series, and every championship finale has been an absolute barn burner. I think we're going to see exactly the same thing today. But up front, Hydro Race Geodesic, the number 62 team, they have led the championship for many, many rounds, and now it comes down to a 16-point margin between them and Core Sim Racing here in the championship finale. The iRacing sedan pace car pulls down pit lane for the first time today, and the field is in control of Miguel Vigo. We are green for the 700 kilometers of Interlagos, and the championship battle is on. To the inside already into turn one is Pascal Sticks in the Core 80. He outbreaks the number 64 for Hydra Race 
as we get up to second, the HGRS LMP3 in trouble coming down the Senna S as the Cup class takes the green flag a little bit further back as well. Visceral and Santorin Martikainen lead the Cup class into turn one. Justin Ream and Hydra Race Geodesic lead the Sport class into turn one. And look in the background, because they're coming as well. They may only be pixels in the back, but TCR is coming too. We are fully racing now. There is TCR, Wave Italy, and Gonzalo Fabi take the green flag. They've got a 90-second penalty to serve, though, so it may be a lead for now. It might not be a lead for very long. The battle's on in LMP3, though, Lorenzo, into the middle sector. Pascal Stix is trying to pounce early. He knows that Core need to finish ahead of that Hydra Race Geodesic number 62, and he's wasting no time trying to make it happen. No, we, know, we knew this was going to happen just out of the gate, and uh, he maintained a very conservative line into turn number one that allows a Brandon Roseboro to come in and be able to overtake on the outside, close the door really quickly, and uh, now everything just else follows suit after the seat of the Lago, and everybody else kind of like making a clean start after we saw four wide at the, into the Senna S. Visceral, excellent start for them. Totally clean for Santor and Martikainen. And they're side by side for second in the cup class, though, as ATRS and Sebastian Hove have actually gotten by the uh, the impulse Porsche of Pascal Costa. It's one extra spot for uh, for Sebastian Hove. He's actually lost it, though. On exit, though, Costa gets back by. It's going to be side by side to turn one, I think, for second as Martikainen gets to run away in the cup class. Here comes Sebastian Hove trying to make it happen into the Sen S. He's going to take a little bit of a breaking uh, commitment from Hove to get that overtake done. But Costa just really good defense on the inside, blocks the path and blocks any attempt of an overtake done by uh, by everybody else in the field. While uh, Mr. Marti Martigani starts to break away, one and a half seconds already, the gap with barely one lap in you know, the cup class. And Visceral come into this finale second in the championship. They need to make up 54 points on ATRS if they want to win this thing. And this is exactly the only thing that Martikainen could really do. Qualify on pole, put it up front, and start running away early and hope that their championship rivals run into a little bit of traffic and a little bit of trouble. Racing at the back of the field in LMP3 as Sophia Ridpath is side by side with the K Kramer number 32. The Olympus on the inside, K Kramer on the outside. Wide goes the number 32, and to the back of the field in LMP3 goes Kimon Sapini. Yeah, I don't know if there was a little bit of air right there in the car, a potential conflict between bo both of these guys, but meanwhile, uh, th this is what happens pretty much uh, at the Cup class. You know, the single filing of the cars until we come into traffic, or you know, you see the true difference in pace when the tires starts to burn up a little bit as the stint goes on. So, uh, Interesting racing so far in this one, and uh, so f and in the front, Vigo not being able to break away whatsoever from Pascal's takes. Uh, gap is maintained at half a second. Yeah, nothing's changed despite that draft range, though. Here is that battle for the lead, and very well could be the battle for the championship. Five tenths, though, half a second, maybe a little bit too far back for Sticks to actually make that move. We do already have to start thinking about strategy, Lorenzo. It's 163 laps theorized if we go green all the way. 700 kilometers, though, the possibilities of the yellows. I think strategy conversations are going to start very, very soon as teams start to count back and, uh, and start to settle into the rhythm of the race and figure out how they're going to get to the end and start moving forward. No, absolutely. This is going to be an interesting interesting aspect of this race so far and uh, one thing that we have to talk about you said halfway points halfway points at the end of lap 82 indeed and those could be the points that decide the championship 33 percent one third of the points you would score at the end of the race go to the team who uh, who finishes in said position at halfway for example if you are in first at halfway you get uh, 34 points, which is a third of the 100 points you would get for the win, and so mm -hmm. on. There's going to be a lot of math today, so bear with me, bear with Lorenzo, and bear with uh, Connery Maddock a little bit later for that matter, because we are going to be doing a lot of calculations here in the booth. No calculations needed up front in TCR, though, as it is a train all the way back to P7, just like it was in qualifying, and Gonzalo Fabi and Wave Italy try to hold on to the lead for as long as they can because they know that the second that first pit stop comes around they've got 20 seconds to sit in pit lane yeah and that 20 seconds might be hurtful for them on the long run and this is important they need to minimize any potential damage i think the one thing that could aid them in a little bit is the fact that uh 
the 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 prototype cars, the LMP threes, are not long. They're 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 not long in terms of distance. They're gonna catch them up really quickly. If not at the end of this lap, maybe at the uh, the mid portion of the other lap on lap five. So it's gonna be an interesting one. This first passing of the cars where things start to get a little bit more nervous for everybody. Mike Dam and Orion were looking to pounce a little bit deeper in the cup class train. Nothing doing coming down the hill into the Decida Del Lago, though he'll stay in line behind the Olympus Porsche of Thomas Cope. Potential change for LMP3, Prestanda Nomad, and Jason Dilworth looking to the outside of Alec Bergstrom's more Adnus LMP3. Nothing doing there into Biko de Pato, but coming down the hill into Mergulio, it's wide for Bergstrom. Dilworth tries to set it up through Jun Sao. There could be a move for a slightly deeper spot in LMP3. This is the battle for P7, and it might heat up into turn one. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and oh, oh, oh. Uh, we have a big development over here. I just saw the sheets. Uh, you know when you had assault injury, Mr. Uh, Joey Tabin? Oof. You're exactly right, Lorenzo. Another penalty thrown down upon that Wave Italy Racing number 161. Gonzalo Fabi deemed to have left more than a three-second gap to the sport class of the race start, and race control did not appreciate that. An extra 20 seconds handed down to Wave Italy, and that is going to be a 40-second penalty now to serve in that uh, in that first pit stop for them. There's also been a penalty given for uh, for Thomas Imborg and the Delatraz number eight. That's a 40-second penalty for uh, for impeding in qualifying. Yep. A little bit of a weird one, but uh, this is the thing about the LMP3. It's a little bit more complicated, uh, and he's going to have to serve that penalty. Now the first passing of the LMP3s are going to come around, and uh, one important thing, Joey, this won't go all the way. So those, uh, those full laps are going to get close to 82, though. We're probably going to get to 82 on the full range for half points, but uh, on total laps, it might be 160. Yeah, and halfway points come at halfway of the scheduled race distance. They don't come at halfway time, so those points will be given out at lap 82 instead of at the uh, the two hours to go mark. But here we go, Lorenzo. Lap traffic has begun. The conversation and the uh, the Ivor Club Sports Series craziness that we've come to expect has finally started. And Hydra Race Geodesic and Core, Miguel Vigo and Pascal Styx, they're making their way through some TCR chicanes for the first time today. Yeah, and you can see a little bit of a separation right now he, as uh, Miguel Vigo is able to make the overlap on Jordan Backmeyer and I uh, create a little bit of a gap. Meanwhile, yeah, I think that is the Craig Kramer car that is going around to hoisting out on the outside. Good move and able to make it stick and uh, at the exit of the Senna S so without any contact or anything of the nature. That may have been the battle for last between Sapini and Graf, but every position matters. It is the championship finale. Even if you're not fighting for the championship, you might be fighting for P5 in the championship or P10 in the championship. Every point's going to matter. Well, let's ride on board with Jason Dilworth navigating through the traffic, coming up through Faradura. A savvy move in traffic around the outside of Alec Bergstrom. Gets the Prestanda Nomad LMP3 up one more spot. Yeah, managed to cook that uh, overtake to the perfection. So really good from Dilworth as now uh, you see the Moranis car have to go around the outside, lose a little bit of time and space, and a little bit of a blanking car from Brabham right there just uh, makes it everything a little bit more, uh, you know, nerve-wracking. But everybody get away unscathed for the time being. Right on board with Bergstrom here. That Moradnus car may be less purple, but it is no less a Moradnus car. Daniel Morad, the, uh, the name behind the team, keeps a very, very strong driver lineup with uh, with however many drivers we've seen master this LMP3 car. Alec Bergstrom, Adam Brockway, Wayne Castile. The, uh, the list goes on and on and on and on. And Alec is going to try and make it happen around the outside to turn one, trying to repay the favor. And he gets there. He's clear into turn one, chops off the nose of Dilworth, and Bergstrom gets that spot back. But yeah, Dilworth but is still there. Dilworth. He's still there, switches it back, shockingly, still side by side on the exit of the Sen S. Yeah, they're going to ride, I think, side by side all the way. No, never mind. As uh, Dilworth fends off at the back, you can see now the WSR Buck Kicker, Esports Buck Kicker. Car behind a little bit of the flashing of the lights from uh, from Dilworth, knowing that they have a car that is just as fast as them catching up uh, in the rear. As uh, a little bit of puff as both, lock of the brakes as uh, Sophia Ripat blocks away from uh, the ATRS uh, LMP3. 
These are not battles for the lead of the race. These are battles for the latter half of the LMP3 field, and they're still going absolutely crazy. Kimon Sapini gets to the inside of uh, Sebastian Show in the white and orange ATRS LMP3. The entire middle sector at Interlagos is a constant switchback, though. You're on the inside one corner, you're on the outside the next, then you're back on the inside for Sapini, and he's going to hold on into Pico de Pato. Yeah, and managed to make the overtake. Now he goes into the uh, hunt of Sophia Ripath as uh, the battle for, for P11 was a battle that uh, didn't go on uh, Sapini's way at first. They had a little bit of contact. Sapini was thrown off wide, and now he goes into the hunt of the Olympus driver. There you go. There's been a change for the lead in the sport class. Justin Ream no longer leads. RJD have actually taken the lead. Jonas Fanner, an excellent start from him, has put that Aston Martin in P1. Justin Ream and Hydra Race Geodesic down to P2. Hugh Jass and, uh, and Sven Demmel up to P3. Some slight changes in the, uh, the, the GT4 class, though. Live in LMP3 at the top of your screen, though. They're still going at it for the end of the top 10 and the end of the top 13 in, uh, in LMP3. But I do wonder what's going on with Justin Ream and Hydra Race Geodesic down in the sport class, though, Lorenzo. Is this actually losing that spot on pace? Or is this savvy driving from Justin Ream and maybe happy to run in line and save a little bit of fuel? Well, fuel saving is going to be the, the, the name game uh, name of the game over here. If you can go for the long runs on green flag, and if we go green flag all the way, of course. So uh, every lap that you can lift off and save a bit of fuel, maybe a full lap, is going gonna, is gonna to be strong over here. Uh, the overlap, not the overlap, but... Uh, uh, the overcut uh, can be really strong if you play it to perfection, in ter uh, not only in terms of traffic and everything else around the track, so I'm uh, looking forward to see that. And with the amount of cars in the field today, essentially the only way where JJ can win this championship is if, if Hydra Ray Ray and the 4462 have a DNF, crash out somehow, don't complete 90% of the laps, and open the door for another team to take it. But even if they just finish the race, it is likely going to be a Hydra Race Geodesic Championship in the sport class, which I think many people may have predicted at the start of the season. But still, yep. three hours and 45 minutes to go. Anything can happen. There's going to be thousands more of these traffic interactions, Lorenzo. They've all been totally clean so far, but there's no way they're all going to be clean. No way. And more importantly, had the 62 lost a lot of time clearing traffic away. Pascal took it to time to the perfection as uh, we're going to see the cars now going around the city of the Lago and starting their 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 climb through La Regina and Ferradura so uh, now you can see the gains and losses throughout the field trouble for Wave Italy and TCR we'll uh, see what happened there in a moment because the battle for the lead I mentioned in this series that it's not just one track when you're in multi-class racing it's essentially four different tracks you've got you've got the track when there is uh, no cars on it, you've got the track when there's some cars on it, and you've got the track when there is every class of cars on it. This is actually Wave Italy serving the penalty at the bottom of your screen. I believe they had 90 minutes to serve it, but uh, I think that second penalty may have made it slightly more, uh, slightly more required to serve it even quicker. And uh, they're down to sit in pit lane in the penalty box for 40 seconds, setting themselves very much on the back foot early on today. Yeah, unfortunately, they're going to need a yellow flag, uh, I would say, now to be able to cope with the rest of the sin as they're going to just do the rest of the drive through around the pit lane and uh, already going to be a full lap down in comparison to the rest of the field in TCRs. And as that happened, it was very clean running through the uh, GT4, through the Sport Class traffic for both Styx and Vigo, but it's not been quite so easy for everybody else. They still have to navigate through the entirety of the sport class. To the outside goes the uh, goes Pablo. Oh, three wide, a little bit of contact further forward. The number eight and the third Hydra Race Geodesic LMP3 of uh, David Duino. Contact, door banging with Thomas Imborg. Yeah, and uh, got scared a little bit because Duino cars got wobbly around the around the track as now they go through the percent of Nomad GT4. I think I'm trying to make up who the, that other GT4 is. But they're still followed by everybody else in the in the LMP3 field. Now you, you can see now Moranis M and try to hunt down what it looks to be Pedro Valencia's LMP3 for the time being. Welcome to the GSI Club Sports Series, we say. 
little bit of door banging down the red pasta, but no harm, no foul, no damage to either car. Thomas Imborg does hang on to that position for the moment. Here comes Jason Dilworth, though, trying to make another savvy move in traffic. Can't quite get it done as they get around the satellite racing uh, Aston Martin. Going to be Pedro Valencia in that black and yellow Geeks Energy Fiercely Forward LMP3, staying ahead of the Moradness number three, staying ahead of Jason Dilworth in the Prestanda Nomad car. They're side by side a little bit deeper, though. ATRS side by side, almost interlocking wheels with that uh, Team Heusingfeld car for P12. Yeah, and you can see now three wide around the track and <laughs> managed to make it unscathed, which is the good thing about it. But the Team Heusingfeld surviving for one more lap uh, while retaining the position. This is how crazy things are getting today, Lorenzo. This is sort of that championship day mindset. It makes everybody go a little bit crazy. These guys aren't even fighting for the championship when they're fighting for literally last in class, but they are intense and they're ready to fight. Everybody wants to compete today. It's uh, it's a championship mood. I mean, you want a, you want a piece of the pie, don't you? Exactly. You want that uh, you want that little bit of entertainment for yourself, even if you're not in championship contention. You got to get yourself some TV time somehow. And how about this? The first time the Cup class and the TCR class meet each other on track. Team Hoisingvelt very lonely in the lead of this race, but uh, it could get very close with Brabham behind. Yeah, but Brabham actually lost a lot of touch in these laps, so uh, the gap overextended to two full seconds, so it, it, it makes a life out of Hoisingvelt. You can see even track position favors them a little bit. Meanwhile, Dilworth side by side with the Pedro Valencia enables to make the move on Medegulio, but the thing is, does Valencia goes for the dive as you saw? No, he doesn't. Followed by the WSR Esports butt kicker. Oh. Kind of fends him off. Oh! And it finally happens. The WSR butt kicker LMP3 is the first car to come afoul of a traffic interaction turned on the exit of Yun Sao. Doesn't look like there's much damage there, but that is not good news for Adam State and that team. And that car doesn't look entirely healthy. Was there contact with the wall? That's the question. No, it no, looks like they got away with it. it. Yeah, and, and that was just a slight T-bone, uh, you know, pit maneuver. Uh, luckily for them, they're not going to get any wheel damage on the car, just a lot of time loss. All right, we've already, we've already got our craziness here, and that is just the, uh, the first little bit of that. By the way, if you heard what sounded like a, a pit crew, that is, uh, I think it's happening right now. That's a little bit of construction outside. I think that's going to clear up very soon. So uh, just pretend that's a little bit of extra realism. That's one of those Brazilian motorcycle shops on the outside of the track. They're doing a little bit of work. Yeah. Vroom, 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 vroom. Vroom, vroom, indeed. <laughs> Maybe even rev, rev, we could say. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm going to call the the Hornet gang because we, they drive a lot of Honda Hornets over here in... Uh, in Brazil, so the we have a running meme in Brazil. Like if you the the uh, gangue da da hornet, you know. So if you if you are like a delivery guy, you will most likely gonna drive uh, that on a hornet bike. So that's pretty much done outside the track. Nice. We do get to calm down for just a moment as uh, traffic has stratified themselves out into their own classes for just a moment. And now we get to focus in on the inter-class battles, the intra-class battles, I should say, as uh, it's SimCity Racing versus K Kramer, the battle for P6, Mr. Z, Dalton Zavadil getting very close to the back of the K Kramer Porsche, getting about as close as you can without making contact. Yeah, and uh, over here it's important that you do not make any contact as these guy, these cars look like paper. If you have the even the smallest or the tiniest amount of damage, it's just gonna hurt your race. And more importantly, for SimCity Racing, they need to make those overtakes because Vistro and ATRS are on a race that uh, so far are being so much better than that uh, car that is driven by Dalton Zavadil. Yeah, SimCity were always kind of the underdogs coming into this championship finale. They needed bad luck from uh, ATRS and Visceral, and that could still very well come. We are only 20 minutes into a likely four-hour race so far, and uh, many, many more developments coming over the next many, many minutes and hundreds of kilometers. But we do get to breathe for a moment, Lorenzo. This is probably good for us. It's good for the drivers. Good. You're not in total chaos mode right now. You're not in a total calamity mode. There may be a couple of battles, but you can breathe for a moment, get back in the rhythm. Yeah, you can uh, relax and chill down a little bit and 
you know, recompose yourself and, uh, well, especially unless you're from the from the sport class, because the sport class is, sorry, not sport. If you're cup, you still have to be, you know, thinking about those uh, GT, the LMP3s that are going to overlap you, but so far, calm race at the, at the uh, Western Front. Riding on board with the Impulse Racing Mercedes, Sasha Anglesey behind the wheel. Another team that were coming into this championship finale on the back foot, needed a big day and needed to finish ahead of their championship rivals. Unfortunately, right now, they're three spots behind Hydra Race Geodesic, who are in second. Everything's going Hydra Race Geodesic's way right now. Impulse definitely hoping for either a safety car or trouble for Hydra Race Geodesic, something of the sort, as that was nearly a very high-speed collision between David Duino and Thomas Imborg coming into Faradura. Again, right? Yeah, again, a little bit more contact, just like uh, on the Red Apostle a couple of laps ago. Yeah, uh, Imborg, you know, he has that penalty, so he needs to kind of like drive it clean. He made that overtake work, uh, you know, try to build up a little bit of a gap, but... Uh, he has to remind himself that he has a 20-second penalty that he has to serve, and he doesn't want to crew that even more as Impulse is on the defensive right now. Impulse and ATRS, the battle for second in the cup class. Visceral and uh, Santori Martikainen have just totally run away at the head of the field in the cup class. That is not competing right now, but the battle for second is totally on every point. Yeah, absolutely. So far, being able to fend off everybody else that is trying to make that overtake. One, one, two, three, four, you could say, or two, three, four, five, as the Orion car of Mike Dam is in contention as well. Yeah, I think this is a, this is a battle for everybody not named Santri Martikainen. Martikainen is going to be in control, I think, for as long as this first pit cycle goes around, but you know, see if that starts to fall apart, as this could very well fall apart again soon. The Duino versus Imborg battle. It's going to have Alec Bergstrom joining them for company now, as they may make the littlest bit of contact again. Duino trying to squeeze his way around the outside. Yeah, a little bit of a over, up and under, but it, uh, I did. I, I, I don't want to call this out this early on, but I might have seen a little bit of uh, switching of the lane. He's coming to the braking zone that made the Duino have to, you know, get checked up on the entry of the corner. So, uh, uh, some hard defensive moves and uh, going into that range of, you know, you're playing with lots of danger right now. Now, draft range within a couple of tenths of a second. That's as close as you need to be to make the draft work and make a move at least attempt to happen into turn one. Imborg and Duino, though, have been getting so close, and it's a little bit like a uh, nuclear weapon. It starts to heat up a little bit, and then eventually those atoms come together and collide in big fashion. What's going to happen into turn one? Imborg giving Duino no room whatsoever. He'll hang on, but he overcooks it into turn one, and Duino sweeps around the outside. Cook to perfection. Was that a little bit of a little bit of a mental game there and forcing Absolutely. Imborg into a mistake? Absolutely. Well, well done from David Duino. And that's even more of a loss for Imborg. Doesn't just lose the spot to Duino, loses the spot to Bergstrom, loses the spot to Dilworth, and now potentially in danger of losing the spot to Pedro Valencia and that Geeks Energy fiercely forward LMP3. He's right in the tail of uh, Imborg as well, who's on very hot tires now after that slide. Yeah, luckily for uh, Inborg right now is that Pedro lost a little bit of touch because of the Olympus car. So, uh, but the car is not behaving well. There's something wrong with that car with in terms of stability, and Inborg might. Well, I'm not gonna say might. Most likely he's gonna lose the position to Valencia. See, so can he get the rhythm back? It's so difficult to do that at Interlagos, Lorenzo. As you know, if you lose that rhythm, if you start to overheat the tires, there's so many high-speed corners. There's so many places to make a mistake that they all start to rack up. And I think that's exactly what's happening to Thomas Imborg here. Another mistake on the exit of Yun Sao. Valencia gets by him like he's not even there. Yeah, 100%. Back to the lead in the sport class, though. Justin Ream is back. He's been hunting, he's been riding, and I think he's been saving a little bit of fuel but now he's closed that gap down a little bit to the Aston Martin of Jonas Vanner. But trouble for the uh, Delatraz number eight. There's a lot of smoke on the front straight. Not really sure where that came from, but that may have been a crash. 
Yeah, most likely wondering what happened right there. And uh, there's this contact. Oh, no. More endless around. And that is a massive accident for Alec Bergstrom. That car is not looking at We might get a yellow. Yeah, Delatraz had to tote from the front straight as well. And uh, the Moradness car towing from the exit of the uh, Red Riposta. And there is the there yellow. As quickly as those two crashes happened, less than half an hour into the day, chaos has finally kicked off at Interlagos, Lorenzo. We've got our first yellow of the day. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say... Sounds like it oh. may have been a technical issue, Lorenzo, for Thomas Imborg on the front straight. Bam! So was that potentially what was uh, going on in those instances before with Duino? Imborg was looking a little bit erratic, but was that potentially his uh, his wheel having trouble before that? Good question. It begs, it, it, it begs the question. I don't know if they made contact. There is a report up uh, between him and Duino. I think it is because of the contact they had side by side on the backstretch on the on the head of pasta, but uh, it's weird. Yeah, steering wheel just goes hard left into the wall. Definitely a technical failure for him, but still the uh, the more Adnus incident to watch as well. I think that was one of the main things that brought this yellow out. And that's such a shame for that team. Bergstrom was looking so feisty, so strong. And, uh, and giving us a ton of entertainment. And unfortunately, it came to disastrous blows down the Reda Apostas. Contact with David Duino and heavy contact with the Armco. And Dilworth oh, being caught yeah. up right in the mix, unfortunately. And I do wonder if that's going to be a pit stop for Prestanda Nomad as well. Now, the pit stop cycle in the GSI Club Sports Series is very, very thorough. Everybody gets cycled around. The pit lane will open eventually, but here's another shot of what happened. Bergstrom and Duino, just the littlest bit of interlocking fenders, Lorenzo. When you're in a straight line like that at such high speeds, it ends in disaster. Yeah, I really want to look from Duino perspective because I don't know if the wheel went to the left, to the right hand side or trying to, you know, try to take as much momentum away from the other car. But um it, it, it is it is quite complicated uh, how this first yellow flag came to be when it rains it pours around Sao Paulo and Sao Paulo is delivering yellow flag number one. Now, ironically, we do get to take a breath after the most chaotic part of the race. After the first yellow, we do get to reset everything and attempt <laughs> to get into the rhythm. I, I can only laugh at this drill outside. I'm sorry to everybody at home. There's nothing I can do. But Lorenzo, you might have to uh, you might have to talk through the pit cycle for a moment here. Yeah, absolutely. As yes. we're gonna look into Duino's uh, perspective of the car, just life flicked to the left and oh, uh, some some weird stuff, you know, uh, that are, happens sometimes in I racing. I think both co brought both cars together, and the Miranda's car just spun around though I, i'm probably going to see a penalty come down from the over here joey but uh this is going to be uh, uh, uh how long it is going to be it's going to be an interesting one because it looks like the try to maintain this line as the best way he could while uh maintaining some pace and uh as uh for way vitally this is a really good scenario i think he, he's going to be able to get his lap back soon enough maybe don't know uh but what is important is this is going to trigger the whole first pit stop scenario for everybody in the field when uh, pit stops are actually open. Yeah, we do just have to wave everybody around, get everybody in order before that pit stop cycle can come around. But it will be coming very soon and we can do our first real championship check in, which in LMP3 is very, very easy. Hydro Race Geodesic still ahead of core. That's the order they are in the championship. That means nothing changes. It has been perfect so far for Miguel Vigo and Hydra Race Geodesic, but a restart could spice things up, Lorenzo, with, uh, with how fast Pascal Sticks was in the initial start. That could be when uh, when things shake up a little bit. In Cup, though, it's uh, yeah. it's fairly similar. Yeah, uh, Marty Kainen led pretty much the whole part of the stint, so it's going to be an interesting one uh, when this green flag goes out, and uh, basically we are going underway once again and uh, it's going to be an interesting 
aspect as Martikainen now is going to basically maybe be under the threat of Sebastian Ho when this green flag is out is just how quickly can Martikainen break it away from Ho and everybody else. Yeah, and ATRS still in championship position, even with how badly they've been uh, they've been run away from by uh, Visceral so far in the uh, in the race itself. In uh, the sport class, the Aston Martin of RJD they lead in class, but similar to in the Cup class, they may lead in the race. But Hydra Race Geodesic still leading in the championship. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, and pretty much running away at this point, even though they're not even winning this race. So this is an interesting one going down and uh and, and good but i'm gonna say good by a good fight from rjd you know try to do their best you know maintaining themselves into the top three try to do themselves uh, a really good job of maintaining the points don't know if they're going to be able to pass impulse just because of the point gap they actually have and uh for tcr this is basically the best case scenario for uh for brabham as they're going to be able to uh, ca catch up to him and uh and, and the other rest of the field as well, except maybe for Wave Italy, even though Wave Italy is now on the same lap base as they are right now. And that is your championship update. I think as accurate as I could have made it, but yeah, for to break the fourth wall for people at home slightly, if you do hear that drilling and hammering in the background, I'm hoping that'll stop soon so I can stop shouting over that and having to cut myself off. But we'll uh, we'll see what happens. We're uh. We're trying our best. I, I might have to break out my best Will Vincent Lorenzo. Do you mind? We're broadcasting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is what I love about the the world of sim racing, you know. You get, those, of, uh, you get those looks behind the scenes. Yeah, the looks behind the scenes. It's like, it's not like they you've been able to put a ring on, on all the situations and everything, right? Yeah, if we were in a, uh, a noise-controlled studio, an air-conditioned studio, well, I think we're, we're technically in an air-conditioned studio in our own homes. I think that counts, but yeah, the magic of sim racing, doing this from home, but uh, I, think we'll, I think we'll be clear here. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Dustin Ellis, for, uh, for in including the legacy of that quote. It's been, there's going to be like 10 people who have said that now. In the in the rest of history, it's gonna be Will Vincent, me, Wayne Gretzky, Lorenzo, Senna. Who knows? Who knows who could say it next? Wait, Senna's not gonna be able to say anything. He's dead. Eh, Bruno. Okay, fair. It could be him. Okay, okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you, you win. Good comeback. Let's do. It might just be because uh, the drilling has stopped, but it does feel eerily quiet, Lorenzo, under yellow here. It's almost like I can feel the tension rising. It's almost like as if that first stint, those first half hour wasn't crazy enough. We're about to have another green flag restart. We're about to have even more hungry drivers and we're about to have a pit cycle for that matter. The craziness may have already started, but it's uh, it's about to notch up yet another yet another step. Another step. And uh, we're going to have all the passing of the cars once again in the field. So basically we can we can argue this is basically a full reset of the race, like a second race within a race. It's kind of like we Inception. Had, yeah, we had a sprint race to start, then we'll have another sprint race and another sprint race, and then in true uh, Ivra Club Sport Series fashion, we may have a yellow with about 40 or 30 minutes to go, and then we get a sprint race to the finish. That seems to be the way it goes a lot of the time. It's kind of like uh, at an inception, you know, they're going to try to plan an idea and that idea becomes another idea and then uh, the other idea becomes another idea. So you're going layers upon layers of uh, of stuff. Kind of like uh, an entrance race within a sprint race that becomes an eventually a sprint race after, they, after a yellow flag, then you get another yellow flag, you get, you get, a, you get a, another sprint race. It's like an onion. It has layers. Yes. But you, but at least in this one, you don't cry when you peel off the onions and the layers of the onions. Some teams might cry though, depending depending on who's involved. That might be where the tears come from. I think pit lane may be open this time. I could be mm -hmm. wrong, but we'll get an answer in about ten seconds or so as they as they crown over the top of the hill. You've got some of those beautiful Sao Paulo apartments in the background. You've got the uh, the virtual fans who have packed the stands. And now 
Do we have a hard right down pit lane? Yes, we do. The entirety of the LMP3 class or not or not. Pedro Valencia and uh, fiercely forward. They're going off strategy early and they're going to stay out. Interesting. Are they going to be the only car in the entire field who stays out? Because you see the uh, the sport class coming in behind. Okay, there's one there's one TCR that stayed out. I think that's Obsidian. Yeah, Polisek does does that from time to time. Is not, I'm not even surprised. And then the uh, the Cup class hasn't even come around yet. But yeah, there you go. You see Santria Marchkinen coming in. Impulse is in. ATRS is in. Yeah, we've got a couple of uh, stragglers and the rusty spatulas as well. Mika Takala has, says, uh, you know what? We're going off strategy. Oh. oh, my goodness. Things are getting crazy. Red light still on on pit exit. You cannot exit pit lane just yet. But there's going to be a three wide battle off a of pit lane. And wow, Hydra Race Geodesic does jump that uh, that course sim racing number 80. The number 64 does. So a core down to third. And it's now a Hydra Race Geodesic 1-2 and LMP3. And can I can I just do my best Leonardo DiCaprio impression at uh, once upon a time in Hollywood? And go like oh, and uh, and see who actually left the pit lane early. But <laughs> that was actually close. That was very crazy, and that's actually the number seventy-two. No, no, it's not. It is the number sixty-four. I tricked myself. I played myself. So no, no, the... no, 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 no. That was a GT4 that left before they all came out. Oh, so that as well. I was talking about the uh, the LMP3s now that are one and two. Okay. Because Core did get jumped, and there was also the Hydra Race Geodesic TCR on the outside, and I wonder if that was kind of a little bit of ironic team play that uh, Pascal Styx and the Core number 80 ended up behind the Hydra Race Geodesic TCR and couldn't quite exit pit lane fast enough to beat the number 64 out. Yeah, maybe. Uh... Jeez, the Archer no. Racing number 460 that blew the red light, apparently, Lorenzo. And yeah, that is not going to be is not going to be looked upon kindly by race control, unfortunately. No, no. That is a still image, by the way. They weren't parked there, but all the same, that will be a, a penalty most likely. And uh, let's see, are there any penalties still pending? The number 32 for K Kramer got a five second penalty, so that'll need to be served under the next green flag pit stop. You can't serve a penalty under the safety car conditions because that wouldn't be as bad of a penalty as if you served it under green. They definitely have to still wait. I don't see that the uh, the penalty for the Wave Italy TCR has been served. They did sit in the penalty box, mm -hmm. but uh, both penalties still listed as pending. That might just be race control yet to update that, or was it potentially that they served it improperly? I think it might be the former, that it just hasn't been updated yet. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. We'll see. And then that uh, that penalty for the number eight, will likely not be served because I think their race may have ended with that uh, technical failure for Thomas Imborg and hitting the uh, the front stretch wall at very, very high speeds. But Geeks Energy and Fiercely Forward, you know what won them the race at Spa in the Endurance Series a couple of weeks ago? It was going off strategy and it was beating some very much faster teams on pace like BS Competition on strategy and, uh, and beating them to the finish by saving a little bit of fuel and uh, being able to go on that alternate strategy to the end. It's still very early days, Lorenzo. Lots of things can change, but you'd like to see, uh, you'd like to see the off strategy kicking off already in Geeks Energy and Fiercely Forward. They're trying to make it happen in LMP3 as well. And Obsidian too. So uh, as a... Uh, and the Rusty Spatulas. And the Rusty Spatulas. Uh, good to know me. Good to, good to see Mika at the top of the board. I like to... Uh, after I haven't seen Mika ever since I went to the uh, to the Expo in 2022. Really good guy. Works for Stevie Cube. And uh, do you know? Do, I, I'm trying to remember which race it was that they actually had a livery. They were complaining uh, to me. They actually did a direct mention to me. Enough orange because I complained they didn't have enough orange. Is there enough orange now? Let's uh, let's get a closer yeah. look. There's a, there's a little bit of orange. There's more orange in their car than the previous livery. Yeah, there's a lot of black and white, but there is, I mean, I like, I, I think that's a good amount of orange. I think it could use even more, but then you might start confusing it with the SRN Porsche. That would be the problem. Yeah, I know. It's kind of like they, they stepped up from the previous livery. Is It's like they're becoming a, kind of like the uh, diff, uh, team, different team of their own. But it doesn't have that look of a rusty spatula. Which I, exactly. actually, asked, I actually asked them 
what does a special look, a rusty spatula look like uh, at the expo and he told me that was basically the color and it was like i don't but i don't know i don't know it's like it is rust it's rust colored but it's not rust i want like rust texture i want like a png of rust on the rusty spatula scar it, it's like put up a little bit of mate color you're talking that's what you're talking about and uh and some fade into it, then he probably going to get that rust feeling in the car. That's what you're talking Something about? Something like that. Something like that. I see. Joey Tabin the painter. Yes. You should uh, not taking, see... Taking classes from Bob Ross. You should not see my attempts at painting cars, because I am not very good at it. Uh, it's a, well, it's Joey... A, it's magic. Do you make the team... Do you make the paints for your Wattaback NASCAR, or no, does someone else do does not. that for you? I do not. Somebody else does that for me. I believe that was... Uh, uh, okay. I believe that was one Nick McLaughlin who painted those. It was either him or Ted. I already forget who painted them. That's embarrassing. Wait, but Nick drove for your team? I thought he was from Precision. Me, Nick McLaughlin, and Ted Lowendick were the, the threesome with the bananas. Oh, my. <laughs> how, did, how did we get to this point? <laughs> Lorenzo, Lorenzo liked my phrasing there. No, it's like I completely took it out of context. We were a team of three, I should specify. Yes. Uh, how fun! Uh, Speaking yeah, of bananas, yeah. we got the uh, you got the bright yellow from Geeks Energy and Fiercely Forward. I always like that livery because it's it's bright, and it's not like the uh, Hydra Race Geodesic livery. It could be easy to confuse the two. I think their GTP livery is a little bit more black and a little bit less yellow, but. This one's very yellow. Hydra Race Geodesic, mostly black. Easy to differentiate. Yeah. Even I don't know if why. the three Hydra Race Geodesic cars look exactly the same. This livery is more of a throwback to the original livery that Fiercely 4 used to run like back in 2021. Uh, when it was a little bit of graphics, but still maintained a lot of the yellow with some like stripey lines into it. So it, it, it looked really good. Uh, don't get me wrong, the car that, for example, Frederick Schwartz is driving on the GT4, cool car, cool livery, right? But uh, it, it has, like, a uh, little bit less of the identity of the, you know, Fiercely 4 car than this one does, in my opinion. If you're just joining us under yellow for two LMP3 crashes, we had the Delatraz Automotive number eight have a technical failure and hit the, the wall on the front straight. We also had a crash between the number 72, David Duino, and the number three of Alec Bergstrom. Bergstrom ended up hard in the wall, and that is what ended up actually bringing out the yellow. But pit stops have, uh, have underwent. There are a few stragglers who stayed out. Geeks Energy and Fiercely Forward in LMP3, Rusty Spatulas in Sport, and Obsidian, and Wave Italy for that matter in TCR. But we will go racing here in a matter of moments. Lights are out in the pace car, Lorenzo. That means we'll be going racing in less than a matter of moments. We'll be going racing in half a lap. Yep, absolutely. Looking forward to see uh, how Valencia's car is going to behave with the rest of the pack. Uh, with new rubber and, uh, and looking hungry despite being heavier on load. We will have to start thinking about stint lengths because this car has been out on track for 23 laps. Three of them have been yellow, so kind of 20, 21 laps. The Glacier Racing uh, GT4 has been on track for 22 laps, or the, the Rusty Spatulas one, rather, has been out on track for 22 laps. The Obsidian, number 20, number 133, rather, has been out on track for 21 laps. So, yeah, we're going to start counting back very very early and starting to do our math for the finish of this race but for now we get to restart single file so not quite as crazy as the initial start no double file action but i have a feeling you're going to see some teams starting to pounce and look for that third place car the course sim racing number 80 pascal sticks was very very aggressive on the initial start attempted to take the lead on lap one on multiple occasions wasn't quite able to do it but now He's got a big chance to use that short run speed to his advantage. The iRacing sedan pace car is going to pull down pit lane and leave the field in control of Pedro Valencia. The Geeks Energy fiercely forward number 23 hops on the throttle and leads the field back to green. It's a little bit of a jump in the background as the TCRs are trying to trying to get around the back of the train. A little bit of a jump start and craziness back there. But into turn one, clean stuff in LMP3 
as Pedro Valencia leads the field down the center S. It's not quite so clean further back, side by side between Porsche Cup and Porsche Cup, side by side with Hydra Race Geodesic and Hoisingfeld and TCR. But now Pascal Sticks look for the red and white number 80 to try and pounce on this restart. It's not going to happen this time. They're dunking and diving and doing all sorts of things coming down the Reto Pasta, but no switchbacks oh. just yet as they're side by side between ATRS and Hoisingfeld for P8. And, and Sophia Ridpath, the uh, car's got a little bit uh, bouncy in, into the exit off the, the city of the Lago. And uh, fortunately for Sophia, the car survived the whole ordeal. Oh, Hydra Race Geodesic to the lead as Geeks Energy fiercely forward are around. Pedro Valencia led on the restart, the off strategy risk. And it's already gone the wrong way for them, a spin coming into the first hairpin was there contact yes there was miguel vigo on the inside turns around pedro valencia yeah i want to see from uh vigo's perspective on that uh on that spin to see if the car was already uh, overlapped in or uh he tried to put the car in there was no space for him to you know stick it on the inside of the car and it made that overtake work let's look a little bit of a dive Oof. Yeah. Yeah I, don't, yeah, I don't know. This could go either way. It might, might look like a penalty for the number 62. And if it is, it's going to be very damaging, but uh, we'll, we'll never know. And that could we'll, have been we'll a, know in a bit, though. Yeah, we will know. Race controller going to be looking in that, and that could be a championship deciding penalty, potentially, depending on how things go. You remember, Core, if they finish ahead of Hydra Race Geodesic, oh, Olympus. they're likely going to win the championship. But Olympus out of shape coming through the Senna S and a little bit of damage to the rear end of that Porsche. They're going to be passed by their uh, their inter-team teammate. Yeah, uh, the car was around uh, at the exit of the Senna S. Oh, double target fixation for the Hydra Race Geodesic Porsche as well. Looked like there was, looked like there was oil on the track. Uh, the, there is no rain on the track, by the way, boys and girls, Darn. everyone. Nope, Darn, nope. if only. If only. In the future, hashtag soon, T in the trademark. Second Hydra Race Geodesic car is not having a fun time after the restart. David Duino, actually uh, not David Duino anymore. Yanni Stefanidis has actually gotten behind the wheel of that car after a driver change. And he was uh, was desperate to get by Sebastian Show. Show showed him the door, though. And uh, we'll continue on to look forward at Sophia Ridpath coming down the front straight. And yeah, Sophia doing a really good job retaining all these cars out the back. So really good battling for... Uh uh for the mid back positions in the track meanwhile obsidian obsidian into the lead of tcrs after uh, he got jumped by gonzalo fabi i think on the restart of tcrs and remember both of these cars off strategy obsidian has not been back down pit lane 23 laps and uh for that matter wave italy hasn't been down pit lane for 23 laps either they did serve a drive through they did serve that 40 second penalty we believe but they still haven't done an actual pit stop yet to put fuel in that car, so that will cycle back around soon. Things are getting close in LMP3. Things are getting closer in uh, the, the Cup class. Three cars going at it. It's Impulse versus Visceral versus Olympus. Throw a blanket over three cars coming down the breaking zone. We're doing Daytona 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 yeah, that was, was Cal, 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 and Marty Kanye be able to make that move on the outside and now fiddle into the single file. But uh, surely Pascal will want to go around. Looks on the inside, will make the dive. Does it work? It will work. There you go. Impulse one more, uh, one more spot. Now we we did miss this in the uh, in the pit stop cycle, Lorenzo. But the pit stops for Impulse and for Visceral two minutes long for both of those teams if you were wondering why those guys are so much deeper in the field than they once were two minute pit stops for both of those cars has taken them out of one and two yeah and there were no penalties whatsoever for them oh and there's Hugh Jass going around in turn one Sven Demmel that rear end of the BMW is so heavy that the second it goes around it's just it's penduluming around you're going with it it did the team justice if you, if you know if you know what I mean Indeed, indeed. But what do you think could have been that two-minute pit stop? Because both Visceral and Impulse spent two minutes in their box. Could that potentially be the fact that pit lane exit was closed and they just had to sit there? But would that even still count as a pit stop? Uh, could be. That's a good potential. I, th I think their boxes were all the way at the back, so it makes sense. 
little bit of door banging between the Porsche Cup classes into turn one, but suddenly that makes things a little bit more interesting in the championship because Visceral were looking like a potential comeback crew, but now who's leading in the Cup class amidst the championship contenders? It's ATRS in second, the championship leaders looking to hang on, but SRN to the inside of the Olympus Porsche into the Red Apostle. They get by, and Orion and Mike Dam are going to look for a move oh, oh, into oh. P10. But craziness in GT4. RJD involved from uh, the sport class. Stopped is the core class Mercedes. They're going to get going again. But wow, multiple class, multiple cars in the sport class tripping over each other in the Sen S. And that grill is uh, bent in. Grilled. Nice. Oof. Wave Italy, three wide on the Brabham TCR, and then three wide through the Sen S. That doesn't work very often. Nope, nope, nope. Bonk, for bonk, the lead. bonk. Battle for the lead indeed. One tenth of a second between Pascal Stix and Miguel Vigo to the outside. Coming down the straight, a little bit of contact in the braking zone. A hip check to Pascal Stix means that Miguel Vigo hangs on to the lead. And welcome Brandon Roseboro into the battle as well. It's a three-way fight for P1 as the Geeks Energy GT4 is around. The number 435 takes a little bit of a tumble down the order. That is uh, Michael Kaibach, but he'll keep going again. Back to the front, though, Lorenzo. This is not a two-car battle anymore. That number 64 wants to be a part of this championship fight as well. What happened in this restart? Oh, okay, there we go. Uh, Vistro, and uh, as we look into what happened to every Geeks Energy, I got a, I got an answer about uh, what happened to Impulse and, and Vistro. They got sandwiched in the pit stop and had damage in the repairs. Oof. I thought I heard a little bit of a crunch on pit entry, but I, I looked at the rear ends and they didn't look damaged. But that is absolutely what uh, what would cause that comeback drives now required from uh, both visceral and impulse. Yeah, this has been this has been wild. Halfway points coming in quite a while. We're only on lap 28. You got to think about lap 82 if you want to talk about halfway points. So give yourself uh, give yourself a little while to wait for that. Into turn one, though, sticks not close enough to go for the move, but turn one might not even be the optimal place. Is now coming out of the Senna S, sticks in the draft, in the toe, coming down the Red Aposta once again. Probably not close enough this time, about two tenths too far back, but Pascal's not letting up the pressure. No, putting up really good pressure, and Pascal is showcasing well, uh, why he's one of the I said dinosaurs, right? And I think uh, it's a good. You can call. I, I'm going to call dinosaur in a really good, in, in a really complimentary fashion. As I think, uh, impulse makes the overtake on the hydro race geodesic uh, cup car. As now he's on the hunt down of visceral of Saturni Martikainen's car. But uh, why Pascal is one of the most highly touted uh, old LMP drivers that I, I've seen race in i racing. Like, used to be an ace on the HPD, now is on the LMP3s. Bad news, Lorenzo, for core. Pascal Stix has incurred a 10-second penalty for contact with the number 946 cup car a little bit earlier. That hurts so much more. That's going to have to be served under green flag conditions. Pascal might be able to take the lead on track, but he might actually lose second for now, making that pain even worse. Brandon Roseboro to the outside of Styx into turn one, trying to be later on the brakes. Can't make it happen just yet. Styx hangs on to P2, but he's got 10 seconds in the back of his mind now. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, there's a lot. You can actually minimize the damage with those 10 seconds. So he needs to make that overtake work and break away with the traffic and everything. But the problem is, you have two high class drivers in Miguel and, and Brendan who are not letting the German get away. So uh, it's going to be complicated for Pascal to actually make this work. Oh, trouble for the satellite Aston Martin. Absolutely damaged the nose of that car. I have a feeling that came in that tire wall on the exit of uh, Decida de Lago. They're going to be able to drive it around, probably going to be able to bring it back to the pits, but here's what happened. Potential contact with the XBD Emerald Mercedes. Yes, indeed. You're unfortunate. Right in front of the TCR leaders. By the way, Pascal is Austrian, not, a, not, not German. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, very big calamity into, into Bico de Pato there. 
Poor and Hydra Race Geodesic side by side. It's for second, though, as the number 62 does get ahead of this traffic. Three wide into Yun Sao, though. That is so difficult to do, and Rosebro somehow comes out the other end. Uh, this restart has brought something else in this race. And, I told uh, you it was going to get crazier. And the core TCR, I believe unrelated to the core LMP3, did get turned around by an LMP3. That was the Olympus of uh, the Olympus LMP3 of Sophia Ridpath. ATRS involved as well. Yeah, fortune right there, as uh, I think uh, the ATRS LMP3 kind of did a little bit of shove on the side of Sophia. Four wide at the exit of Curva do Sol. Uh, and now it's been oh. on the LMP3. And around pass. goes the K Kramer LMP2. Sophia Ridpath and the Olympus has to park it on the track as well. Oh, dearie me. It's all kicking off. Kimon Sapini in the K Kramer LMP3. And speaking of things kicking off, how about the recovery now for the Geeks Energy Fiercely Forward LMP3? Pedro Valencia led the field to the restart, got spun by Miguel Vigo coming into turn eight. And now he's trying to recover something because he's still waiting for a pit stop. He hasn't even made his first pit stop yet. Yeah, uh, that's just insanity. Uh, everything decided to kick it off, and that's just pure uh, insanity. I'm, I'm baffled. I'm really baffled. Of course, Sapini is going to get a subpoena to, for assault. I like that. The, the Sapini subpoena. That is, that's beautiful stuff. This is what happened a little bit earlier with that absolute calamity between the, uh, the LMP3 leaders. They were just trying to get out of the way as there were sport class cars, there were TCR class cars tripping over each other. And somehow, I think every one of them managed to make it through with minimal damage, despite the fact that there were cars backwards and sideways and covering the entirety of Pico de Pato. And now they're yeah. covering the entirety of the front straight. Look at this. That's insane, man. Three wide becomes two wide as Valencia gets to the inside of the huge ass BMW. Big crash behind it to turn one. Oh my goodness, that's uh, that's the Wave Italy oh, GT4 oh. and the Hoisingfeld LMP3. A little bit of tempers flaring on exit, and that that car might be wedged. That might be beached on the little little paddy between the two green asphalt areas. That could be our second safety car already, Lorenzo. That car is not going to move. That is destroyed. How do you say destroyed in Portuguese? Destruído, aniquilado. Uh, I'm trying to find more ways. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. Colossal impact for the team hoisting felt LMP3. Oh, no, no, no. He didn't do that. And there is the caution. That is stupid. The yellow, that is really stupid. The yellow comes out again for the second crash of the day in turn one. Get back under yellow. And just before that happened, Lorenzo, Visceral and ATRS were going at it in cup. Visceral hangs on to the lead in that class. But we are back under yellow. Here's another look. Bad move from the uh, from the Hoisy Veld car. You can even see, I think, the GT4. I'm wondering that GT4 is, but this. I'm sorry. I I'm very sorry. It, it, you, you use the other car just as a bulldozer to get out and get back to your pad. No, that is just wrong. Yeah, that was wrong. Povilis that is wrong in so many fashions. Povilis Duchovskis in the uh, Wave Italy GT4. And who is that Mercedes coming around? That was the uh, Hydra Race Geodesic number. No, not the know. Hydra Race Geodesic number 64. That is. That was the Hyperion GT4 with uh, with Nathan Deering behind the wheel. Did somewhat of an excellent job of avoiding that into turn one, but couldn't quite get it slowed down before he got into the wall. Yeah, because GT4s don't have high performance brakes, so couldn't stop the car in time. Unfortunate. Uh, but man, I, I, it's like I understand it was a bad move, but uh, the, the, the rest, all the rest for me is completely unnecessary. And now we re-rack, get back in the rhythm, and start to think about the next three hours. Some penalty updates, by the way. Wave Italy TCR did serve those 40 seconds of penalties from the uh, the qualifying penalty and the initial start penalty. Unfortunately, Gonzalo Fabi has incurred another 20-second penalty for uh, something we'll get into in just a moment as we ride on board with the other Wave Italy car of uh, Duchovskis, the GT4 driver. And yeah, he was he was very unhappy, Lorenzo, on the exit of that. But as I was saying, Gonzalo Fabi got a 20 second penalty for not pacing on the left side of the track, just a, a pacing violation. There are strict rules, strict rules about what you have to do behind the safety car. 
Race Control has said Gonzalo Fabi did not do that, and Wave Italy once again have a 20 second penalty to serve. Yeah, uh, just uh, insane right there what happened. And, and I think uh, Dustin brought us something. The 997 car is in the bus, changing drivers, and uh, Martikainen is coming out of the car. I think Vince Peters is coming in. Uh, interesting strategy, in my point of view. Very interesting strategy. Are they allowed? Or I, I wonder, Lorenzo, riddle me this. Did they put any fuel in the car when they were repairing the damage? And maybe they had to come down for emergency service. Is that possible? Good, good question. You can do the service and and fuel unless they did something else. I'm 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 confused. They're still in the pits right now, so this may be another. Now they're finally out. Just confusing stuff there. We'll figure out what's happening to Visceral. But on the topic of penalties, by the way. There are 120 seconds of penalties waiting for the Delatraz number eight. I don't think they're going to get back out to serve that. That was a very big crash. So uh, I don't think those will be not pending anytime soon. The number 492 in the sport class, uh, Remy Malaberti, will have to uh, serve five seconds for a rule violation. And the uh, Archer brothers, Mercedes, Jacob O'Reilly, will also have a five second penalty for pit lane infringement. And that is all of the naughty list, Lorenzo, but there may be another member of the naughty list as emergency service for the Geeks Energy Fiercely Forward LMP3 or not. That was just them driving through pit lane. Yeah. Did not stop, did not get service. Yeah, what they might get is actually an EOL, so they're probably going to be thrown back all the way to the end of the line for the LMP3 class. So that's the worst thing that can happen to them by going into the, uh, into the, into the pit stop to the pit lane and rather sorry things are getting a little bit a little bit dicey on the pace lap here as everybody's trying to figure out where they actually are i mean there is there are very clear rules if you get the ivra endurance series or club sports series rule books the admins have done a fantastic job of listing out why race control does the things they do what you need to do when you're pacing to not get a penalty and to make sure everything goes smoothly it is a a very well orchestrated symphony once these safety cars come out, it does take a little while, but it makes sure that uh, everybody's still in order. Everybody gets to keep going, and we get to uh, we'd have an orderly restart. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, trying to sort of this as cleanly as they possibly can as we look to the Hyperion car just uh, getting its wave around uh, around the track. Pace car lights are off right now. You may have noticed that, but we will not be going green this time. They will add uh, extra laps to the uh, the pace car time, I think, because there's there still go. a lot of cars cycling around. And yes, they have turned the lights back on. We are not restarting this time. There are many, many cars that need to get back in line. There's many, many cars that need to make pit stops. And uh, there's many, 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 many other things that need to be done. I do not envy race control right now. They have about 10 oh. penalties that are still stacked up that they need to review. And they have to they have to reorder this restart. So make sure when you see the members of the Ivor admin team, you thank them for their hard work because they are uh, they are very busy during these races. Absolutely, uh, all the props to them. And not only these guys organize this, they also organize the twenty four hour series esports. The if not if not all of them, the whole majority of them. So uh, uh, showing the uh, tremendous experience they have in in the championship so far, and this actually being one uh, the Axis Championship, right? If you if you think about it for uh, for for what is the Neo Endurance Series, right? Uh, or the Twenty Four Hour Series Esports? Top two teams in each class will get a automatic entry to Neo. We love that ladder. Love promotion, relegation. It's not something we have enough of in America. You have the uh, you have relegation in soccer all the time, football, but we don't uh, we don't do that here in our leagues. And I like I like that you can have a, a lower team that gets promoted up. If you have a Wait. high team that's doing bad, you get dumped down. I like it. Don't you have that on the MLS though? I don't I don't think the MLS has relegation. Let's see MLS relegation. Let's check. Uh, apparently they're exploring it, but not yet. I think they were taught if if they didn't have they were I think trying to mention about bringing the NASL, right? 
uh, into being that uh, second, you know, not second zone, but the second division of U.S. soccer. Don't get me wrong. MLS, for all its good and worth, and have Lionel Messi and everything and this, whatever it's doing nowadays, all the best to them. Still, I think, lags in behind in terms of how to make football work in the United States. Sorry, I cannot say football as uh, your NFL. I got to say American football rather than football. Yeah, I think I think the Premier League is actually more popular still in the U.S. than Major League Soccer is. So definitely, definitely work to do there. You know what's coming to the U.S. though this year, Lorenzo? Uh, the T20 Cricket uh, World Cup. Really? We so, played in uh, Nassau, Long Island. So what you're what you're telling me is that Arjuna Kankipati might actually take a tour trip that down to New uh, Long Island to actually look at that. Unfortunately, tickets are fifteen hundred dollars. So what? That, well, I I don't think they were fifteen hundred dollars to start. I think they were uh, they were bought very very quickly, and now the only ones left are like resale tickets that are fifteen hundred dollars. But if you didn't get your ticket early, you will be paying a lot of money to go to India versus Pakistan or whatever at uh, at Long Island. EOL for core, Lorenzo, to the back of the field in LMP3. I'm not sure what for, though. Uh, they're taking the EOL because they had penalties uh, uh, accrued. Can, you, I right. think it is up to... Back then, it was up to 100 seconds. I cannot remember if they brought this down to 60 seconds. I have to look it up on the regulations. Uh, but if you have up to a certain amount of uh, seconds, you can take an EOL and uh, basically reset your whole race. Got it. Yeah, but even then, even if it is 60 or 120 seconds, they had a 10-second penalty. So, yeah, easily, easily able to take that to the back of the field, and that will be cleared from their docket, and Core can start to look forward with a clean slate with no penalties but their job has gotten much easier. It was a very clear championship path for them when it was them versus the number 62 battling on track. It would just come down to a pass. Now there's a lot more work. Core are going to restart P9. That's eight passes that Pascal Sticks and his teammate are going to have to make over the next three hours if they want to win this championship. Yeah, absolutely. Meanwhile, just trying to take a really quick look over here. Okay, uh, I think I might have found it. Uh, uh, no, not really. Darn. That's Darn. why we have. That's why we have race control to read the rule books, I guess. Because we like we, me and Lorenzo, and uh, everybody who commentates in this series, we know the rule books, but don't trust us as race admins. That's uh, that's not us. We're our, we're our we're our own race admins. We have our own judgments up here. That is true. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, during safety call, uh, penalties may not be serving the penalty area. Instead, penalties amounting up to 10 seconds may be converted oh. to a NEOL. Well, there you go. So the absolute limit, 10 seconds. Luckily for Pascal Six, was not a second bigger than that. Yep. But it's looking like we're, uh, we're mostly in order, Lorenzo. I think we might get ready to go green here in a couple of moments. Still a couple of pit stops being served, so it might be one more lap, but we're almost back to racing. We've, we've somehow gotten through an hour of this race already, and I don't know where that time has gone. Yeah, it, it has gone down to insanity. Uh, uh, lights off on, the, on Benny's pace car. Uh, those on YouTube chat, if you put two uh, yellow flags like myself and Joey, please sound out and those who put three, put three in the YouTube chat just so we know who actually uh, voted for what so we can have a little bit of an idea moving forward. Yeah, one more and uh, suddenly we're, 37% of us are going to be very, very wrong because we've got two within the first hour. If it goes like this Lorenzo, at this pace, we could have as many as seven yellows until the end of the day. I don't think that's going to happen, but we may have been uh, we may have been a little bit too conservative with our numbers. Maybe we should have gone with five, six, or seven plus. Eh, it's because we're taking this from a very you know cautionary tale perspective and thinking, oh, they're not going to go that crazy, or thinking like, oh, this is spot where we're going to get a yellow flag on lap one. Exactly. Think things never go crazy in Brazil. They're always pretty normal. Yeah, it's it, 
some people would say, oh, this is crazy. This is insanity. No, I would say this is a Monday in Brazil. Exactly. Average day in Brazil for uh, for not only a racing driver, just any citizen. This is just the, the usual stuff that happens on the roads. But lights are out on the pace car, and we are prepared to go green for the third time today after the second caution period. Hydro Race Geodesic and Miguel Vigo have led almost every single one of these. They led the initial start, didn't lead the previous restart after a uh, an off-strategy move from Geeks Energy and Fiercely Forward, but now the iRacing sedan pace car pulls down pit lane and we prepare to go green once more. They're in championship position, they're in the championship lead, and now they're back in the lead of the race. Miguel Vigo leads us back to green but he's got to look in his rear oh as there's oh. contact immediately on the race start between the core number 80 and the k kramer number 32 that's championship implications right there lorenzo as pascal sticks might have front end damage to k kramer and uh, and kimon sapini's rear end damage as they're side by side for the lead in the cup class as well visceral and atrs right behind the lmp3 train side by side in the exit of the senna s this is not the battle for the championship but it is the battle for the lead down the reda apasta who's going to be later on the brakes into decida de lago it's all going to come down to this oh door bang into into turn five Visceral hangs on, but there's still a nose to the outside. Longer radius means ATRS has to slot back in line into second for now. Yeah, somehow they survived the whole ordeal. And I think uh, the same situation that happened to Ave Italy happened now to to Core. Unfortunately, probably going to get a slam dunk penalty. Meanwhile, inside for ATRS. And now ATRS in lead with a little bit of shoving. And just outside of, you know, if you can go into Big Dupato. It looks a little bit like the pace oh, lap is there. There you yeah, go. There's the K Kramer number 32. Kimon Sapini's pain even worse now, as I don't think an LMP3 with no rear wing is the uh, the most optimized on downforce, and he had some trouble into Biko de Ponto. I think you're going to see that car bring it down pit lane immediately, as that is almost undrivable. But out of Jun Sao, it's a bad exit from the ATRS Porsche of Sebastian Hove. The run now for Patrick Kingston. Might be a little bit too far back for him over to turn one, but he's trying to set things up as trouble for the XBD Emerald car. That's uh, it's coming down into Mergulio. Big hit to the rear end of that car. Cano Lopez in trouble. Yeah, insanity what happened. What is happening on this restart one more time. Meanwhile, ATRS breaking away and uh, Hydro Race Geodesic making that overtake work on the Olympus car that uh, had an issue early on in the race and that has that back end a little bit caved in. It's a little bit of a Porsche train here. Draft train for the top five. We'll get you replays of uh, all that stuff that went down on the restart in a matter of moments. But other than that, it has been fairly clean. A couple of spins, a couple of bits of contact, but no uh, no negative interactions, no jump starts. There's a dive to the inside to Faradura, though, as that was uh, Impulse trying to make something happen. The third Hydra Race Geodesic LMP3 is in trouble, though, and there is what I was talking about with Impulse. To the inside of the SimCity Racing Porsche, around the inside, becomes around the outside, and that's Pascal Costa around the outside of Dalton Zavadil and taking P4. Yeah, cleanly. The replay of the initial start. Look for the white and red core number 80 and the black and red K Kramer number 32. A little bit of checkup, a little bit of checkup, and then a jump from Kimon Sapini ends up with Pascal Sticks in the rear end of him. Ah, uh, then you might not be able to blame fully on this on Pascal. I don't know. Oh, Glacier in the sport class around the McLaren Mercurio. trying to find wherever the uh, the track is a little bit lost in the grass has to wait for the entire field to come by. But a day that started so well for Glacier top three in qualifying. They're at the back of the field in the sport class now. Yeah, with some big damage in the front of the car, though. In a way, a Italy going for so their, no, there's some of their penalty, yeah, most likely. You're exactly right. 20 seconds. Still need to be served by Wave Italy. They're going to take it early. Gonzalo Fabi does what he's all too familiar with now and parks it in the penalty box for 20 seconds. Hopefully, that is the last penalty for that team. They can only hope. They may uh, they may have to have a chat with Gonzalo after the race is over, after, uh, after 60 seconds of penalties so far today for that team. Back up front in LMP3. Hydra Race Geodesic 1 and 2, 62 over 64. And then Prestanda Nomad. They've kind of driven their way up the field somewhat quietly. 
with the amount of penalties and incidents we've had so far in this class, Jason Dilworth has been mostly clean, and he's up onto the podium for Prestanda Nomad. Replay of the satellite racing Aston Martin getting into more trouble, though. Remember, they had contact with the XBD Emerald Mercedes a little bit earlier, and contact with another Mercedes tips them around again. Yeah, fortunate right there. I think that might be a, a penalty for the car that caused the contact. Meanwhile, Core trying to make that overtake work on Olympus inside for Pascal Sticks. He's going to be able to make that move stick. Late braking for Pascal. Doesn't cook the tires as he moves on through. One more spot for the number 90. E6. Here's what happened to Glacier. May have been a self-spin. That's the impulse Mercedes to the outside. Not a self-spin indeed. A little bit of contact and a little bit of a hip check sends the Glacier McLaren into the Armco. Yeah. Oh, dear. That is a little bit of chaos on the exit Ooh. of the Senna S. K. Kramer with a half spin bounces off Mr. Z and gives that SimCity Racing Porsche a little bit of damage. It all kicked off side by side with Visceral coming down the hill. That's three cars involved in the cup class with damage now. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Unfortunate to see that kind of stuff happen as meanwhile, Geeks doing their pit stop. Finally. So, finally. WSR versus ATRS. So many acronyms in the field. World of Sim Racing versus Apex Tech Racing System. Is that what ATRS stands for? No, it's Apex Tech Racing Supply, something like that, I think. Ah, supply. It all comes down to the S, and it all might come down to the Senna S in this battle. Full effect of the draft for the ATRS LMP3. This is the battle for fourth. Adam State on the inside in the black and white car. Sebastian Show trying to make it around the outside. Who can be later on the brakes into turn one? It's going to be Adam State. He'll hang on for the moment. You're moving, and this is the highest we've seen the WSR car uh, in the track, right? Fourth place. To the outside, into the Cena de Lago. This has been a favorite overtaking opportunity for so many people, but when you're trying to make it work around the outside, you do have to be fully alongside, and that does not work for Sebastian Show. The inside is open, though, into the second part of the corner. He's going to get to the inside of Adam State. Once again, becomes the outside, though, into Faradura the long way around, sends it up the hill, tries to use the elevation change to his advantage. Not quite clear, though, into turn eight. He'll have the inside into Pinarino, a little bit of door banging, a little bit of contact, and eventually they'll resolve this, but that is not yet. A little bit more contact, a little bit more interlocking, stayed off the road a little bit. Still to the inside to Bico de Pato, though. They have been side by side for this entire lap, Lorenzo, and it's not done yet. Now it is, as they end up behind the core TCR, ATRS, and, uh, and Sebastian show. That was incredible for a full lap, and unfortunately that one bit of TCR traffic robs us of side-by-side -side for an entire lap. Yeah, that was a good show for us, but the show is still going on as he's still side-by-side -side with another LMP3, that's Pascal Sticks, that is actually going side-by-side -side into the main straight, and uh, I don't know if the Apex X is going to be able to make that overtake work on the outside. He's going to be, be he's gonna have to outbreak himself, and Pascal defending the position like a lion and able to do it successfully. Things have not really closed up up front in LMP3. It's still Hydra Race Geodesic 1-2. Miguel Vigo boasting half a second over Brandon Rosebro and uh, the Prestanda Nomad number 56. Not especially close either. Closest battle is this midfield battle in LMP3. And you can see on the ticker on the side of your screen, every other class very much separated in, uh, in the order. Championship-wise, not much has changed either. In LMP3, that number 62 in the lead of the championship is still going to lead that championship with a win today. No surprise there. Championship leaders in Cup ATRS, still leading in class. Championship leaders in Sport, Hydra Race Geodesic, leading in class. Championship leaders in TCR, Team Hoisingfeld, not leading in class. But Obsidian Racing are not in championship contention. So things are still looking up for Team Hoisingfeld. They're still in a championship winning position, but... It gets a little bit more, a little bit more dicey with Hydra Race Geodesic a couple of spots ahead. And just as I say that, Obsidian finally brings it down pit lane to make their first stop of the day. Yep. Took a little bit of a while, but Michael Polsak is going to be able to do his pit stop and uh, should be finding himself in an interesting situation if this race moves on four. But uh, he's not going to be able to fight for any of the spots that would lead to automatic qualifying. 
into the uh, 24-hour series esports. Meanwhile, Core on the outside. Pascal Lay breaking, stayed on the inside. He's going to be able to make that work on the inside of the exit of the Senna S. Moves up one spot. An apex stack moving, trying to move forward as well, taking up advantage of the opportunity. And this is all the more remarkable when you remember that Pascal Stick started ninth on this restart, made contact with another car on the restart, and has still driven his way up into fourth. Little bit of an off at Decida Del Lago, but no harm, no foul. He'll start to look forward. Change for the lead in TCR, by the way. The Brabham Esports number 115 has actually taken the lead. Jordan Bachmeyer got around Sam Blees in the Hydra Race Geodesic TCR. And for the first time in a little while, we've got a new leader in the legitimate order in the in TCR. As there's a change for the lead in LMP3, though, they're side by side between the teammates at Hydra Race Geodesic. They're right there on your screen right now. The TCR leaders and the LMP3 leaders interacting, interlocking, and it's one, two, three, all in draft range now into turn one for both LMP3 and TCR. It looks like Dilworth got the better exit out of those three. Let's see, he's in the double draft. A little bit of sport class traffic. There's a Mercedes and an Aston Martin. Looks like nothing is gonna be quite close enough into turn one this time, unless Dilworth goes for a Dilworth dive, and he does not indeed. Stays in line, slots back in. No change in TCR as well. But those are always fun, Lorenzo. Leaders versus leaders. Everybody fighting for the same piece of track. You're gonna be seeing that a lot more today as well. Absolutely, everybody's trying to fight for their own place, for their own piece of the pie. So this is what it makes it, this race more entertaining to watch as they fiddle out into the sport class cars. First one that goes through looks like to be the Rusty Spatula. And now you got a, three GT4 cars to contend with. I think the leader one being the German Sim Racing one. And they're side by side with the, uh, the Wave Italy GT4 and the German Sim Racing GT4. The number 62 in LMP3 does get to the inside and clears this traffic, but the number 64, not so lucky. Brandon Roseboro stuck behind side by side GT4 traffic. That's not just a chicane of cars, that's a wall of cars that's impossible to break through. Yeah, and, they're, and they lose a little bit of performance coming out of the turn. They, they gain, regain acceleration now, and that makes things more clear as Dilworth is not going to be on the inside of German Sim Racing, but the problem is, look at the gap that uh, has been built up by the leader. Two seconds now separates both uh, first to second and third. The drill's back, Lorenzo. Talk us through this battle into turn one. Yeah, absolutely. As uh, they drive one at the back of the other, Dilworth trying to find that opening on the inside. There's no whatsoever, none whatsoever. It has to go into the outside, go to the late breaking. That is a court car in front, a GT4 court car in front. He's going to block the exit of maybe of Dilworth. Do they, does he have the room? Still a little bit of the shoveling coming from uh, the number two. GT LMP3 car and somehow they survived the whole ordeal. Three wide like that does not work out often. You see the shuffling in the background of your screen as well. Total craziness and now this is not just the battle between these two for second. You saw that core number 80. Pascal Sticks has caught the battle for second. Absolutely insane pace since this restart. Insane stuff in the middle of the class in GT4 in the, in the cup class rather as a Sim City Racing Dalton Zavadil ahead of the visceral car of Patrick Kingston. Danny Neo is now behind the wheel of the Olympus Esports number 946. And uh, Mark Balzer still driving that K Kramer car. Side by side between Olympus and visceral. Olympus is gonna hang on. Danny Neo looking for a spot in the, uh, the Neo series potentially hangs onto that spot for now, but the door is gonna open down the Reto Pasta. Yeah, inside is going to be for Visceral. He's going to have the opportunity to go for the late breaking, but he's going to have to stick to the inside. He's not going to have a good run maybe to the X of it. Olympus might have the upper edge right here, still side by side. And Visceral, really good run on the entry. Managed to carry as much speed as he could possibly done. Oh, but there's no. a spin. There is the spin indeed. Patrick Hingston goes for a safari through the grass. Luckily, there's no walls on the inside there. He gets to keep it going, gets it back pointed straight just behind the SRN Porsche. But that was a wild ride for him. And an LMP3 for Stand and Nomad have taken second away from Hydra Race Geodesic. They've broken into the top two. But look who's on the scene. Just as I mentioned, Pascal Sticks in yeah, the yeah, red yeah, and white yeah, LMP3 yeah, yeah, yeah. going for second. You're exactly right, Lorenzo. 
Yeah, there you go. Just like a hungry, a white shark. A little bit of content. There's the Pascal. And I'm not going to get a good catch up to them. There's the Zell Bell. In front, run. He's not going to be able to overtake court, but he's already looking on the inside of the Hydro Race LMP3, but he's not going to be able to make that overtake because there's no overlap to work with. The nose to the inside coming down into Pinarino. You need to be fully alongside to make a move like that work, though. I'm looking over at the penalty sheet, by the way. I, I don't want to say this, Lorenzo, but you know who's gotten another penalty? Oh, Gonzalo Fabi? Yes, he now has a 120-second penalty for uh, for violating safety car procedures. I think that I think that brings his total up to three minutes of penalties, unfortunately. Yeah, something like it. It has not gone his way so far today. The uh, number 21 for Olympus and LMP3 is they get passed by Visceral in the cup class. Sophia Ridpath has gotten a 20-second penalty. Kimon Sapini with the uh, K Kramer, uh, number 32 in LMP3, has gotten a 10-second penalty for not stopping at a closed pit exit. And uh, Alice Pleva in the core TCR has gotten a 5-second penalty as well. That seems like no penalty, though, for that incident between the number 62 and the number 23 on that restart. When the Geeks Energy fiercely forward LMP3 got turned around, no further action on that, so no penalty coming to Miguel Vigo. Let them fight. Exactly. Oh! I was, I was going to ask, uh, is that a car with the bonnet off or something like that on the rear end off? But not quite. That is just the, the look at the back stretch of the uh, Hydra's Geodesic car. Hoist. Yep. Hoistinkvelt versus Hydra Race Geodesic. This is for P2 and TCR. I don't think this is for championship contention, though. The, the gaps are simply too big in TCR for uh, battles of position like this to really matter. But, yeah, if Brabham wants to win, they basically need uh, Hoistinkvelt to crash right now. Because if they don't crash right now and they get a reasonable amount of halfway points... Uh, Brabham are going to be eliminated from championship contention, and it'll be Hoisingfeld, Impulse, and Hydra Race Geodesic to the end of the day. They're going to battle for position on track, though, into Faradura, trying to make it work the long way around. Is Patrick Kabinji was so fast in qualifying on his own, had no draft help. Now suddenly, he's wheel-to-wheel -wheel with, uh, with Sam Blees and does not get by, slot back in line, P3 still for, uh, for Patrick Kabinji. Yeah, full reset for him, but uh, that is really good. That is a really good battle that we still have on the track moving forward, and uh, they're not far away from that Brabham car. They're still within the draft range of uh, Jordan Backmire, not far behind you. You even just saw the Impulse car, TCR, not uh, not that a ways behind, even though he's on clear air and uh, he's not sharing the draft and catching more speed than these two cars are actually doing at the current moment. PCR cars are the best in the field at actually being able to use the draft. And with Kabinji within a tenth and a half on the front straight, I think we will see another attempt at a move into turn one. Is it going to be in the inside? Is the door going to be left open or is he going to be forced around the outside? There's actually not going to be a door fully open. Kabinji peeks a nose to the inside, is not alongside enough to make it happen. It's a little bit tentative, a little bit frustrating, I'm sure, for Kabinji right now, but... If it's any solace, he is still keeping that team hoisting belt car in easy championship position right now, even in third. Yeah, they, and, the, and that's what you need to do, you know, being conservative. Don't over risk things and things like that. That would put them in a position that would they would not gain points in this race. So I, I have no beef with that. It's the boring option, but maybe the smart option. I, I've learned through my life, Joey Tabin, that uh, being sometimes boring is good. That is true. That is true. The most exciting, most exciting parts of this race so far have have maybe been the uh, have maybe been the least smart parts of the race so far. So I think I agree with that. How about the battle for third and cup? Sim City versus Hydro Race Geodesic. Very similarly painted cars, just with a slightly more highlighter yellow on that Sim City racing livery with uh, with Mr. Z Dalton Zabadil behind the wheel. It's once again not enough for the championship for Sim City, but a podium for them and Dalton Zabadil and uh, his teammate that'll get in the car a little bit later. Another strong performance from this team that's only been moving up. Very recently, uh, recently founded team. It was only a couple of years ago that. 
a couple of folks from uh, Las Vegas, Chris Beats and uh, a couple of others said, you know what, we're going to start our own sim racing team. And uh, they've, they've accomplished some fantastic things, a win this season and uh, in championship contention in Ivra. It's all very, very good stuff. Absolutely. Been watching these guys, you know, go up the ranks and things like that as uh, they went through the years. In Dalton Zavadil, I think, and I think Lauren Zavadil as well were uh, picking up their expertise in Porsche Cups well, alongside Chris Beats and the rest of the team as well. So good to know they're uh, starting to finally become a team that uh, we should be looking more and more on this Andrian side of things uh, here at Ivory and other competitions as well. Yeah, and also Dalton Zavadil, a champion in another series on Race Spot TV recently in the PRL GT3 Sprint Series, which is just single driver competition, it's not team competition. Dalton won the championship there, so really, uh, really proven himself as one of the strongest drivers in GT3 style machinery at the level he's at, and uh, he's going to keep looking forward. He's got that battle for second in TCR directly ahead of him. That might be able to solve that battle for uh, Hoisingfelt and Hydra Race Geodesic. The back up front in LMP3. Speaking of Hydra Race Geodesic, Brandon Rosebro is not happy running in third. He wants to get Jason Dilworth back by and uh, and steal that Hydra Race Geodesic one two back. Yeah, absolutely. And can I tell you something? Yes, please. Last lap saw their personal best for Ooh, everyone. Yeah. That Sao Paulo temperature coming down finally? Are yep, the winter yep, coats yep. coming out? Uh, for Sao Paulo people, maybe, but definitely for not for me. For me, I would say this is still a warm race. See what happens into turn one. There's the temperature. I mean... I don't remember exactly, Lorenzo, what the forecast was at the start of the day, but I feel like that might... Okay, so it's gone down just a little bit, 4 degrees Celsius, and that's about 12 degrees Fahrenheit or so. Oh, and it's gone down once again. The cloud cover has come in. It's about 4 p.m., so we're almost into the evening time. Track temp's definitely coming down, and that Ego only pitting. means one thing. Faster lap times. Also, leader in LMP3 overall, Miguel Vigo and Hydra Race Geodesic. First green flag pit stop of the day after an hour and a half. Yes. That'll be the uh, that'll be their first pit stop. Yeah, now we're potentially going to see a true pace coming out of the cars in terms of full length stints as a, a little bit of a look on the inside from Brendan Roseboro, but not being able to overtake Dilworth. Dilworth not flinching whatsoever in that uh, LMP3% of Nomad, so good to see that coming. Meanwhile, penalty for uh, another, one of the Hydro Race geodesic teams. But not the one that you think. Always in here for it. Get a penalty over here, Joey. Oh, dear. That one's... There's so many penalties currently being reviewed right now, Lorenzo, that that was actually too far down to me to actually see that. It was uh, it was about 20 spots further than my, uh, my Google sheet was scrolled. Yeah. And there's currently 20 plus penalties being reviewed. That's how uh, that's how much race control has on their plate right now. So we'll give them some patience. We'll let them do their job. But the pit cycle might not be what decides the lead of this race. They're trying to make it happen on track. But that Hydra Race Geodesic number 64, Brandon Rosebro, stuck behind a wall of Porsche Cup traffic there. Gives Jason Dilworth just enough of a margin to try and run away here. And is he going to minimize his losses and bring it down pit lane this time? The answer is no. Prestanda Nomad stays out. Number 64 stays out. And Pascal Stick stays out as well. He's going for a potential dive into turn one. Isn't fully alongside, though. And stay one, two, three amongst these guys. And that's interesting. Was that an early stop from Miguel Vigo? Was that less fuel put in in the last pit stop? You got to count all these laps, Lorenzo, because with two hours and a half left, you got to start counting back already. Yeah, absolutely. Meanwhile, Nomad going defensive. You can even see Roseboro trying to follow suit. He's going to dive down on the away Vitaly card. There's some, not some, I don't know if there was a contact or some shoving off of the sword. But meanwhile, that opens the door for Pascal Sticks on the outside, going through La Regina and Ferradura. Doesn't quite work out there, but the switch back into turn eight has worked so many times. Doesn't work for Sticks this time, though. And uh, you mentioned near contact with uh, with that Wave Italy TCR. I don't think Gonzalo Fabi can afford another bit of contact because one more penalty, I don't know what comes after the 122nd penalty. I think that might be might be excommunication or deportation or something like that. Damn, <laughs> that might be that might be the next step up. Uh, that probably potentially this could be a a, a race ending you know, disqualification. Without, to be honest, we haven't seen 
one in Ivra, and even when it was prior to Ivra, GD, uh, DGFX, I think since ever. Now, if we had the Lorenzo Bonder Ivra debut next season, that could be the first disqualification finally. Wow. Oh, oh wow. Wow, indeed. Trouble in turn one. Glacier in sport. Olympus in cup. Everybody gets going. Not much damage on those two cars, but turn one has been a very, very hot spot today, Lorenzo. And I have a feeling that was another case of the classes tripping over each other in turn one. This is a change for the lead in LMP3. Before we can take a look at that, Brandon Roseboro has gotten to the inside of Jason Dilworth. They're still side by side, though. Hydra Race Geodesic on the inside. Prestanda Nomad on the outside. Pascal Sticks trying to make it three wide. That is not physically possible. He's forced to slot in line. And Brandon Roseboro takes the lead back for but a second as Dilworth sends it absolutely miles wide. And now Roseboro. Bro gets to hang on to the lead. Yeah, but for how long, though? Because he's not going to be able to overtake those two Porsches as the Hydra Race Geodesic thinks he's trying to battle for position. And now Dilworth's losing a little bit of grip and is going to lose the spot to Pascal Sticks. And remember this pit stop time for Miguel Vigo, by the way. It was 24.9 seconds, and he's still behind the wheel. This is a huge oh. slide from the K Kramer Cup car. Overcorrection on the outside of Jun Sao. No wall contact is lucky for them, but oh, right in the middle of the track. That's the, uh, the Hyperion GT4 coming by. Lucky to avoid contact there, but that was dicey. I know, I know somewhere in this uh, broadcast booth, Connery Matic is, is very thankful that he's not seeing this. And here we go into turn one, Glacier. Oof. Yeah, Ab Yikes. we heard from producer Dustin Ollis, absolute send, and I think that's, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. Uh, don't know what to say. Slam Two words, penalty for absolute Olympus. send, that's all you need. Send it. Indeed, indeed. Pascal Sticks has gotten by Jason Dilworth, by the way, maybe just in time as it's Calamity Corner through Faradura around the outside, around the satellite Aston Martin, around the Wave Italy Mercedes. Suddenly Pascal is P2, likely P3 overall, but we don't actually know that, Lorenzo, because as I was trying to mention before everything kicked off, 25 second pit stop time for Vigo. I believe average pit stop time has been around 20 seconds, so depending on how much time these guys have lost in traffic, this might not be the battle for second anymore. This might be the battle for the lead. Yeah, arguably. So this is going to be an interesting one as they still going on strong. And Pascal is now going to use all the gap that he can actually muster up but you, on uh, on Dilworth to get closer to Brendan Roseboro before they come to the pit stop. Is this going to be pit stop time? No, it is not. That is... Uh... I don't know if that's a case of strategy being totally different to the end of the day, Lorenzo. Are uh, Hydra Race Geodesic potentially thinking about eliminating a stop by coming in early and uh, and stretching out their stops, having longer stints to the end of the race? Or was that a miscalculation? There's so many strategy questions that could be answered right now because this is now the fourth lap that uh, the top three in LMP3 have stayed out in comparison to that number 62. And that's a much wider pit window than I think we were expecting. Yeah. Olympus Atlas Cup car down pit lane as the battle for second in TCR is back. I think this is finally an attempt at, uh, at making a pass for Patrick Kabinji. He's finally got a legitimate chance. It's not much of a risk. A high percentage move gets Kabinji and Team Hoisingfeld up into second and uh, even deeper into the championship lead as if they weren't good enough there already. Yeah, showcasing while they are probably one of the kings of TCRs, not just in Ivra, but also into a Neo 24 hour series esports competition. And that was a very high percentage move. You've seen Kubinji just hunting for almost a half an hour of green, green flag running now. He's had opportunities to get the nose to the inside, to take a peek. He's never gone for it. But the second he was actually able to go side by side, he was able to make the move easily. And I think that's just, you mentioned these guys, some of the best in TCR, some of the most experienced. I think that's a lot of experience coming into consideration there and uh, and not going for a move that had any more risk than he needed. Yeah, meanwhile, about the lead, uh, overall lead, and as close as it has ever been. 
Yeah, that was it was as north of one and a half seconds for a moment, but traffic giveth, traffic taketh away, just like Shakespeare always says. And now suddenly Pascal Styx has a sniff of the lead. It's a little bit of deja vu, just like on lap one when he was behind the number 62. Now it's the number 64 that he has to work on getting by, but he's got a huge ass in front of him to get through coming down to Cedar de Lago. That is cleared, and then you've just got a few little stragglers, a couple singular pieces of lap traffic. These are slightly easier to deal with, Lorenzo, than dealing with absolute packs, but they're still just as crazy as you saw all three of those cars get around the core TCR in different ways, and I think the third of them ended up turning them around. And that region wasn't ideal enough oh. again. Is that Mercedes still pointed in a straight line? I think it is, but that was very much not ideal. As is a change for the lead in the cup class, ATRS got by impulse amidst that all. And I think that TCR car, oh, that, yeah, broken rear suspension, I think, on the number 146, Lorenzo. And they are parked in the middle of Bico de Pato. Uh, not the best body we want to be parked in. I think they'll be able to get going, so I don't think this will be a safety car, but everybody has to be very, very careful to get around here. Oh, dear. Oh, my God. I think that was even Miguel Villa that was trying to go around. I think he got around, but eventually, geez, that was that was that was rather crazy. But Alice Pleba does get it turned around eventually. I do wonder how that suspension broke, though. Was there contact with the Prestanda Nomad number 56 that, that turned him around in the first place? Most likely. Got to check out the replay machine for that one, but I think that uh, I think that may be what happened to the rear end of that car. There may have been a, a slight amount of air in between the two cars that were here in Lorenzo. Yeah, we're gonna look. I think look on the replay. I deal. Just a little bit. Just a little bit, like a uh, one fifty guy, one fifty cent guy would you would would say. But look at uh, oh, that was that was so close. I think that's the uh, I think that's the Archer brothers, yes. potentially Mercedes yes. that came onto the scene. It looked like they were about to spin. It looked like they got in the brakes halfway through the corner. But Jacob O'Reilly, good job from him to uh, avoid any further trouble. And unfortunately, Alice Pleva, it has just been pain for the core team in this race so far. Qualifying didn't go their way. Race hasn't gone their way. And now they were uh, sitting in the middle of a corner with a full field coming head on. Yep. And that, that was the close one with Miguel Vigo. Yep, yep. Still, though, six laps now is the difference between Miguel Vigo's last stop time and basically everybody else in LMP3. This is, uh, this is triggering my strategy senses, Lorenzo, because there's almost half of this race left to go in terms of time. But, uh... Cup class is in their pit stop cycle right now. The sport class is in the midst of their pit stop cycle as well. And the LMP3s just don't seem to want to bring it down pit lane at all. You feel it's for the week. As uh, Olympus is serving their pit, uh, their penalty, I think there is another GT4 car behind. They're serving their penalties as well. Yeah, you'll see the uh, the cup and sport classes get back to normal after that pit cycle is over. So we'll uh, we'll update you on that. I don't think there's going to be much in terms of changes. The uh, the the Hydra Race Geodesic GT4 will still likely be in the lead of the sport class once that all cycles around. But lots of battles on pit lane. Some people missing their boxes. Never ideal. But yeah, we'll uh, we'll keep you updated as that goes on. I'm not sure if there were any driver changes in the Hydra Race Geodesic camp. I'm looking down the order. No, no driver change. Justin Ream still behind the wheel in the sport no. car. Driver change for SimCity Racing and Cup. Dalton Zavadil's gotten out of the car. Alex uh -huh. Jeringa behind the wheel of the number 971 now. Uh, okay. Okay, good. Also, there was a driver replacement. Oh, here we score go. And uh, Persona Nomad finally... Finally, after so many years, uh, they come down to their pit stop. Been centuries, and now we wait for the blend. Well, first, we have to remember that pit stop time from Hydra Race Geodesic. 24.9 seconds, Miguel Vigo was sat in the pit stall, and that is unfortunate for Pascal Styx. Overcooking the pit stall, has to back up, loses a couple precious seconds, and just as he does that, he's going to get out of the car and hand it over to his teammate, Jason Dilworth got out of the car, handed it over to Lachlan Behrman and uh, Sven Newman behind the wheel of the core car. Now, those two drivers that were in the car in the first place, Dilworth and uh, Sticks, are strong enough in LMP3, but 
When you put Lachlan Behrman and Sven Newman in the car, they've been aggressive all season, Lorenzo, and they've been spectacular. Yeah. We're going to look at what happened to XBD Emerald. Supposedly, this is funny. I'm, wa I'm waiting to see the comedy. Oh dear! Yep, that is the uh, that is the unfortunate. Oh my goodness! That is that is catastrophic. Oh, that's a lot of that's almost disqualification levels of backing up. Yep. But they did get away with it, so well done to them. Still waiting on a couple of stragglers in LMP3. You got side by side with uh, Olympus and Geeks Energy fiercely forward, and the ATRS Porsche in the middle of the road. Where do that you go? Is evil. The straight line speeds are almost <laughs> identical. Yeah, but that is evil. You basically use a car to block the path, and it was actually the ATRS car that uh, fiercely forward used to block the path, and uh, and the Olympus cars try to get away. But fortunately for them, no crashes whatsoever. As we can see the. Hyperion and uh, Ashland cars coming out. And the final pit stop for the Hydra Race Geodesic number 64. Well, not the final pit stop for the 64. The final pit stop of this cycle. You got Brandon Rosebro out of the car. You've got Austin Young behind the wheel. And unfortunately, the number 72 also misses the pit stall. Here is Miguel Vigo, though, easily in the lead. A 10 second shorter stop than uh, than Prestanda Nomad, than Core, than the other two Hydra Race Geodesic teams. It's an 11 second lead, a nine second lead now for this number 62, but it's definitely an alternate strategy, Lorenzo. Yeah, definitely a more aggressive strategy than everybody else. Is it going to pay off at the end of the day? We don't know because there's still two more hours of racing despite only having two yellow flags. Now we breathe once again. We got to have a couple of these periods earlier on before the yellows came out. We got to breathe for a few moments, but Trust me, it's not over. Pit cycle's almost yep. over. And uh, look who's cycled to the front in the sport class, Lorenzo. The rusty spatulas are on sort of their own yes. strategy. They're doing their own thing, but they're uh, they're leading in class right now. And who knows how it's going to go to the end of the race. Maybe the calculations will go their way. Yeah, maybe the CMU Cube 360 Hertz actually is helping them out a little bit to help on those calculations on top of giving the force feedback. A little bit of a shameless plug in terms of, you know, doing a little bit of merchandising. But uh, let's see how this is going to work for them. The, the, these alternate strategies uh, are making the race into, to interesting. DCR battle on pit lane. There's been some wide pit windows in some of the other classes, but that has absolutely not been the case in TCR. Everybody is in simultaneously. And you're going to get some uh, nice driver changes, I think, as well. Fabian Siegman has taken over the car from Patrick Kabinji for Team Hoisingfeldt and uh, Spencer McCarthy has gotten behind the wheel of the number 162. I'm still seeing Jordan Bachmeyer, and I'm still seeing Marcel Jochheim, though. I think they might be going for one more stint. Yes, indeed they are. Brabham retakes the lead. Impulse second. Team Hoisingveld fourth. Obsidian jumps them as well. Yeah, interesting. And, uh, we have, uh, and now we know why the short fueling has come up for the number 62, Joey. Uh, to stop core from under fueling and jumping us on halfway points. So ah. the, the, the strategizing of everything just makes everything more interesting. Those halfway points, they, they can definitely get you. We may They're devilish. They are. We might be approaching halfway in terms of time in 12 minutes, but that will not be halfway in the race. We're currently on lap 61, still 21 more laps until we reach halfway. If my calculations are correct, that'll be in about... Uh, about 30 minutes or so, assuming we stay green. We could very well not stay green, though, because there are still doors and elbows being thrown. Wave Italy and German Sim Racing, they've both gotten into their own trouble in the, in the sport class so far today. They're throwing everything at each other coming up the hill. Yeah, absolutely. And German Sim Racing with a really good run. I don't know if they're going to be able to make that overtake work on the Wave Italy GT4. But that Aston Martin V8, the Mercedes V8, uh, is looking really good. Conta for the... Oh, oh and no. there it is. Huge accident on the front straight. Dennis Brizic in the German sim racing Aston Martin. And a huge hit for Jeremy Rouleau in the middle of the road. That's past pit entry, Lorenzo. This could be a safety car again as Rouleau's trying to figure out where to go to get off the road. Dennis Brizic does bring it down next to a Marshall post. But Jeremy Rouleau... Be careful, almost drove into traffic. 
This is very precarious on the front straight. Uh, precarious is a actually actual compliment. This might trigger the safety car. Is he going to be able to get it turned? There, there it you is. go. The third caution of the day. Congratulations to everybody in the YouTube chat who voted for three plus on the poll because we have made it to three after huge contact between the Wave Italy Mercedes and the German Sim Racing Aston Martin. We will take the field down to a yellow conditions once again. Yeah, uh, this would have been a really good battle as now he's going to bring it up to the Marshall Post and take the toe most likely and... Uh... What could have been a really good battle was just one clumsy job uh, of Travers making contact to one another. And suddenly, Lorenzo, halfway points become an even more difficult conversation. But here's yeah. what happened from the helicopter. Colossal hits. It looked like that might happen. They were throwing elbows at each other in the middle sector, then down the front straight. No margin for error when you come together like that. Yeah, absolutely. Just... I'm baffled, like... And this this, was, this, this was terrifying, with Rouleau trying to turn it around directly in front of the TCR train. I think, uh... I think the Brabham driver of, uh, of Jordan Bachmeyer may have... may have had a code brown there. Yeah. All I'm right. Well. This is going to be an interesting pit cycle, because... Or an interesting yellow cycle, I should say, because the pit cycle is essentially over. Basically, everybody made their pit stops within about two to five laps ago. So uh, how many pit stops are we going to see? As we see another look at what happened there. I don't know. Who do you, how, do you, how do you think they're going to sign blame on that, Lorenzo? Because that looked like two cars just going for the same piece of real estate in a straight line. Good question. You might pin the blame of the guy behind or, you, you know, trying to get more aggressive on the shoveling. But... Uh... Eh. Lots more penalties have come down in the meantime, by the way. 30-second penalty for the number 424 of Maximilian Zurer. That has been served already. Just kidding. But uh, if you remember that crash that brought out the previous caution between uh, Povilas Duchovskis and the uh, Team Hoisingfeld LMP3, that is a 40-second penalty for the Wave Italy number 486. 10 second penalty still waiting for uh, Kimon Sapini and the K Kramer number 32. 20 second penalty for the Hydra Race Geodesic Cup car of uh, Eustein Herfjord. 20 seconds for Simone Gilardi in uh, sport class as well. And one more penalty, Kanyo Lopez has gotten five seconds in the XPD Emerald Mercedes. So we may see some EOLs, Lorenzo. We may see some more penalties served in green flag conditions, but all we can do now is uh, is calm things down and think about the strategy now in the second half of the race. Yeah. Uh, which the unfortunate bit is that you're not going to be around over here to commentate the second half of the race. Yeah, unfortunately, I'll be uh, I'll be heading out. Connery Maddock waiting in the wings. They'll be in the booth for the final uh, half of this race. But we'll see. It'll be a race between me and Connery Lorenzo to see who gets to call the restart. Because if we get a short safety car, I might still get to be here. If not, uh, if not, I might not be so lucky. Are, are you trying to jinx, uh, like throw commentators jinx on the on Benny so he can actually speed up the car and we can actually have a faster reshuffling of the cars and then a potential faster restart? Yes, Is that please. what you're saying? Yes, okay. please. Okay. I don't, I don't know how many pit stops we're going to see here because, as I said, we had the majority of the pit cycle just a couple of moments ago, but... If you think about the end of the race, Sorenzo, two hours left, that's only so many laps in green flag conditions. You do have to think about halfway points, so I'm not sure if we'll see anybody actually bring it down, but you don't only have to think about halfway points. You have to think about the end of the race as well and actually winning this thing, and I do not envy any of these teams having to calculate this strategy right now because this safety car came out at a very awkward moment in the pit cycle. Yeah, uh, like I can see, for example, uh, Ali Hunt's car, he, they are in P8 overall. 24 laps, then you have Vigo Vigo's car with 13 laps. Of course, we're not, we're including safety car uh, laps in. The Craig Kramer uh, cars also have 25 laps, but everybody else is kind of like on the beginning of their stints, bar the few cars here and there in the grid. So I think we should have another YouTube poll. We've been through half of this race so far, and we've had three cautions. In the second half of the race, 
How many cautions? One, two, or three plus? That should be the next poll. Oh, boy. Because at this rate, we could have three more, theoretically. Oh, we're easily. But I think it will be it will be a little bit tougher to have three more. So I think I'll, I'll be, say uh, more two. I'll, I'll say two more. Two more. There we go. Polls up. Vote now on your phones or your PCs or your, uh, or smart your tablets, fridges, your smart fridges, whatever you got. Smart fridges do have that. Oh yeah, they yeah. do. True. And your uh, your Tesla, your Tesla monitor, uh, with the giant iPad in the middle of the car. I never liked that. No. Well. Lorenzo, I'll tell you this now. I was just at the New York Auto Show for the press days the other day. Every mm. car has one of those like giant iPads now. Oh, like every heck new car. No. It's it's crazy. Uh, it's like I think I think Elon Musk for all the great he has been doing for all, uh, uh, for like astronomy and uh for astrophysics and, and things like that. There are things that are like take it down a notch. Yeah. Quite, quite a few things. Take it down a notch, people. Quite a few things indeed. But yeah, you, you go into like the new Ford Bronco or whatever. Like what reason does a Ford Bronco need to have two iPads in front of you? But it does. Every car manufacturer. It's crazy. I uh, There's one feature in the Ford now where you can uh, click on send feedback and you can record a message from the car to send directly to Ford. And uh, I think when the general public gets to take on the auto show starting this weekend, I think they're going to be getting a lot more messages back to their headquarters. And uh, some poor Ford employee is going to have to listen to thousands of of teenagers thinking they're funny on the send Lol, feedback button. LOL, CAC W. Exactly. <laughs> Skibbity Toilet and uh, Kai Sanat and all that kind of thing. Munka W or, or I don't know what Sticking they Sticking out your yacht for the Rizzler. We're still young. We're still young, Lorenzo. Oh, you're young. I'm pretty th uh, nearly 33. Yeah, you're not. E yeah, you're not even Gen Z. Millennial. Well, uh, Point and laugh. Millennial. Point and laugh. Well, you but are Gen Z. You, you are worse. That might be true. At least we're not Gen Alpha. At least we're not Skibbity Toilet, Kai Sanat, all that kind of thing. Pit stops underway, by the way. Thing? under you It is. You'll 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 learn soon. Pit stops underway. In most classes, not LMP3 though, track position proving very valuable, but a few cup entrants bringing it down. You had Visceral, Orion, and Olympus. And in the sport class in GT4, Glacier and RJD coming down. Both of them have a little bit of damage to repair though, so I think they're uh, electing to go for that. Absolutely. Meanwhile, we have a commentator in the race. We have a commentator in the race. Yes, we do. Ryan Walker has yeah, taken absolutely. the wheel of the, uh, the satellite GT4. Unfortunately, it wasn't handed off to him in pristine condition, but it is uh, it is still a car and Ryan will still be able to handle it, I bet. Yeah, hopefully uh, get the get to the end of the race. And I don't think yeah, I don't think there's any other commentators in the entry list at all, which is a shame. We got to we got to up that representation next season. I mean, I am bringing my team to Ivor next season, so there you go. You got to get behind the wheel. No. Yeah. I don't quickest, do TCRs. Quickest disqualification in uh, in Ivory history. Let's do it. Joey, Joey, hold up. Y you have to understand here one thing. You talk about me like I'm going to, you know, disqualify <laughs> myself like uh, Vinny Jones did, uh, got a red card in like in eight seconds. Exactly. But uh, you have to remind, I'm race spot finest. I'm the best place <laughs> race spot driver in the commentators race in 2023. Okay, None of us so. are Australian, though, so... We're all, uh, we're I all beat the Australians. Tier. I just I beat the majority of the Australians. That, the majority, though, not all of them. I didn't beat the the one that is actually won, which was Cam Dance, if I remember correctly. Yeah, you gotta you gotta beat him next time. Well, because uh, you know I'm not gonna be do? able to do it. I, I no, needed Paul, the Paul help. Smith, Paul Smith's not gonna be able to do it. I needed the help. Or was my help? Exactly. I tried to help you, but then I blocked a fin into the grass at Lime Rock, and I got killed. And by got killed, I mean I killed myself. It was my fault. Where, where was my help in the oval race? <laughs> I don't know. Joey, I I got... you, 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 drove, you drive tree stocks more than I do. Where was my help? I don't know. Also, for the amount of, for the amount of times we talk about the commentator races in these, Ivra, in these Ivra Club Sports Series races, I think we need to do a combination. We need to have legitimate drivers of Ivra versus commentators 
and sort of like a, sort of like a team battle. You have like one platinum driver and one bronze in the same car. Pitch that to a pitch that to Casper and Arjuna. Uh, it would be a good idea. Well, I would be down for that. I don't know. But anyway, I think I'm not going to be so lucky, Lorenzo, to be with you for the restart. As the pit cycle continues, we're going to have a few more laps behind the pace car. We will go green in a matter of moments, but I will get to hop off. I've enjoyed this uh, first half of the race immensely, and I'm looking forward to leaving you in the very capable hands of Connery Maddock to bring you to the championship finale in the 700 kilometers of Interlagos, and the slightly capable hands of Lorenzo Bonder will be here for the rest of this race as well. Connery, take it over. Have fun. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much there, Joey. I am Connery Maddock. I'm going to be joining Lorenzo for the, uh, for the final, well, two hours uh, of this race that we have to run currently under the safety car of course um, I have to wonder how many more of those we'll get before we are done here Lorenzo but it seems like a relatively cloudy day for uh, uh, for a day at Interlagos um, it's uh, it, it seems to be that the conditions not as hot as they, they could have been in this sort of situation and I know the trend has been over the last couple of laps that it's been uh, on the downward trend yeah, a downward trend is more the appropriate language. As you can see, the track tradition is not degrees. It is track temperature 27 in the end. It's uh, down to 2 degrees since last time we actually covered it, but it's still mostly cloudy and we're going to 4.30 p.m. local time. Uh, of course, in sim time uh, on the 30th of March. Uh, what has also happened to Connery, uh, wind speed has picked down a little bit while... Uh, but uh, now going up and down like a roller coaster. Uh, it's still an interesting race to be talking about as uh, we might get the green flag really soon. I don't know if it's going to be in this lap, but most li next lap most likely. There's a couple still trying to get themselves in position. The 450 car I saw racing up the right-hand side of a couple of uh, uh, cars on the line there. There's the uh, safety car, which, uh, well, the lights are still... Let's see, I can't even see from my own view um, in that particular uh, situation, but uh, we're still getting some wave rounds sorted. There we go, light's still on top of the safety car, so we're not going to be uh, going green anytime soon at the moment. Still trying to get those wave rounds sorted. This is an entire process uh, here in this series, but we'd, we'd rather people be where they need to be and not in the way of certain classes uh, uh, to get ourselves a clean restart. Yeah, absolutely, and... Uh... And we, hopefully we don't get into that uh, lonely thought of, you know, yellow bring more yellows. Because sometimes mm -hmm. in the endurance series, this has become true, especially at the first half of the races, right? As we see, I think, the RGD car that is coming around or, or the XPD Emerald that, that is coming around. That is actually the RGD car, though, that is doing the wave around. But... Uh, I truly hope in this second half of the race we get a more clean, despite fearful uh, race that has been throughout. I just want to see a, a race that drivers can go side by side, a shovel, shove to sh do some shoveling, but still remain clean uh, throughout the majority of the stint. Yeah, absolutely. As we see, the, one of the Mercedes uh, head the way through around the outside there. That's the Hyperion Racing 2 in the 454 Turner Schroll behind the wheel of that one as uh, we remain under the caution flag here um, in towards the very second half of this uh, of this race at Interlagos. It's, uh, um, it's good to see everyone sticking it out towards the end of the season here, giving us a, a pretty good show. We do have, uh, f well, I mean, we had 47 cars still connected to the server, and of course, you know, two of those are actually still down on towards the pit lane. That's uh, Wave Italy uh, 486 and the German Sim Racing by ECV car still uh, on the pit lane after uh, their little coming together so uh, it's going to be uh, interesting to see whether or not those guys are actually uh, willing to come back out onto the circuits or uh, they're going to call it a day but uh, other than those cars we haven't really had that many retirements we we had a good couple from the, the LMP3 class uh, a little bit earlier on we had team Hoisingveld uh, um, go out we had uh, Moradness and, and Delatraz as well in, in the very very early stages uh, of this race and in fact I don't think those latter two even took uh, the uh, t 
well, they, they did take the start, excuse me, but they were they were out relatively uh, early on in this one. So, um, so still a relatively full complement uh, of cars out there uh, here today, which is absolutely fantastic to see. We like to see a decent rate uh, of attrition here. Uh, here's uh, Austin Young in the Hydra Race uh, Geodesic Racing car, and it's uh, been a great day for the Geodesic Racing outfit. Uh, at the moment, they, of course, hold those front two spots in the prototype class, and they're not doing too badly uh, down in sport either with the 462 uh, in second place. So they're, they're going to be pretty happy about uh, the, the situation at the moment here, Lorenzo, our geodesic. Um, they've, they've, they've had a pretty good interlago so far. Yeah, they did. Uh, despite everything that transpired for them, pitting a little bit earlier, we saw they were sure feeling this car to try to, you know, avoid uh, the core car to underfuel as well. So, uh, because there is that halfway points, and uh, basically this is the fight for for first place, Connery, which is the or or being in, as, in front of the other driver, the it, it, mm -hmm. points painting and everything, right? Yeah. So this is why I think this is the interesting aspect for us in GT2 as uh, now Glacier goes around. I think there's still a few more cars uh, able to do any wave arounds, but we're gonna get the green flag uh, in a little bit. Hey, uh, for those about halfway points, I think we have. 15 more laps, 15, 14 more laps of uh, full race uh, length before we get halfway points. Yeah, of, uh, of course. It's, a, it's an interesting situation here, of course. You know, depending on, uh, uh, well, we have a, a, an allotted amount of laps, hence why, you know, there's a distance on this race in terms of kilometers. But, of course, we do have to fit it all in uh, in terms of the time limit here. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, where that falls as the field continue uh, the cycle round. But uh, that's what I like to see, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, a, a championship fight, you know, coming down to you know coming you know coming down to the very last moments the one one team being ahead of the other team is is really all that matters i love it when it works out like that yeah and they nearly were at the start of the race one after the other and after the other so basically mm -hmm. making a three piece so that was this would have made the job of core really really complicated but luckily mm -hmm. for for pascal he kind of cleared himself really quickly and that was the really good aspect you know of not having these issues Play, uh, plaguing them uh, early on in the race, so that's good to know. The question is now with Van in the car, how does the space fare against Austin? And, and Miguel, Miguel has to give the car to somebody else. He has to give the car, I think, to Graham, Graham Sanders eventually. He's soon going to do that on the next pit stop. But uh, is his pace better than both guys so to be an important that can contend at the end of the race, get those halfway points maybe, and then beat him at the end of the race so they can get the title? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I mean, I'm going to be uh, relying on you uh, <laughs> to, uh, to, to keep tabs on that one. I am very much a guest uh, in the Ivor commentary booth here as well. It's been a very long time uh, since I've done two, uh, one of these races. But uh, we actually do get uh, word from race control that all of the wave arounds and all of the positioning uh, has been sorted. So therefore, we will be going green this next time by so uh, a, a decent caution period here of course if we you know uh with the situation you know the uh, you know it's you know becomes a timed race so therefore these cautions really do eat into that it changes the strategy around just that little bit for these cars you can see the uh, the tire warming the tire preparation going on because the drivers would have all gotten that signal at the same time that we did in terms of when the race is going to start but uh, it's going to be the two Hydra Race geodesic racing cars that are going to be uh, in the control of this one from the front of LMP3. Of course, we got some unanswered questions, unanswered battles uh, in a lot of the other classes as well. As they uh, come towards the back end of the lap, you can see v uh, Vigo just dropping off the back of the safety car just a little bit, uh, backing up the field behind him, and then... Uh, field will be under his control momentarily to bring them back towards the green flag. It's great they're able to join us for this roughly second half uh, of this round number six at Interlagos in the GSI Club Sport Series by Ivra.
Coming towards the start-finish line now. We're about to get this race back underway as there's a little bit of an early go for Prestanta. Almost running into the back of Austin Young, but finally they're released and charging their way down in towards turn number one. Fanning out already as they head their way down in towards uh, turn number one. WSI Esports Bucket Kill looking down the inside of ATRS. Esports trying to gain positions off of this restart, but it ends up that they'll all lose positions or at least lose ground to the Olympus coming off the corner. The rest of the classes all getting themselves through the center S's single file in a rather respectable fashion as well so a little bit of confusion on the restart at the very front of the field there's a bit of a side-by-side -side battle wsr um, looking down the inside of uh, the geeks energy fiercely forward car uh, it doesn't seem to have been a great restart at all for nathan moore he goes from the offense to the defense immediately starting to slide back through the lmp3 field now he got battles uh, further back in uh, cup as well the two uh, the visceral and the kramer uh, racing esports cars deciding to have a, a little bit of a disagreement on the way in towards the middle sector there as well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think there was a little bit of a checkup uh, for Lachlan Berman that I think kind of like made stuck everybody else in the LMP3 a little bit stuck. And Kyle added to the confusion in, in the restart. Uh, I think that was Austin Young kind of like checking up the field a little bit. But nevertheless, everybody got away cleanly. And uh, Sabel had a very, apparently a little bit of an issue for Sabel, but uh, managed to carry on through as they are, I think, right in front of the one of the TCRs that looked like to be the Hoisinville TCR from what it looks. Uh, yeah, that does seem to be the case as, as the, uh, the, the rest of the field has been mixed in. Uh, just that little bit. That's just uh, what happens on these uh, restarts sometimes. You, it's kind of hard to find a space for you to run in without uh, uh, having to deal with, uh, with with traffic as we look back up towards uh, that uh, LMP3 field as they head their way uh, through uh, towards the exit of uh, that first little sector in towards the Decida de Lago and Presidente Nomad uh, losing a little bit of time up towards those uh, geodesic racing cars for the moment. Of course, uh, Lockheed and Behrman really, uh, I mean, I don't know if we'll get the replay of it, but he really tried to time the restart and uh, just didn't get it right. Had to slam on the anchors and, and not run into the back um, of uh, Austin Young directly ahead of him. So, yeah, it was an, an awkward situation on that restart. Thankfully, it didn't end in an absolutely horrendous incident. No, it didn't. That was really good. I think one important stuff is that the high... Hydroracid, uh, the Hydroracid, Hydroracid Desic uh, sport car goes into the lead, the 462 finally back into the yep. lead against the Impulse. Oh! And SRN around. Yeah, SRN around. They're able to get back going, though, without any problem with anyone else. They uh, were in a bit of a wheel-to-wheel uh, -wheel fight with Orion Race Team. It was uh, Mike Dam on the inside there. Um, just, a, just a coming together between the two. Here's the replay of that race start. You can see Prasanna Nomads just you know trying to time the restart a little bit it was a very very late uh go uh from the leading hydro race geodesic racing car uh, which might have confused him just a little bit but sometimes uh, that that happens right you try to time yep. the restart you try to get the run sometimes you're right sometimes you're wrong yeah and it nearly mimicked, mimicked what happened in the in the previous restart in the lmp3 class where pascal uh actually made contact with the Kramer car. Meanwhile, nearly three wide into the head of Bossa here, Connery. But uh, the Hydra Ace Geodesic number 72 cannot get around whatsoever. Oh, and Ivadrino just about holding on to that car. Oh, that was a bit of a sketchy situation through the Decida de Lago. It was a, a tiny bit of contact with the WSR uh, eSports machine that, uh, that, that caused that one. He does end up losing the spot to uh, the 32, but uh, I, I think he'll be um, uh, counting his lucky stars that that wasn't a catastrophic incident. Meanwhile, this battle still goes on. Uh, Geeks Energy fiercely forward on the outside here of that WSR eSports car. Of course, Nathan Moore in that 11 trying to recover from what was a pretty poor restart i think you'll be fine with admitting that but at least he's trying to make himself for, get himself forward progress and and get that recovery going yeah absolutely meanwhile we check to the battle in the lead of sport as uh, impulse is on the outside trying to make a charge on the 462 that is uh they made a, uh, some small contact so justin ream survives the whole ordeal the thing is now uh Vladislav Shopov being very, very aggressive and uh, now being able to re retake back the lead over here, Connery. But uh, this is flying to dangerous waters for all, every single one of them. And like, uh, 
for the full 6-2. Right now, it is all a race about maintaining position because the Impulse needs all the points they can get. They just need to finish so either uh, the 4-6-2 is a champion. Uh, yeah, that's that, that's the situation there. It's, uh, it can be pretty sketchy indeed. We'll have to see um, if there's any uh, sort of intense uh, situation for this race lead. You see GZ is at racing goal going towards the outside, the 462. They'll have the opening for the, well, the outside for the first part of the center S is though you can swing it around the outside here. It's very tricky to do, but you can see the competitor gaining ground on the inside. Impulse will now have the inside for the long left-hander at the Curva del Sol, and look at who's trying to get involved as well. Rodrigo Mises in the triple four, looking to try and make it three wide on the way down in towards the breaking zone. So this is the Cedar de Lago. It looks like Impulse are going to try and, well, potentially back out. I was going to say back out for the race lead there, but they're going to stick their nose in uh, regardless of the situation. Now we see the huge jazz car of th uh, the 437 Sven Zembel now looking to try and get a piece of the pie as well. Great fighting here uh, back in the sport class, and it's all been very, very respectful so far. Svandel trying to stick his nose down the inside there at the uh, triple right, but uh, well, this, uh, <laughs> this all gets pretty intense, doesn't it? But uh, everyone mm -hmm. keeping off of each other's bumpers for now. Yeah, and that's really good. And, and that battle for between Sven and, and Impulse, Sven Nemo and Vladislav Shopov and Impulse basically kind of like would secure their position of sorts in the in the standings against rjd because that would put them ahead of rgd in points and leaving them into huge ass into third place but for me what is important is uh, we also have to think about drive time as well while the chilean driver or Gomez might be the only south american left in in this race to properly represent south america to try to charge now on the lead against the canadian driver justin rem Have a look as, uh, well, challenged the first time on the previous lap. That's going to be close enough to challenge this time in towards turn number two. At least as far as the race leader is concerned, battle for third going on. Though Sven Demmel sends one down the inside at the start of the lap. And he's actually able to get that position converted. Pretty good job there on the part of that uh, three, uh, 437. Let's see if Impulse can have a response down in towards the Cedar de Lago. It seems like these uh, uh, GT4 cars uh, really love sitting in the slipstream and getting those slingshots past each other. So I would expect Shopov to still be in contention here as those mm -hmm. fronts who continue to be stuck together like glue. Yeah, uh, it's still really good racing between everybody. I was just looking at the gaps from, from the lead because Miguel Vigo was able to be break uh, to break away from Austin Young from from a really considerate uh, gap, but of course we have to take into consideration here, Connery. They're fighting for a halfway point, uh, so they're trying to take as much points from Sven Neumann as they can possibly get away from. But the thing is, more importantly, their gap with the lighter cars is being nearly more than half a second faster than everybody else in the field. So that's working in their favor for the time being. The question is, can they make work this on the long run? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, yeah, it's always interesting when there's a when there's a caution that sort of happens around about this halfway point because, like you said, you have those halfway points uh, to be concerned about. You know, do you try and keep track position, try and get the halfway points and compromise the rest of your race, or do you uh, decide to play the long game and 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 try and capitalize on it? it it's yeah. it, it's a very weird uh, situation to be in, uh, but of course these drivers you know have a lot of experience under their belts now uh, these teams uh, in this series so they'll know what's up that's for sure closing up a little bit down in towards the center s this time around but no by no side by side action just yet in and amongst this uh, sport class at least on this particular uh, lap you've got uh, of course the other classes i mean the the sport class would be giving us the lion's share of the fun so far uh, on this particular little uh, uh, little stint but um, of course you know action going on elsewhere we've got uh, a couple of cars in the line p234 for the cup class are still relatively close together you got this in the prototypes as well uh, the battle for p8 out there for the Geeks Energy and Fiercely Forward versus the uh, geodesic white car as uh, David Duino decides to hang it around the outside there. We'll have to hang it around the outside at the, 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 oh, at the curve of the sole as well. A little bit contact between the two of them. There's got to be racing room given, folks, as Duino will go down towards the inside, trying to cover off that move into the fast downhill left-hander. Pedro Valencia in that 23 
looking to try and get some form of response here as it uh, wouldn't be too appreciative of that little bit of contact that was made between the two of them. We'll have the run out of the corner but can't do anything with it uh, up into this middle sector. It's, uh, yeah, it, it's, always, it's always a bit scary seeing those little taps coming through such a high-speed corner like the Cura del Sol, uh, Lorenzo. It's, uh, it's a good job that these drivers have been able to hold on to it. Yeah, fortunately, there and also no air given uh, by the cars that could have been spun them around, which is the good thing to, to to think about. It's insane as the I think the Kramer car having a little bit of a wide uh, off track moment into the exit of Biku Jipatu, Fortunately for them, still within uh, the draft range of the Geeks Energy by Fury Four car right in front, which is always good to know, and they clear off the core TCR on the inside. They absolutely do, making sure, well, just catching that lap traffic in the absolute perfect place uh, coming down the straight here. Here's a look to the inside for David Duino on the uh, Olympus Esports car. Making it side by side down this NRS here. They've got a couple of bits of, uh, I believe that's TCR traffic, uh, right ahead of them. And they're going to have to, oh, look, Duino gets blocked. Oh, he just gets boxed in behind the TCR. That's not gone at all well uh, in that situation. Now, Pedro Valencia down the inside of Olympus, so gaining two spots in quick succession. That was a little bit crafty to try and box in the prototype behind the slower traffic. Yeah, a little bit of a dangerous move as well, if you want to call it that, because that could have gone wrong in so many fashions. Meanwhile, battle for P2, and I think eventually battle for a good portion of the halfway points already engaged between Hydra Race and Geodesic. So Austin Youngs now is on the defensive. And not only has to think about defensive, he has to think about it, trying to establish a really good gap for his teammate, Miguel Vigo, before he comes into the pit stop, Connery. Again, yeah. Sir Lachlan Berriman and Sven Neumann. The, yeah, the thing is, both of these drivers driving aggressively out of the gate, and now the 64 finding himself in huge trouble as the 64 is basically bump drafted. Yeah, absolutely. Having to try and navigate around the slower traffic as well. Uh, the, saw the GD 64 get stuck, you know, not get the best exit out of the final corner to because of the traffic directly ahead. Uh, but there was no way that that 56 could try and find a way uh, through on them in that situation. And now, as they head their way through here, there's the core car behind as well. We're riding on board with Sven Neumann at the moment as well as there's another little gaggle of traffic a little bit further down the road this is the point after the restart now lorenzo where traffic is gonna uh, become much more of a factor for these leading prototypes so it's all about how they try to navigate this around the outside at one but in towards a section like ferradura where the speed difference between the two classes is most obvious this is where it gets sketchy and you can see nomad uh, presents nomad going down the inside trying to use the traffic to their advantage here it's uh, rjd that's sort of being the bit of a road Block, no, not intentionally at all. It's just unfortunate positioning as these prototypes try to find their way through. Yeah, if they were side by side, they probably would have been side by side all the way down from uh, La Regina and, and into the exit of Big Jupato right here, going into Mergulli Connery. But because of how the traffic was basically used in favor of uh, Austin Young right here, it just gave the, a little bit of advantage to the Hydra Race and Geodesic car. As I think that was the Geeks Energy GT4 just to get a little bit of a off track outside of Junson right there, making a scary moment for everybody. Neumann has a good run in the core car here as well. Might be able to get to the outside of uh, Behrman. Coming across the start finish line now. How late on the brakes does that 80 want to go to try and make this move complete? Doesn't. In fact, a little bit of tire smoke ahead. Austin Young overcommits to the first apex of the center as he's out into the grass now. He might end up losing second place in this prototype class. Here comes Prasanna Nobad around the outside. Here comes Gore. There's a shove. There's a shove from the Geodesic car. I don't think the Stewart to be too happy about that one as Sven Neumann tries to capitalize. He's got past one already. Was looking on Austin Young. Young, but I have to tut 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 at that from Austin Young as it was a uh, as it looked to me that there was a movement towards the the Nomad car that almost put them in the grass. Yeah, nearly, and that could have been you know race destroying for every single one of them. It could potentially also be championship defining because of, uh, because certainly uh, Neumann would have find himself in the midst of Valdres. Meanwhile, you can see the battle between uh, Geeks Energy for. Christopher in the lead of sport class while these LMP3 cars go around on the outside and it's completely insanity 
as uh, Justin Rem has to find himself into patience of having all these LMP3 cars around you and the Mercedes trying to build up a little bit of a grip because he had lost some grip on the exit of Mergulli right there. Yeah, so uh, we, we have to have eyes on everywhere <laughs> on this circuit yep. at the moment because we have the battle for the race lead in sport. We have this crazy battle for P2 um, in uh, LMP3 as well. They're going to close up once again into the breaking zone at turn one. Here comes the battle for the uh, sport class lead as well. That one's going to swap around. GT6 Racing Gold going to the pointy end of the field there. Rodrigo Mee's not really fighting that one too much, maybe thinking longer game in that situation. But yeah, this... I get the feeling this battle for P2 definitely isn't done, especially as there's, uh, well, hopefully the Red Mist hasn't ascended here. And, oh, we're going to see Behrman send it down the inside on the core car through the Decida de Lago. That was from a long way back here. They're very close coming off the corner. Neumann trying to keep his nose in there. Has a slither of a line on the inside there. This will allow the GT6 car to get away just a little bit as they hit the brakes in towards the right hand. And Behrman still trying to complete this move. It'll give him the inside all the way around. Uh, turn nine though Pinarino, oh they come together both cars out into the grass here comes uh here comes the atrs academy basically out of nowhere straight into the fray yeah which is the car you know the innocent bystander of all this doesn't have anything to do i don't it's like i haven't i don't i don't want any of this connery but i'll take it i'll take those freebies for for myself and uh in a way, goes uh, Brendan Blakesley. You know, he lost the position now to, to Lachlan Behrman. I know the stewards are going to be looking into this with uh, some heavy eyes. Yeah, uh, so we'll get the high. Well, I mean, 163 laps, right? We're coming on towards lap number eight. Well, we are on lap 80 um, at the moment. So halfway points are imminent. So a big lockup from Behrman. Uh, I just saw on my own screen as we look back at the uh, at the Porsches, uh, it was almost a bit of a sketchy situation up there in prototypes. But the Valve for First in Cup is also going on. Uh, ATRS uh, uh, trying to uh, excuse me, not uh, yeah, ATRS trying to hold on to this one from Impulse Racing, who's giving them a very very good run for their money here uh, at the moment. So there's so much action going on out on circuit right now. It's hard to keep track of what to look at because any one of them might instantly go in towards a side by side battle that we'll have to try and cover but this is what happens lorenzo when we get towards this halfway point in terms of laps the points are on offer yeah and i think this is the most vital halfway points in the entirety of the championship especially for those teams who are not only fighting for championship like hide the, the number 62 car is against the number 80 of core here as well oh of course uh, atrs being with a much point pegging in comparison to the number 997 Visceral esports cars that are driven by Vince Peters, but uh, for positioning in the championship, like I said, top two gets a qualification into the Neo Engine Series or the 24 Hours Esports. So every position that you get around the track, every point that you get around the track and you know, against the competition, and if you finish ahead of them, gives you a better, pos uh, you know, possibility of being placed within that top two. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's crunch time now. Of course, this will uh, getting a decent number of halfway points now will make your life a little bit easier towards the end of the race as we see the battle for third in LMP3 raging on. Behrman deciding to go all the way to driver's left-hand side now to try and cover off the line down the inside at the Decida de Lago. Send Weinemann going to take the normal line in. That will give him the best exit to the corner so he can potentially make something happen up in towards Faradur. It carries the speed, carries the momentum, finds his way to the outside line here at Ferradura, but it's really tough to try and stick it around the outside there. You're better off trying to swing back in and make it a move down uh, on the brakes in towards turn eight, which is exactly what Sir Neumann has decided to do. A little bit of contact between the two of them as uh, Behrman again with a mini lockup through uh, the turn nine there and actually ends up keeping the position for now. <laughs> Opens up the corner, but it's always risky with a car so close behind, but Core not diving in this time. No, no, no whatsoever. As uh, we're going to open up the, the definitive 88 second lap here, Connery. So at the end of the 88 set, uh, second lap, when you go from 82 to 83, halfway points are going to be awarded to everyone. And Core, they know, they know they need to get this position on a Persona Nomad 
to to be within the proper contention because every place for them matters as we speak. Yeah, here we go. Sven Neumann to the outside once again here in third for LMP3. You've got ATRS just sort of waiting in the wings there. Um, just looking to pick up the pieces just in case this all goes wrong. Again, this is battle for third place points at halfway. So they definitely got something to race for here again. Behrman going towards the inside there, trying to cover off that line. We've got in the picture and picture the battle for first in the in the sport with the Porsches as well. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, well, not the Porsches, excuse me, the uh, BMWs and the Mercedes involved in that one. But we see the uh, LMP3 battle raging on. Sven Neumann has a bit of a more of an advantage heading in towards Ferradura this time around, but the inside line is just so strong there. Here comes Sven Neumann down the inside at to nine and is uh, let's see if he's able to get this one done no not quite so despite all of his best efforts this one might not end up happening he has another chance to the outside here through the Biku to Pato but even that is not gonna happen no no whatsoever while Miguel Vigo is gonna take the halfway points the top halfway points in the LMP3 category is gonna give a little bit of better cushion to the uh, Hydro Race Geodesic Racing number 62 car, Connery. But importantly, Core are going to be fourth place, and now they're going to have to get, they have one thing only in their mind win. They need to win. That's pretty much it. Yeah, absolutely. They're not going to get to the line ahead. So uh, that's the halfway points, the third place halfway points going the way uh, of Presenter Nomad, at least in sports. Well, they haven't headed their way across the line just yet. Core down the inside. Oh, bit of contact between the two. Presenter Nomad are going to lose that position and one more to the ATRS car. Yeah, and stewards are going to be looking into that 100%. That looked like there was some air there, Connery. While uh, the Hydrace Geodesic 462 is going to be in, in the first place. And there's still uncertainty who's going to be second place on the sports category at the line. Yeah, let's see if Sven Demel can hold on. I think he can. So second place to Hugh Ass in the 437. Although Rodrigo Mises, Mises is going to head his way down the inside. A big attempt at an overtake in towards the center S and gets it done just before the apex as well. That was a, a pitch perfect move from the triple four. That's as clean as he like. Yeah, really good move from him as now the, uh, the LMP3 clears the, off the Obsidian back to uh, the sports category per se. And uh, we're looking into how the race is developing. Now Justin Ram has the opportunity to break away. No yellow flag so far, which is all the, the good thing is we want to see. Now this race has just one thing on their minds, Connery. One hour and 28 minutes remaining. Yeah, because we're, I mean, I'm looking at the predicted number of laps that we have to run. Um, uh, as, we, as we see, uh, Geodesic decide to pit their, both of their LMP3 cars, uh, the leading LMP3 cars. Um, just having a look at the, uh, oh, we got a caution. We have a yellow. Oh, and no. And that is just as Geodesic decided to come towards the pit lane. They're safe, though. Don't worry about that. Both of these guys are safe. If Because I think both Austin and uh, they were in the box prior to the yellow flag came out. And now the driver swap is going to be done for Graham Sanders to come in into 62. The question is, everybody else is going to have to be kind of like resetting the race from now on. And the this is... Yeah, the yeah, qu question is, you know, what caused this caution? We didn't see anything out on circuit. And I can see in our... In our overlay software, which 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 uh, which our lovely producer Dustin is also trying to fiddle around with, there was no uh, event or crash event that we can immediately jump to um, to try and find this. So it might have to take a little bit of uh, searching, uh, but we'll, we'll bring you the reason uh, for this caution in just a couple of moments' time. Uh, but yeah, that's that's basically that's basically neutralized the race at least uh, for the next couple of moments. And okay, and here we go. Is basically guaranteed uh, as to um, you know ending this race on time rather than laps because we were, were probably one or two laps short mm -hmm. um, uh, previously. But now this just sort of makes sure of it, make sure of it. Yeah, now we have the reason why we have the yellow flag. Then the four eight six way Vitaly car from Jeremy Rollo, I think, uh, has still without permission and does trigger the yellow flag. Oh, jeez. And they were what? They were uh, they were eleven laps down on their ne on the next closest car. Uh, yeah, twenty five laps down total, um, which is interesting because they were involved in that instant just before uh, that caused the previous caution, right? Yes. 
Um, I was say so, that. so they they tried to get back out there. It looks like, and we can see the replay now. And they found out. Oh wait, uh, this car's not. Even though the repairs are done, the car's not healthy enough to continue. And they've towed in an unauthorized place, uh, which really forces uh, the stewards' hands uh, in that sense. So it's. It's an unfortunate one, and you can see, yeah, they, they pull off to the side. Oh, they don't even pull off to the side. <laughs> they just sort of, uh, I don't think the tracking was entirely straight on that car. So that has caused the uh, uh, the yellow to come out once again. Bit of a weird one, but, I mean, the rule's the rules. Yeah. And uh, I think for, if you think about it, for the Hydro Race Geodesic 62 and 64, there was... I, could you could you even argue this this was time to perfection? <laughs> I mean, they're, they're not. I mean, they're not going to be at risk of, of of well. I mean, they might be at risk of losing track position if someone stays out, of course. But um, but yeah, this 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 looks pretty good for them at the moment. It, it opens up their options a little bit for the end of this race. You know, they uh, they you know they can probably you know they can say okay, we have this much time left, we'll split the time. But then also we need to we have enough fuel in the tank to try and cover off for another caution. So it's uh, so it's a pretty good spot for them at the moment, actually. Yeah, they they yeah, I think in terms of fuel, they're probably one of the best teams in the grid right now, if not the best team in the LMP3 class in terms of fuel. Everybody else have to pit. Mm. Uh, I'm seeing like core 26 laps, 28 late, 8, 28 for AT, a, ATRS. 26 for percent of Nomad, 25 uh, for WSR, and then you go the list down. 20, 25 for David Duino's car, 20 for Pedro Valencia, and 27 for David Vanderbal's Olympus Vanguard uh, LMP3. So everybody else, they have to pit. So just the question is, they're, they're going to come close together, is who gets the jump on, on, on who's on pit lane? Because from now on, Core has to be aggressive on pit lane. 100 percent yeah they have to be um i i, I don't think uh they, they really have a choice um in the situation so their hands might be forced of course we're getting the uh, uh all the wave rounds sorted as well so race control will be uh relatively busy for the next couple of moments of course they've got a couple of pending investigations as well to to be concerned about so that's uh, uh that's also a interesting one so the 62 and the 486 um uh, let's see, 486 is the Wave Italy team. There was no further action on that one. Uh, but under investigation is the 21 and the 72. So that is Olympus and uh, Hydro Race uh, Jesus Racing White. So you got the 56 and the 64 under investigation. That's Presenta Nomad and uh, that was Jesus Black. I mean, I think we saw that incident as well between those two. The 161 is under investigation, so that's Wave Italy. Um, uh, we got a lot of incidents, <laughs> let's just say that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, not only do the stewards have to uh, sort this whole yellow flag period out, but they also have to make sure that they're, they're making decisions on, on some of the protests that have gone through as well. Yeah, absolutely. Just over here, just really quickly, just to give you a, a heads up. Thank God we... We we had the points at halfway time, right? Uh, that uh, the personnel, uh, casters, reporter, everybody else that I've had been doing an amazing job away from the ring. Uh, they gave to us a life point situation, right, for the season finale. Uh, the 62 has 545 points in the car. Core has 541 uh, points after halftime. At the current standing right now, they would get five six hundred and thirty one points. They would lead the championship in comparison to the number sixty two. But of course pen, uh, pits penny, right? Um, Apex Tech would be winning uh cup. Sport would be impulse that would be winning cup uh, sport and T Hoysival would be winning T C R at the current moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that 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 will be the situation. Of course, you know, once all of this uh, whole caution period, you know, uh, filters through, we get a little bit of a better idea uh, of, of 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 who is where um, in this race. As you know, sometimes the uh, sometimes the caution periods can sort of obfuscate that uh, a little bit. Um, so. We'll have a clearer idea in just a moment, but yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. There's still a lot to play for in the in this last hour and a half. There's still championships to be decided and even then we don't necessarily just have to think about p1s in the championships we have to think about the other uh, positions the other prizes as well 
Um, so a lot to talk about here uh, in the last moments of the race and, uh, well, of the season, I suppose. Yep, absolutely. We uh, still have to think about like the top two for uh, for the 24-hour series esports. We get the automatic entry uh, for next season as well, which is for some of these guys they're fighting for, you know, not being able to have, be concerned to do the pre-quality once uh, the 24-hour series esports rolls around. I think in mid-September to late to, to early Octo October. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, absolutely. That's uh, well the 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 endurance racing uh well uh sort of ladder uh, that they've been able to establish here is certainly one that's uh that's very valuable and, and and definitely very welcome especially after you know we've had so many years of of our racing not doing um a multi-class or an endurance uh world championship it's uh it, it, this is kind of the next best thing apart from well i mean i guess our general will be complaining that i didn't mention imsa but imsa <laughs> <laughs> that is true core staying out remember when i said they had to be aggressive out of the gate right now mm -hmm. there you go i think we got our answer going for the track position and hoping for a couple of cautions yeah. <laughs> at the uh at the very end of this race so they can stretch that fuel out as long as they can and 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 go for their track position i, I think this is really the own you know one of the only decisions that core could have made they, they needed to get aggressive it didn't seem that they necessarily had the pace uh, of the leading geodesic car at least under normal circumstances so therefore you have to do something different right you have to uh, put your opponents into a bit of an awkward situation where they're having to respond to you rather than you having to respond to them yeah you put the pressure on them like the ball is on your core right now what are you going to do about it rather than our core this is really interesting what is going to be also interesting for TCRs is majority, I think, see, actually pitted, a good portion of them pitted. Mm -hmm. uh, this basically resets the race for them since uh, right now they don't have to make it out on field all the way to the end. So it's going to be basically a sprint to the finish right now. Yeah, of course, you know, the, given our situation here, these, these guys... Uh, for the most part, um, obviously we have different fuel regulations here in the, excuse me, in the IMSA Club Sport Series than than they would normally be used to in things like official sessions and that. So, mm -hmm. um, so we we basically just got over half of a fuel tank uh, for TCRs, right? Um, so it's <laughs> but it's kind of amazing that, that that still would be good for them to make it to the end from here. It's it's kind of crazy how uh, how what their range is on those cars. Yeah, it's one hour and a Sorry, half. <laughs> I said IMSA. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> you did. I, I didn't want I to pick on that. I was just talking about IMSA with, uh, like, seeing Arjuna would complain about me not, me not mentioning it. But Ivra Club spot. It's, it's, uh, it both begins with I. That's that's going to be my uh, my explanation, okay? I mean, if you think about it, Connery, you're not entirely wrong because they basically use the uh, same <laughs> format as the IMSA, the IMSA Michelin <laughs> Pilot Challenge Series, so... <laughs> Yeah, I'm not wrong. See, see, even when I'm wrong, I'm not wrong. <laughs> yeah, so, you, you, you can say you, you, you can make a statement that like I, I'm in the right, even though it, championship wise, it, the naming is wrong, of course. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, to, to get the series its full name, the DSI Club Sport Series by Ivra on iRacing. Bam. There we go. As opposed to any other platform. Uh, but there we go. Um, but. Uh, but yeah, this we're getting to that point in the race now, aren't we? Uh, with uh, with cautions and that, we're, we're going to need to fill a little bit. But uh, but yeah, the, the the change in circumstances <laughs> are that you know, core with this big call at the very front of the LMP3 field, trying to get that track position over the two geodesic cars. Uh, we'll have to see how this works out for them because you know, if they if we get a run of cautions here, there you know, we're going to start to look towards them as being the one in the best seat in the house rather than the GZs at cars. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm just trying to take a quick look. What is going to be interesting for, for us uh, commentating is from what it looks like, the LMP3s can make up four hours in terms of stint. Right, so we're winding mm. down the clock. We're going, uh, we're, we're, we're killing the clock as we go. And I think uh, race-wise, in terms of safety, uh, safety caution period-wise, we might have, give or take, about what... Uh, 
five, ten more minutes of uh, yellow flag running. So one hour mm -hmm. and ten. A quick yellow flag would bring it down to maybe a more five minutes, five to ten more minutes. So uh, a, a core situation could become a really fine situation where it would not depend on a splash and dash towards the end, whereas everybody else would uh, at this point in the race, which for them would be marvelous. They would only have to rely upon themselves, track positioning and everything to make to the end and maybe stand out on top. Yeah, so... I would say, um, so it, what, yes, what you're saying is that a caution at around the hour mark would be fantastic um, for core because they, they can get fuel in for the end. Uh, Judy Zick will obviously have to, you know, they won't be able to make it to the end from this point, so they will they will have to make a splash and dash. So then core after that, so the second caution after this one, they're hoping for no more cautions, right? Pretty much. That's, that's how it will, it will work out for them. But yeah, they are pretty much the only car in, in, in LMP3, but we've had a situation here in Cup as well, because you can see exactly on the left-hand side of your screen there's been a similar situation, so Olympus Esports actually deciding to stay out, getting themselves ahead, and trying to make the same sort of play as Core is in, uh, in LMP3. Yeah. Uh, does Danny Neo actually have the same pace as uh, Vince Peters and Alex Hjodinga? That's, mm -hmm. that's the question to be asked, though. Yeah, it, it is. It, it really is. Um, of course, having a look at the um, the best lap times of the race, which is, I know, you know, with the amount of time that we've had, um, potentially not that representative. You know, it's uh, not quite matching the best times of the other cars behind in in, uh, in that cup class. But again, we can see on the stints uh, on the left hand side again here, Lorenzo, that another similar situation is happening in sport. So we've got the yeah. rusty spatulas have stayed out. And for completeness, do we have someone who stayed out in TCR as well? Because... Yeah, Oh we my do. god, we do. We do. <laughs> we do. So in every single class, there was someone taking the gamble in terms of track position and strategy to stay out rather than come down in. Yeah, it's it's the marvel is the marvel of sim racing, sim racing, and strategies in general. And, and I'll be very honest, I I, I know Rusty Spatulas, uh, they still have fuel in the tank to make it to one hour, I think, in the clock. Mm -hmm. Fuel wise, I think they're probably the most safe team of all teams. I don't know what is the full length that the GT4 can do. I think it's one hour and ten at best uh, so uh, don't know how the fuel range goes in Interlagos though but uh, they could be safe for maybe a, an off strategy and potential for a maiden win at, at the club sports series yeah, it could be could be that would, it'd be quite a way to get a, a maiden win right <laughs> yeah with a call like this Still waiting for these drivers to get themselves all sorted, of course. Race control working as, as quick as they can to get everyone in the right order. Although, just as I say that, the pace car lights have gone off. It's like I can will things into existence, Lorenzo. Yeah, absolutely. And now we're going to get into arguably the most important green... Uh, not arguably, but obviously the most important green flag of the race. But I don't know if this is going to be the final green flag of the race uh, as... Uh, now the ball is on Hydro Race to Desic scores. What they're going to do? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, yeah. D d how do they respond to this? Do they go all out attack straight out of the gates here and just make sure that the gamble on in terms of the track position is not going to work out in course and racing's favor, even if the cautions do fall their way? I mean, I think that's probably what I would do if I was the team boss here. Just tell both of the GDs at cars, just go, okay, go, 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 go get him. Um, it's, uh, uh, it might cause a little bit of an interesting situation off the start here because, of course, we had that checkup last time around. Of course, different race leader this time around, so maybe in a different approach to things. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to see how this race and, of course, how this entire season ends. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward for this restart. I'm excited, man. I'm really excited. I'm pumped. <laughs> I'm pumped. 
Yeah, absolutely. As they head up towards Yunsat for the final time under this yellow. The rest of the drivers getting themselves all sorted, all prepared for what potentially might be a little bit of a chaotic restart. Considering what is on the line, we have all four classes with cars that did not stop on, in this caution currently leading them. Everyone else, or the vast majority of everyone else, came down on towards the pit lane uh, when they had the opportunity to. So that's the situation as we head towards the green flag once again here with an hour and 11 minutes left remaining in this race at Interlagos. Pace got down on towards the pit lane, field under the control of Sven Neumann with that strategy call. Green flag racing once again here in Brazil, and what a launch from the course in racing car at the front of the field. They get a couple of car lengths gap uh, already on the way in towards turn number one, which is absolutely fantastic to see if you're a fan of that number 80. Everyone else streaming their way through the center S's here. A little bit of side-by-side -side action further back through the field in those GT categories in the sport and uh, in the sport and the rear end of the cup uh, category as well. Yeah, meanwhile, we have Pristina Nomad trying to go on the inside of, uh, of, from what it looks like, the number 72 of David Duino's car. And uh, somehow, someway, Behrman made the overtake work, got aggressive at the restart, diving down on the Senna S, and uh, couldn't make the move stick because uh, Duino was on the outside uh, coming out of the corner. And somebody's off. Somebody is off. Uh, look, yeah, Echelon Simsport 445. Look at that gaggle of cars. Oh, my word. What is going on here in the sport class uh, when they're all, uh, uh, gaggle, uh, they're all stacked up uh, with each other like this on the way in towards uh, Ferradura? It's, it's hard to sort of make heads or tails uh, out of this situation here side by side as they head their way through the Pinarino as well. Huge ass side by side with Impulse Racing. That's uh, for the top six. Uh, in the sport class as that's a bright yellow and blue car around the outside there. Meanwhile, battle for the race lead in the sport class as well. Rusty Spatch is trying to hold on after try getting that uh, advantage in the pit stop. There's a car off the head that's about to rejoin directly ahead of the, ahead of the RJD car. He keeps his foot in it. That's the GDZX72 car, the, G the GDZX racing white car. So not one of the leading ones. Uh, but ooh, that was a very sketchy situation. I wouldn't be surprised at the penalty incoming for that one. Side by side between the guys in the sport class prototype shoots down the middle of these two race leaders in the third fastest class here today. RJD on the anchors uh, in towards turn one and gets that position done. Yeah, and uh, you, you, you Kataino actually had to be a little bit of uh, a conservative, a little bit of a spin for David Duino. David Duino just days just completely going from bad to worse he reverses it up the hill <laughs> then gets it back going but this Roy joining ahead of RJD got a bit sketchy slow traffic RJD had to avoid well to be fair to the GDs at car you know that's not the racing line uh, so you, you would be forgiven for thinking that it was uh, it was safe to uh, uh, to rejoin there so I guess that's what they would be arguing um, you know in any potential investigation but uh, but yeah it's 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 still worrying when that happens as uh, we see these this fighting going on once again uh, this uh, time down in the this well it's indeed is in yeah it's indeed in the sport category uh, second place uh, battle going on geeks energy uh, getting themselves ahead of the rusty spatulas who lose yet another spot so that strategy call while it gave them the track position at least for a short amount of time uh, it doesn't seem like they're they're on the pace of the rest of the leaders. Yeah, absolutely. A little bit of a lockup at the early frame, uh, the back of uh, the frame. While Van Neumann does the fastest lap in the race, Connery, twenty-eight point three eight three zero for the German, and uh, we know the like that car is like. So we know the track position for them is is, is going to be key. The question is, when do they come to the pit lane? Does the one do they make the one hour mark that could you know? Saved their day at the end of things. Yeah, absolutely. As we see the battle for second in cup class now, so each class wanting to just getting pushed wide there. Uh, is that visceral esports car dropping behind uh, ATRS there? Uh, not an ideal situation for them. It's it, again, that's a very common issue coming on the outside of the Cedar Delago. The car's all loaded up. There's uh, really only. <laughs> 
one way the momentum's going to take you a lot of times, and it's really at the detriment of the car on the outside uh, in a side-by-side -side battle there. So uh, Vince Peters having to uh, slot in here. At least he slots in ahead of the Orion race team. Doesn't lose any more positions than was necessary. Uh, but, yeah, the outside of the Ciudad de Lago is in one of the scariest places to be at this circuit in a, in a battle like that. Yeah, 100%. I think, and more importantly here, Connery, this battle uh, between the 997 and, and the 971 of SimCity and, and Visceral is actually worth for the second spot in uh, in the Cup class. Uh, that could propel the 971 to have an automatic entry into the Neo, into the 24-hour series eSports. So the 997 is on a massive pressure right now, trying to uh, overtake the leading championship leader of cup class in the 913 apex tech outside can you make it work here we go scott gets his way through and in fact uh, orion had a decent run but it looks like they've gotten themselves a slowdown penalty so i have to uh fall in behind there impulse racing following relatively closely onto the rear bumper of the atrs car in fact will actually angle themselves to the inside through the descending left-hander. It's uh, tricky sometimes to get the traction down coming out there on the inside, especially if you get a little bit pinched by that car on the outside. Here comes the recovering David Duino in the 72 geodesic uh, prototype. Makes the gap on the inside for Impulse to try and go for. Let's see if this uh, is still an opportunity into the next braking zone. It is, as uh, the ATRS having to try and defend now becomes the inside uh, for the next corner and it looks like they will just about be able to slide ahead. No, Kotaski is keeping his nose in it. Decides to make this a battle into the Vika Tapato and gets the position done. Yeah, for now for that uh, SimCity, ATRS car is just staying in the track. So Magnus Nielsen only has to think about survival, right? Yeah. Survive this next hour and they have the championship because right now the point standings for them is just very comfortable nobody's gonna reach them at this current uh point pegging so looking forward to see how the rest of the championship is gonna break down though while uh everything else still there it has it's still there is a wide open gap between everybody on the other classes though these are racing six 962 in the pit lane actually stopped before the uh yeah. the yeah start in the penalty box so that's uh moritz uh Weinrich. Um, has decided to, to save his penalty now. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's that's the situation there. It's, sort of, mm -hmm. you know, it's unexpected to see a car uh, come down in at that point, but that's uh, just the situation that they find themselves in there. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a very long hold uh, for the 962 there as they... Uh, uh, I'm just trying to read exactly what penalty they got in terms of time. It's Incident 21, so I think they had a oh, contact a with the... Yeah, it was a while ago. They had a contact with the 922 car. Uh, just trying to take a quick look. I think the 922 car. I cannot make which car it is that, actually. But anyway, they, yeah, they had the uh, contact with the Olympus car. Okay, thank yeah. you very much. And um, and apparently they uh, didn't leave a lot of uh, good gap. On the pacing line ahead, so they made contact and uh, mm -hmm. the blame just went to 962. Yeah, absolutely. So, the situation at the front of the field, though, you can see that uh, Sven Neumann gapping Judy like by, by quite a margin. Every single sector, every single lap, he has a 5.4 second advantage here uh, at the moment. So, Sven's going like a bat out of hell, he knows what the situation is here. Um, with the, the strategy towards the end of the race. He needs to try and build as much of a gap as is feasibly possible. And, uh, uh, well, again, we'll see how this one works out because we, we had, of course, um, discussion in our chat. Andrew, uh, thank you very much. He might have even stayed out uh, to try and make sure that they're on the safe side of the drive time limitations as well. Yeah, absolutely. Just trying to bring up over here the drive time. So there is a drive time infringement for 700 mile races, 700 kilometer races, for example, uh, is maximum driving time is three hours. So I know um, Pascal did, actually did less than that. So they're in the good side. It's just me that I think maybe the iRacing drive time so they did not get disqualified or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so 
having a look at this situation, we've got Jonas Vanner, Rodrigo Mies. This is the battle in sports. So RJD versus the Geeks Energy Face, the forward car. Again, very, very close together indeed. Um, just having a look at sort of the, the updated live points. Of course, if the race finished as it is right now, Corsim Racing would win. Then it's the uh, Judy's at 62 in second place, then Presantum Nomads, uh, at least as far as LMP3s uh, are concerned there. Um, but of course, that, that requires the strategy working out in Core's favor, and, and you know, there's, there's no shenanigans uh, a little bit later on, even. Uh, but we, we, we'll sort that out uh, once we get to it. In terms of sport, though, RJD. Uh, in the current uh, race leading situation uh, in that particular class and uh, you know they're currently down in fifth place in terms of points at the moment so again if it finishes as they are they're going to get a, a, a decent bump uh, shall we say yeah absolutely just trying to take a quick look where the position was at halftime so didn't get a lot of points from what it looks like to be at the end of the race I don't know how they're going to tally up their points at the end of the race you should propel them into P2 in the standings, though. Yeah, but they just lose the race lead there to uh, uh, to Drew Rodrigo Mies. A triple four towards the pointy end of the sport class then. Uh, with just coming up to an hour to go. Is there any response to the Decilla de Lago for RJD here? They're slightly tempted by it, but I think they, uh, they'll take the sensible de uh, decision and just stay in behind just for the moment and allow that leading uh, sport class car to try and pull them around the circuit. Meanwhile, further behind, though, action aplenty as we see XPD and Asha racing. Uh, also, the Archer Racing, Archer Racing team, powered by Chip CS, yes. uh, coming around the outside. And, well, there is uh, uh, Hydro Race Racing EU after their penalty, uh, steaming through them in the club. Ooh, in the cup class, contact between the two. Huge ass going to get a piece of that as well. Car spun off ahead as well. Oh, my word. That uh, was almost completely catastrophic. Hopefully, these rejoins are okay. They are. But, ooh. You never want to see that through such a high-speed section in towards Ferradura. The two cars just coming together through the middle, and uh, it ends in tears. And the the, the the team that I feel for here at the moment is huge ass. The 437, they just came up on that. They were committed to the line. Nowhere they could go. Yeah, fortunate to see that. Our, uh, the content from both of them being huge ass, the units and bystander of all this, hoping they don't get a race it any damage for them and the rejoin actually came right in front of the leaders from, from what it looked yeah. like yeah so so a bit would have been a bit of a heart and mouth moment for them as well uh, meanwhile you've got the battle for second place in the cup category so this is sim city racing versus uh visceral esports ivra of course uh uh, Visceral trying to continue to press on forwards here um, in this race. Of course, you know, the this particular car, um, if things ended as it is right now, would... Actually, that's inaccurate. It hasn't been updated yet. But uh, if they ended in fourth place, they would still be uh, third in terms of the championship. But, of course, you know, the, 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 uh, the runner that's ahead of them in the championship is directly ahead of them on circuit, SimCity Racing. So hopefully, uh, well, they're planning on getting uh, a bit of a points delta swing in their favor if they're able to get past here. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, I was on board with the, the huge ass car in that instance. Uh, Visceral Esports able to get past SimCity Racing up into second place in cup though. So a couple of more points in their back pocket and a couple of less points in the pocket of SimCity Racing in terms of that battle for second place in Cup in terms of the points order. Yeah, it's an interesting one, and 100%. Meanwhile, looking to see if uh, the Impulse car is going to be able to make an overtake out of Zadon Kotarski. He's trying to do his best to close down the gap uh, on Onyx Hildinga and potentially make the move uh, and the gap and the, and the pace from... Uh, well, Impulse looks really good at this uh, restart as Alice Hunia cannot bring up the car up to speed to match the other drivers. Yeah, looking down the inside, but yeah, Archer Racing. So, uh, so yeah, this battle raging on, of course. We're less than an hour to go now in this situation, and Impulse having a a, a little bit of a look uh, in that situation. Uh, again, they're they're very eager as we see. Uh, is this the issue for Archer Racing coming through 
the Seed of the Lago, I think it is, just loops it round. Um, and we'll try and find a place on this track to try and rejoin, but with, you know, 45 cars still circling, sometimes can be quite a challenge, but they do find a gap. Yeah, they do find a gap. It's just uh, what kind of gap they do find and if they manage to come back safely, that's the really important thing. Yeah, absolutely is. Uh, I was behind just a little bit there. Just had to refresh my uh, <laughs> refresh my production feed. But uh, yeah, it was uh, it was uh, after racing with the with a little bit of a spin. Uh, there is uh, we. Uh, well, I'm back on the live pictures, I suppose. But uh, there we go. So uh, Visceral Esports um, uh, still ahead uh, in this particular battle for Cup. It seems like it, uh, seems like that uh, their situation is relatively decent uh, at the moment. Uh, not really that many complaints, I imagine, from the 997 camp at the moment. Apart from the fact that they're 6.3 seconds behind Olympus, mm -hmm. of course, uh, Olympus with that with that strategy call um, in the last uh, yellow flag stage. Uh, uh, has put them in that position and, and everyone else fighting behind. Ooh, he just uh, having to sort of very expeditiously get out of the way there as, as they've been in the wars and they'll probably be down in the straight line as well due to that damage. Most likely we're going to lose maybe a five, about 5-10 kilometers of speed. I was just taking a quick look on our race control sheet. Apparently there are a few penalties still are still looming large for everybody, especially for our class leader in Cup. They have about 10 seconds uh, in terms of penalties they have to serve. Uh, and else, nothing, anything too noticeable around the track. Yeah. You're just going to come under threat once again here. Ooh, XPD almost lose control of the car there. They're going to get uh, pounced on from behind. As uh, Core Sim Racing work their way through, and yeah, that's a, a little bit of an awkward one there. It's always tricky when there's you know a, you know slower car with damage directly ahead of you. You have to try and still try and pick and pick your place of where to head through, and the prototypes damage down your inside is is also not the best idea. As so oh, David Duino gets spun by the slower traffic. Oh, that was messy, messy, messy. Yeah. N nothing to say about that. I think SPD Emerald might get a listen to from the from the stewards right there, yeah, and Connery, as uh, there was there was gap living uh, left for the SPD Emerald mm -hmm. to try to do the corner inside Pinheirinho, but unfortunately they decided to make contact with the 72 David Duino's car, which has days has just gone from good to bad to horrendous and now atrociously bad. Yeah, I mean, he's been a bit of a punching bag. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> to not, say the very this, least. That 72. We'll get another look at it from up above. Yeah, it was the car on the inside just trying to widen out the corner, not really realizing that the prototype uh, occupied the space. And uh, David Duino goes for another little spin. I don't think it's a tally he's particularly proud of in this race. No, not at all. And most of them haven't been his fault, to be fair. <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> It is just like uh, fast traffic on slow traffic, or very, or relatively very slow traffic on that nature. The battle for eighth place in sports, as we see the uh, uh, Sabalt Esports car, Geeks Energy Sim Racing, uh, do battle here. Looks like Geeks Energy are going to be able to get down the inside. That's Peter uh, Bidet in the 4:35. Not quite going to be able to capitalize on that one. Slightly different lines being taken uh, through there. Meanwhile, uh, you've got the battle uh, with vi involving. Uh, uh, is this one of the visceral cars in in in, club? Yeah, in cup? Yes, it is. So uh, visceral and ATRS. It's the visceral 901. As yes, we do have the, uh, the the fact that the leader has come down in. So LMP3 leader. So that's Corsem Racing deciding that they can. Uh, well, that was the, probably the best time for them to come down in and uh, take that fuel for the end of the race. They are up in the jacks, taking the tyres as well, of course. So that means that uh, Geodesic 62 is now the race leader, then the 64, but of course they are also due a pit stop as well. A shorter one, but still due one. Yeah, now it becomes basically a, a gap racing, if you want to talk about that, as we see more cars coming into pit lane from what it looks like to be the uh, Ashelon uh, Hyperion uh, card that got involved in one of the incidents that uh, 
triggered one of the yellow flags and it, uh, by on turn number one. Now you can see course car just behind the, these two GT4s of uh, Glacier and Impulse, the two old, I want to say dinosaur brands that I said I said mm -hmm. it earlier in the broadcast, uh, Connor. And now clearing themselves through an Impulse on the outside. Yeah, it's side by side through Faradora as well. Yoni Hagner has well, he's got to be careful. To leave the space on the outside there. It was uh, very very close indeed. As now Impulse will find the inside line. And through the long left-hander, and you can see that advantage gained, an impulse ahead uh, of Glacier Racing at this stage. Hagner <laughs> looking for a hopeful little lunge down the inside, but that's uh, too far back, unfortunately, my friend, as uh, as Glacier Racing will just have to cut their losses here. Uh, it's it's great to see them still competing, uh, of course. You know, they they are definitely one of the uh, um, the oldest, or uh, one of the oldest older teams uh on the i racing side of things and so of course their their their, their history their their backstory goes back even further uh than that so it, it's great to see them uh, uh still in it and of course impulse has been around for a very good number of years as well so these these guys have met each other on track many times uh, in those uh, particular liveries so it's great to see but uh with 50 minutes left to go now of course, we've had Core come down from the race lead of LMP3, so we're still waiting, waiting for everyone else in that class to come down in for their final stops. Here comes the 491 uh, down and in, though. That's the Sabalt Esports uh, G Ivor GT4 um, coming in for their final little stop as well. Um, so we, we are getting to that stage now where, where final start stops are becoming a thing. What is Olympus Esports Atlas doing? They are they are down trying to get into the penalty box, I believe. But I think that they almost entered the pit lane and then had to reverse out the pit lanes because the, my timing screen got very very weird oh, very no. very quickly there. So I, I'd be very interested in seeing a replay of this because they said they entered the pit lane and immediately exited the pit lane and then all of a sudden I switched to them and they are in their penalty box. So that one was a, a bit of a weird one. Um, not the Danny Neo's best moment, I would have thought, as we're seeing uh, yet more cars uh, decide to head their way down in towards the penalty box. Oh, he does He does cross the yellow cones. He does. And that means one thing, Lorenzo. He's going to get a lengthy penalty. Yeah, it'll be unsafe pit exit um, in, in that case, because technically he exited the pit lane when he reversed back behind the yellow cones. Luckily for him, he didn't have to do a massive reverse like XPD Amaro had to do earlier on, <laughs> nearly fiddling with the quality of the DQ. So, uh, yeah, yeah. That's, okay, that's the first time I've ever seen someone enter pit lane and then reverse out of pit lane, though. Uh, I think I think that's a first for me. Same. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's a bit of an awkward one. They they will get an eye racing penalty for that. There's there's no um, stewards. Uh, penalty for that, but they'll they'll get one saved by the iRacing system, and I don't think the uh, stewards will be overly eager in clearing that particular black flag. <laughs> nope. It's like you have four laps to clear a black flag, otherwise it is a DQ. Yeah, absolutely. They they, they do have to uh, they do have to save it now. So I imagine it will be a lengthy stop. Uh, for them as well. So, yeah, that one is very, very awkward indeed. I Meanwhile, battle for sixth place in sports category. Uh, Geeks Ra Geeks Energy Sim Racing, you've got the... Uh, um, you've got XPE, yes, I was just about to get to it. We've uh, we've also got technically huge ass involved in this one, but how, how they can hold on to this, you know, still remains, remains to be seen because, of course, they got a decent shunt. Um, to the front end uh, in an instant a little bit earlier on. But uh, having a look back to TCR, we haven't actually had to chat a lot about TCR over the course of this second uh, second half of this race, Lorenzo. They've sort of been keeping themselves to themselves. They all pretty much came down in towards pit lane. Well, pr uh, well, pretty much all of them. Like I said, there, there was one exception. Um, but uh, but uh, these guys are good on fuel to the end from that stop. So it, like you said at the time, Lorenzo, it's, it's a straight up sprint race between these guys now for, yeah. uh, uh, for TCR. Absolutely, but this is, if I remember correctly, I saw this around 
Just give me one second. Uh, let me bring which car actually has a penalty. If I remember correctly, uh, Obsidian has a penalty. So they haven't served it. Yeah, Michael Polisak has a penalty for, for the old lap, lap but the car, car ahead. Had, before it starts start finishing finish line, line, I think we, we had the previous yellow flag, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and they haven't served that yet. Right, okay, so uh, th that one is still pending for them, so uh, still a battle on circuit regardless, but it might not end, uh, not, might not end up mattering a whole, a whole huge amount as these guys head their way up, up across the start-finish line now, and we can see Obsidian going towards the inside here, so they make a try off this one regardless, down the inside for the race lead, and is able to get the position done. Yeah. Clean and crisp, and I think Brabham kind of like knows about this. Mm. Um, and not going to try to fight way too much about that. And meanwhile, battle for fourth place as a TRS Academy trying to fend off pretend a nomad here, Connery, as uh, mm -hmm. Lachlan Behrman try to do his best impression of uh, Max Verstappen in the intermediate tires and try to, uh, you know, go up the field uh, like a rocket. Yeah, and, uh, well, it, it seems like everything in at least the second half of the race, which I've been in attendance for, it seems like Presenta Moment in, the, in, this, in this prototype class has been involved in pretty much everything. These guys have got the some traffic ahead in the form of the Olympus Esports Proton car. It does mean that ATRS are not able to get the best exit possible out of Gunn So This might just be an opportunity for Behrman to, to utilize on the way on this long run down in towards turn number one you can see him getting closer 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 and well that battle's going to end very quickly because atrs dive down on towards the pit lane yeah absolutely and everybody else still do their pit stop 33 laps uh 23 23 20 20 20 uh and 19 19 there's everybody else that are is in the field for the current moment as we speak Absolutely. So, final stops. Uh, I mean, from this point forwards, for for all classes, it would have been uh, would have thought. So, uh, ACRS uh, coming down in to try and get their fuel uh, for the end of the race. And you can see this is the race leading uh, geodesic car. So this is the number 62. Uh, leading the 64 at the moment and you can see there's a quite a bit of traffic through this middle sector for graham sanders to deal with so let's see how he negotiates this one and traffic going side by side ahead is also uh, not necessarily ideal but he's going to negotiate the situation just fine uh, it looks like uh, albeit with a little bit of lost time yeah i think he might actually do a 132 which for them for him is going to be damaging on the long run, considering it has to come to the pit lane, XPD Amado having an off track excursion. Yeah, so we're having a look at the gap to the core car at the moment 38 seconds. Uh, is the gap. Of course, now, well, we, we'll get to see where he comes out in relation to him because he's going to dive down towards pit lane. Of course, there's penalty as well that the number 62 has to serve. That is going to be a bit of an awkward one. And, well, so thankfully for him, it's only a short one. Dives it back mm -hmm. down on towards the, uh, the pit lane to potentially just get this final stop out of the way with. But that's what you love to see if you're core. Cool. Absolutely, and they had this penalty by overlap, uh, overlapping the Obsidian car off limits, off track limits. Uh, so that's why they got only five seconds. So not a major time loss, but I think might be enough for uh, for them to lose the position to Sven Neumann. We'll see. Yeah, it, it might just be enough as uh, that's that came a little bit earlier in the race. But there we go. Graham Sanders off and away. Where is Core in relation to him? They're getting very, very close indeed. Coming off of the pit lane now. Where is that Core side by side. racing car? It is going to be very close to being side by side as, uh, well, it comes out just uh, ahead. But that gap is looking rather close compared to what it was. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it was much closer than initially expected as the huge ass gets shoved upon by the orion car as the orion car also pushed aside by the apex tech academy uh car and now we have a sprint to the finish connery about 42 to 45 minute sprint yeah 
we, we absolutely do. It's it, all about one car finishing ahead of each uh, of another uh, in uh, in LMP3s because you know it's the 62 up against the 80, of course. So whichever one finishes in first place in this in this race is 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 going to be the the points champion as well. Um, as we, it looks like we, we did have an issue out there on circuit just uh, very, very briefly uh, as well. I don't think there's anything that's going to cause a safety car, but um, uh, there we go. Actually, we do get another spin. Oh, is this, uh, is this who I think it is? Do we know? Yeah. Uh... I think it's one of these days, it's going to be a geodesic prototype that's spinning and it's going to be one of our leaders, right? That's the, that's, that's, that's the situation. As we see, uh, David, do we know? come down and in and uh yeah not not gonna be a very happy bunny i, I i'm i'm truly wondering if uh this is actually the true representation of you know of what is gonna happen between uh, mike tyson and jake paul i i i, I couldn't care less i don't watch that sort of <laughs> boxing you know <laughs> I have to this up for the for the Generation Z and, and like. Uh, Apparently, I'm Gen Z. Like, I was born in 1997. Apparently, that's the color Gen, Gen Z. Z. I do not feel like Gen Z. Um, I I definitely relate more towards millennials than I do to Gen Z. Let's just say that. So, uh, so yeah, it's uh, that's a Zuma thing. That's uh, <laughs> that I'm not interested in. But uh, replay. Uh, not the same spot I actually spun because uh, Duino spun at Big Jupato. This is Laranjinha, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, track knowledge coming into effect there. It's great to have a, a, a Brazilian in the commentary booth when we're at a Brazilian circuit. Instantly recognizable. But, um, but 40 minutes left remaining in this race now. 0.7 is the gap. Between uh, between WSR and Presidanta, that's the temporary battle for the race lead, uh, shall we say? Gap between Geodesic 62 and Core that is currently standing at 2.5 seconds. So Graham Sanders really putting the the pedal to the metal to try and get away um, and, and try and make this championship secure for Geodesic. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. So so ATRS obviously with with their situation right now, they 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 put themselves in a very very good spot. Of course, they they're getting up in the faces of some of the top runners, or, or rather the other, uh, well, some of the top runners in this prototype class, and and might actually be a factor in terms of this championship fight, which is uh, what uh, neither what Judy Zick nor course in racing wanted to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, because let's just say uh, Core makes the overtake and and mm -hmm. and Jodesic is not able to, and you have like this one, two, three where uh, Jodesic <laughs> might be third. And boy, oh boy, he can can be uh, quite compelling on on the whole championship perspective. Battle for third place in the sport class, though Geek Sim Racing Omega and Luston VDS by Undercut White. Uh, having a bit of a ding dong battle on the way in towards uh, turn number one. Then let's see uh, who comes out on top in this one. Martinez around the outside becomes the inside for the next apex. Has to be clear by the Gilbert del Sol to make this comfortable, and he is. So that's the uh, situation down there in third place in the sport category. Less than 40 minutes left remaining. Of course, the uh, you know everyone's super worried about you know their their track position towards the end of this race. Are they on the right strategy? Are they uh, are they doing the right thing? But you know it could just so easily be uh, disrupted by things out there on circuit, by another caution, by an incident, and things like that. So as we see, a uh, bit of a disagreement there uh, with Echelon involved uh, in towards the Cid de Lago. Yeah, unfortunate to see that kind of thing. Uh, thankfully, they, 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 they make some slight content, but that wasn't enough for uh, to trigger a potential yellow fight because they I saw a similar situation happen earlier on the race. Oh, Ooh, no. Why did I have yeah. to open my mouth? Why? What, what happened there? <laughs> I just look away just... Yeah, it, it does look like the XPD car. Yeah, it yeah, broke loose and... Bam, straight into the back end. We'll see the replay of it. There we go. Loose. Bam, right there. 
rear Tons bumper of comes curb. flying off, but of course it resyncs. So <laughs> it ends up the yeah, so resyncs with the server, so the, the server corrects the damage, but yeah, that's that, that's not a pretty uh, that's not a pretty sight. And XPD actually do stay out here. They're not going to dive down immediately, uh, you know, in case the damage is too severe. But it was a very decent shot to the back end. Valve a second in Cup as well, raging on between SimCity Racing and a 901 Visceral car. As the as you can see, the sun getting lower and lower uh, in this uh, Brazilian sky. Yeah, in the mostly cloudy skies of Sao Paulo. So that's good to know. While well, uh oh. The fiercely forward car going diving down on the inside. I thought I thought they were going to make contact and, and uh, cause a spin for SimCity Racing. Fortunately, that didn't happen. Um, good racing so far between both of these guys. But this is like worst case scenario for SimCity because you have the other visceral car that is looking really fast, and the car that you're fighting for P2 in the championship is ahead of you. So it's it's like it's nerve wracking. I'll tell you. Very, very nerve-wracking. Uh, I can say that the battle for the effective race lead in LMP3, that has come down to within a second now between uh, ATRS Academy and Hydra Race Geodesic Racing. So um, uh, that's this is going to be an interesting pass for Graham Sanders to try to negotiate here uh, because he, he just simply can't lose too much time behind ATRS because he's got Corsim Racing looming a couple of seconds behind him. He needs to make this pass quick and clinical. Where is Core, though? I cannot even see them. There they are. 3.5. Behind. Yeah, uh, the gap looks much longer on the on the visual than it, than what it looks to be. As now Apex Tech is going to lose a lot of time to the Olympus car. Oh, and no. I think there's the Hydra's Geodesic TCR in front. Oh, as as the Geodesic car has to has to slam on the brakes behind them because there's simply no gap through. Oh there was a God. bit of a telling off there from Olympus, uh, swerving ahead in towards the braking zone of the Cedar de Lago. ATRS do eventually find the inside, just about a gap through there. Are they going to be able to slice and dice through this one? Yes, they are. And this is not going to work out in the favor of Geodesic here at the moment as they're going to be stuck in traffic. They squeeze their way down the inside. Heads up driving from Afonso Suto in the Olympus. Olympus car to not try and uh, hug the inside there because the prototype was going to occupy the space. And now how does Core negotiate the situation? They gained about one and a half seconds in that entire sequence. Yeah, it's insane to think about what just transpired there is that uh, you're going to see the Core car now having to go around both these cars and Mergulu is going to get easily around the... Uh, the Impulse GT4. The thing is the gap went down a little bit from what it looked like. Two and a half seconds now separates 2.2 to 2.5 two seconds now is the gap between the Hydra Racing Geodesic car to the Corsin Racing car. Yeah, we'll see. So all these things fluctuate all the time in these sorts of races. 35 sec, well, 34 seconds left coming across the line now. You can see the, the, the gaps uh, at the bottom of your screen right now. So Sven, uh, so Graham Sanders has, has not been able to find a way past Brian, uh, Brandon Blakesley at the moment for, for what is essentially the race lead, you know, because we got cars ahead that have not uh, made their final stops yet. Uh, meanwhile, battle ahead of them is a battle for position. So that adds another little complexity to this situation. ATRS Esports and SimCity Racing, they're the ones battling for third in cup, and ATRS are getting blocked behind them here at the moment as they come up on a, on a bit of TCR traffic as well. So three glasses occupying the same space here. Judy's is getting slowed down in all of this as well as we see ATRS having to basically take some liberties with the track limits to try and stay out of everyone's way as they head their way in through the Pinarino now. And uh, again, caught. Cool. Close again, they closed up a second, but they need to get through the traffic more effectively than the competitors, and then they're not being able to at the moment because they're stuck behind the TCR. Yeah, they got checked up by Core and uh, I Core getting checked up yeah, by Core, but it's not the same team, <laughs> so. Uh, and somehow it survived the whole ordeal, got back to 2.2 seconds. Yeah, so, you know, you can see these gaps close in, but all of a sudden, Core Sim Racing, the prototype, to uh, to hit the same amount of traffic and about the same amount of problems uh, behind them as well. Three wires coming on the pit entry there as uh, Sven Neumann, 
ends up losing this Jag race to SimCity Racing on the way down in towards uh, turn one, and he's going to get stuck, really stuck, uh, behind on the way in towards uh, turn one there. So that's uh, that's awkward. But you know, back towards the effective race lead with this ATRS car and Geodesic. This looks like there's going to be a potential three wide moment. Drag race with the Porsche on the outside is always very awkward because those Cup cars. They're pretty good in a straight line. They're perhaps probably equal to the LMP3s in, in terms of straight line speed. So that's why it's so tough to get past them down into some of these braking zones. Yeah, that, that is a difficult one. And oh. I know one Vistro might be out of the race. Uh-oh, that's not a good sign. Yeah, still not back. So, oh dear, as, uh, well, 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 we'll have to hope and pray that this is not terminal. Um, for Visceral, as we see uh, visitors on towards the pit lane. That's Presanto Nomad deciding to come down in for their final stop. As you can see, oh, RT ATRS still unable to get by. And now here comes Geodesic down the inside. The effective race lead in LMP3. Battle's not going to be done coming off of Yun Sao. It's going to be a drag racer coming up towards the final corner. And, uh, the, fi and the pit's straight here. But Graham Sanders is going to be able to squeeze his way ahead. More traffic ahead that they're able to, going to be able to negotiate, but you can see how those Porsches are just so spicy quick in a straight line that the prototypes just struggle. As Sanders dies it down the inside, so does ATRS in behind as well as to not lose too much time. Yeah, and the question is if they actually lost any time in the midst of all this gap. Going down four tenths of a second, five tenths of a second between both of them. And Pristenda, no matter. Oh, this is interesting. Oof. I don't. I don't know if this could change the championship for the top two, but this makes the race a whole lot spicier. I like this. Uh, mm. I guess the amount of traffic and the amount of fighting has <laughs> really slowed down both ATRS and Geodesic so much that all of a sudden, Presanta Nomad, after you know just running the fuel tank dry, basically has been able to gain the upper hand here and, and get themselves out ahead. So it's uh, a very interesting situation. And they haven't done it by a small margin whatsoever. They are 10 seconds further down the road. Yeah, absolutely. And and and, and not only that, this this makes the race more uh, potentially gut-wrenching for core because now they more, might have to drive with more desperation. Looking at the points when they came to the championship, it was... It's not that much. I'm just trying to do mathematics here. Four, then you're probably going to add up like to 27, 24 points is the, is the point pegging between both of these cars. So uh, this could change just like that whenever this race is done. And uh, we could see a switch of the places when this race is over. Yeah, we, we could potentially see that as uh, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy how these things change so much. Um, Less than half, uh, less than half an hour to go. Now here's Presanta Nomad trying to get through on the 23 and does so in quite comfortable fashion. So puts them up into, um, yeah, 64 is in the effective lead now. So that's uh, Austin Young. So it seems like those drivers that have just stayed out, just kept themselves out of trouble, was able to run at a decent pace, not involved in any sort of battles, and they mm -hmm. reaped the rewards massively. Yeah, but uh, there's a few things to be on the lookout for on the track as uh, we still could have a potential yellow flag uh, looming large. And oh, we don't, normally don't jinx it. <laughs> I'm the king of the yellow flags. I have to bring this up. <laughs> I'm sorry, Connery. I have to bring this up because it's been a trend here on Ivra lately for us to have those late yellow flags that uh, can basically throw a, a wrench in the mix. Potentially, per... yeah. So, oh, that changes things as well. So, ATRS back past Geodesic Racing, the 62 of Graham Sanders. So, I'm not sure what was that situ what, what situation caused that. I think it was just a clean pass. To be fair, it seems like Sanders just didn't have a great lap, and and uh, oh, a, mi a miss, uh, miss of miss of the braking zone as well uh, was a big help. Yeah. Absolutely. Just taking a quick look over here. Apparently, there was a slowdown from what it looks like for Austin J. Young. Mm. I spun at the same time, but uh, I'm not 100% sure if this was at the same time or something like that as uh, the race still develops. 27 minutes and 38 seconds to go. Less than 38 seconds. 
Absolutely. So, uh, uh, of course, we are focusing on, on the battle in the prototypes because, uh, well, it's uh, it's the one that's kept us on the edge of our seats for the longest while. But there are others uh, going on further down the field as the picture outside just gets darker and darker as that sun uh, sets here um, at Interlagos. Battle for third in sport class still raging on between XPD and uh, Geodesic 462 here uh, as well. Of course, XPD still hard due on towards pit lane so this is not necessarily a battle for finishing position no not at all it's now justin rames and uh john J B john beta for his job is just finished uh it leaves the car alive you know do yeah. not kill the car do not anything about it if you want to overtake yeah you want to overtake yeah go ahead go and make that overtake work that overtake there is all good because i don't think the impulse racing will have uh, points enough for them to be in front of the uh 462 at the end of at the end of this championship hmm. as uh yeah that, that, that indeed is the situation there's uh, about for fifth in sport now geeks energy sim racing boost boost and vads by Undercuts, uh, again, a bit of a gaggle in terms of traffic here that the prototypes have to try and work through on. It's the Olympus prototype that's in the background there trying to get uh, all of these passes sorted. And it's, uh, you know, when you consider that some of these are battles for position late on in the race, you can perhaps understand why some of the lap traffic would be less than compliant to a prototype trying to get through. Yeah, absolutely. Case in point. Case in point. Now, I'm actually looking at the gap between uh, WSR Esports Butt Kicker and, and Hydro Race Geodesic. Connery, there is, tell me, confirm to me, there is no way, literally no way that Nathan Moore does his pits and, and WSR does what uh, they like to do best, like some shenanigans and strategy work. Oh no! Pass oh, no. around at Yun Sao. Boosted. Uh, oh, boosting, excuse me, not boosted. Um, as uh, they, they, they've come together and uh, let's see what happened into the Unsau. Ooh, I mean, it was early in the corner. Uh, that must that. have come together and well, another car involved in that one as well. Yeah, unfortunate to see that happen, but everybody got away and skate. No damage for everybody, just, you know, sad damage. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, in, in terms of a recap of, of the race so far, we've we've got WSR bit esports by Buck Kicker leading. They are due a pit stop. They they so they're not going to be able to get to the end on the on the field that they have right now. So they are due on towards the pit lane. Whether they'll come out in relation to Judy's X64 Presenter Nomad et al. Uh, still remains to be seen. Uh, so so they're 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 hoping that they also reap the rewards of staying out long like some of the other runners have um, because we've seen so much battling involving uh, Judy's 62 the ATRS car involving the core car where they got involved in a lot of traffic while they were all trying to battle each other as well so therefore they lost a lot of time on those drivers that were just able to keep themselves out of trouble and uh, and, and, and continue to run their races and it, and it was contact uh, between these two on the way into Yun Sao. Unfortunate to see that happen. Um, meanwhile, I'm trying to take a look on the uh, uh, on the penalty sheet right here. Uh, apparently, no major penalties for the, any of the race leaders. Uh, oh, actually, oh, sorry, battle on track on circuit right. there as uh, GOD 62 and ATRS are going at it once again. And uh, well, down the pit straight they will come in just a couple of moments' time. Uh, Geodesic ahead once again in this particular battle, but that was only temporary last time as they were able to build a gap, but they ended up getting a slowdown penalty and then miss, uh, missing a braking zone and uh, all of a sudden ETRS uh, were back through. So they're going to be hoping that they, they do not have a repeat performance of that um, towards the back end of this race. No, hopefully not. And meanwhile, uh, the only thing that is actually kind of breaking is that Persona Nova has a five second penalty. Uh, from what it looks like, I was looking at here at the uh, race control sheet that they touched the 64 on the restart. Oh, Geodesic getting blocked, getting blocked. Here comes RT, uh, ATRS Esports 3 wide into Ferrador and ATRS are back through. What a send. 
Oh, this traffic's been the name of the game here today at Interlagos. It's been chaotic. Um, it's probably uh, an understatement as they try to go around the outside of the, the Geeks Omega car. And all of a sudden, this, this Predict Battle is back to its normal status quo, it seems. It's a bit of a resistance to try and deviate from this average. Yeah, just every kind of insanity kicking off. As you can see, the Obsidian car coming into their yep. service. I don't don't think it's going to be a pit stop. Oh, it's going to be a pit stop. Okay. Yeah, absolutely is. So, WSR Esports Puck Picker, they are on the pit lane. They will uh, end up coming out. Uh, well, you can see them trundling their way down the pit line now. GDZ Racing 64 is going to work their way by. Is Presenta Nomad going to work their way by, though? They're in the background of shot there. They will not. So second place overall for for uh, WSR. That's the where they slot out into. Yeah, which is uh, that that uh, WSR strategy that used to be back when Pure Sims uh, when Pure Sims uh, the team was named Pure Sims actually. Good to know. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, battle number uh, round number three hundred fifty five again <laughs> yeah these guys just keep getting up in each other's faces and they're going to continue the battle on the uphill climb towards Feradora and then Blixley actually just straight up backs out of that one there didn't want to continue on that battle any further than it, it should have um, but in all of this gap to core now down you know back down towards around about the two second mark here as well so it's uh, uh, all of these actions, uh, they do have consequences, and and the both of them have, have lost time uh, even into, to present the Nomad further down the road. P Pibbers in the cup class as uh, Visceral 997 comes down in. Olympus Esports Proton also uh, hitting the pit lane. There's actually two Visceral uh, uh, cup cars down on towards the pit lane. Uh, the 901 is uh, also uh, down there getting its final service of the day as well. Yeah, but I'm looking over here a few things. Hildinger actually had a massive jump on the on the pit lane in comparison to the Vistro cars. Meanwhile, Marty Kynan's car is just staying way too long for our uh, for our liking. Did something happen to them? Um, well, I'm not sure. Not sure wow. at this stage. Coming up to 20 minutes to go now. Not only of this 700 kilometers of Interlagos cut a little bit short due to cautions uh, but of course this entire season as well it's been a crazy one it's been one that as well has left us hanging until pretty much the very final moments here especially with that battle in LMP3s uh, being as close as it is but at this current stage uh, it does look like uh, geodesic uh, are, are best placed uh, to be able to take the championship, but uh, I'm touching wood at the moment here, <laughs> uh, Lorenzo, because we never know what could happen uh, inside the final 19 and a half minutes that we have to run. A bit of a battle here in Sport Class, 14th place, Hyperion versus Core, um, as, as they settle their differences here. Uh, drivers and teams just having a, uh, uh, a little bit of fun, potentially towards the end of the season here, as uh, you see Core down the inside of Hyperion here, not quite able to get a significant overlap to try and make that work and uh, they'll have to end up trying to fight another day potentially getting a run into the Decida de Lago. Yeah, uh, never mind. Good battle between all these guys while the uh, impulse uh, cup car goes around. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, there's a there's a little little bit of an interesting move, uh, shall we say, through the Decida de Lago. But you can see the headlights definitely shining on the circuit now. So uh, this this uh, the, the back end of this race, you know, getting very very close to darkness as that uh, the light in the in the sky starts to fade as uh, Marcus uh, Gunzelman uh, really trying to ring out the most performance in that car as possible. Trying to get into P14 over, uh, in the sport class, having to deal with the prototype. That's Austin Young. That's the current uh, race leader, actually, looking to go the long way around. Yeah. Not going to lose a whole lot of time in the process, that was because Nathan Moore's car is also stuck with traffic. But to make things more interesting, from what it looks like, Obsidian and Brabham close to one, to one another in the track, while Fabian Siegmund is going to stick it out for a little bit longer on his stand, but I think he's safe all the way to the end. Yeah, I think he is as well. TCRs, uh, it's, yeah, it's it's 
you know they, they haven't been giving us the most entertainment in the in this final half of the uh, of the race but uh, they've definitely been doing their own thing and potentially could still show some activity in the very final moments absolutely this is a good battle for the championship just looking at the points and what they came off mm -hmm. uh, this will mean, will mean a whole lot of stuff because uh, basically, Impulse and Team Hoistingfeld have been dominating this championship, and they're basically retaining P2, P1, and P2 in the championship. Uh, battle for 13 in sport, high period and quarter round number three. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's great seeing these uh, these close battles uh, at the end of roughly four hours, um, and well, we're on 100 lap 124 five for the sport class uh here at the moment as well so it's uh it's it, it, it's great to see these guys do battle I, I do see the the front of that core car around about where the mercedes badge is uh is really punched in so they, they they've definitely been in the uh in the wars so far this race but still have some performance left in the car to try and you know, concern hyperion a little bit at the end yeah Absolutely. So some some last minute penalties uh, being served. Of course, there there is a there is a wide window for these uh, for these drivers to, to serve any penalties that they, they they've had over the course uh, of the event. So it's uh, sometimes you might see them just sort sort of taking them now rather than uh, immediately earlier on in the race when when they had them. Yeah, it's the mysterious thing about sim racing that we'll never know. It's kind of like. If you're gonna serve the penalty or take the penalty, like the double penalty or something like that, people do that from time to time. You never know. Mm. As I think we see the boots in VDS by undercut coming out of the pit lane. The satellite car also coming out of the pit lane. You're gonna lose a few spots. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a very calm 15 minutes of this race, hasn't it, uh, Connery? I'll not not action packed. It's still, it is action packed, but not as we expected it would be. Oh, well, I mean, relaxing, uh, shall we say, at the moment. Although I know there's a... Uh, well, we have to be very careful <laughs> with, uh, with saying such things. It's like uh, one of the people I, I know works as a nurse in a hospital, and you, you never say the C word. You never say it's calm, because that is just the trigger for absolute chaos to happen. You get multiple ambulances coming in with patients and things, and, it's, uh, and it just becomes very chaotic very quickly. So you don't ever say that word uh, in that sort of setting, and I get the feeling we should apply the same sort of thing to racing as well. Uh, that is true, especially with these kind of racing with the yellow flags and everything, so it's going to be an interesting one. Um, as we're going to wrap down about 14 minutes and 40 seconds, so... Still good battles going on around the track, even though Hyperion, I don't know if they're going to have car enough to hold all the charge of these people right behind. Yeah, it, it's going to be difficult, but it, it's great to see a, a big stack of cars fighting for position uh, at the very end of this race as uh, they'll come across those grid spots, across the start-finish line, starting out another lap here, but there's not going to be too many to go before we have this season done. So <laughs> late on the brakes from Core. Uh, although they've kind of messed up their run through the S's, and now it's XBD's chance to try and find a way around the outside. Nope, they're not going to carry the momentum uh, to be able to do that, as now they might come under threat from uh, Boosted in behind as well. So they're going to go to the outside, going to get squeezed a little bit on that outside line, uh, but given at least one car's width of space, uh, although with the flash of the lights, I don't think he's too happy about it. No, not at all, but at least uh, there was some space left uh, going on the Max Verstappen. Go leave space. Uh, as long as you leave space, you can still have a really good race among, the, among everybody. Yeah, absolutely. As, uh, as these guys all stacked up through this middle sector. Now, of course, we are keeping a, a relatively close eye on what's happening for... Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I was about to jinx it. I was going to say, like, the, uh, the, the we're keeping an eye on LMP3s. We did have a driver blink out, and a, well, a team blink out just very briefly. That was Presanta Noma, but it seems like they're back and seems like they're okay uh, right about now. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's that's never a, a, a scare that you want. This late on in the race to have your connection go a little bit dodgy, um, it's, uh, I mean, that's going to make you sweat, isn't it? <laughs>
Meanwhile, this battle continuing on down in the in the sport category. Mm. Um, it's great little gaggle of cars here uh, trying to settle their differences for the end of the race. One of the Porsches diving down uh, towards the inside there. There's uh, XBD uh, also involved in this one as we see the battle going on behind Boostin and uh, the, the Wave Italy uh, uh, car having a bit of disagreement there. That was the, the TCR lap traffic, shall we say. Um, but it, it kind of, that bit of traffic has spread out this particular battle uh, just a tad as we see a swap position there. That's inside the top 10 in sports. Uh, satellite racing through on Echelon. Yeah, who's driving uh, Satellite's car right now? Is Ayrton Williams. It was our fellow commentator, Ryan Walker. He decided to leave the car and leave to someone uh, that could potentially take the car all the way with some good speed. Not saying that Ryan is very slow. He's much better than me in GT cars. Um, but uh, good to know that we still have good battles uh, just outside of the top 10 in, in the biggest class in terms of numbers in this uh in this race so far yeah absolutely so um with this current situation with the current points um it, it's uh you know because we're looking at championship winners uh towards the end of this uh 12 minutes that we have to run currently in lmp3 it's the 62 of gd uh gd racing not the leading one the one that's currently in fourth place at the moment that's gonna take the championship win there um, with uh, Course in Racing second place and Presenta Nomad in third, if they finish exactly as they are right now. Um, but uh, again, this could still all indeed change in sometimes quite quick fashion. Um, in terms of your cup category, well, it's ATRS Esports very clear in terms of uh, championship lead there. So they're currently in fourth place in that particular class. So it's fourth place in LMP3, fourth place in the cup. Uh, right, now, right now, now, in terms of the AR, we'll be the respective championship winners. In terms of sports, though, um, that's the 462. So GT's at Racing Gold. Um, they, are currently, they are in the race lead, and they will take the championship win again if they finish exactly where they are. Same with Team Hoysigveld down in TCR as well so that's the current state of things and uh oh there's a massive state of things behind in the back of shot there big instant involving the uh the core sport car boosten is also involved in this one as well and will we get a yellow to finish off this race that's the question uh, that i'm asking core will try to drag that car uh back to the uh, back to the the pit lane at least but that was a very very big instant there that was just about off of off the side of our uh, of our of our screens uh, when we were looking at it but dramas inside the final 10 yeah and if we i think if we go to the final 10 this is Ooh. basically a race over as there you go the crash i don't i don't know if you can pin any blame i don't know it's it's just weird as uh, now there's about three more corners that uh, Core has to contend with, even though the tow link in the left-hand side of the car is broken. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's odd. It's an odd one. I understand why you're coming out to the inside. You try to get a better angle off the curve. But any, anyway, it is what it is. Battle for a second. This could change the championship uh, scenario, though. Potentially. Uh, WSR Esports butt kicker uh, presenter nomads. Uh, they're the ones in in in, in close contention uh, here at the moment as uh, they, they they come towards the very end uh, of their particular races. It won't change who wins the championship, but may change things just that little bit further down uh, in LMP3s. Yeah, now Core GT4 made it back to the pits. And uh, the number 56, we have still to remind, though, uh, Connery, they have a penalty still yet to take. So, yep. from what, from my perspective, I don't think I don't think they're gonna take that penalty. They might have, they might take this post race. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know if it's gonna, you know, make it a to make it a double or something like that. I cannot fully remember. But anyway, Lachlan Behrman is on the charge. Yeah, absolutely. As uh, we see uh, riding on the back bumper of that WSR Esports car, going to commit to the outside regardless of any penalty situation. We'll have a little bit of fun here in the final eight minutes of this race, angling towards the inside now. And Presenta Nomad do send it down and in, and Behrman is able to gain the position there. Meanwhile, back in sixth place in Cup, there's battles going on as well. 
as Hydra Race Studios at Racing EU and Kramer Esports CS. Uh, ooh, car slow. That's one of the Olympus cars. Weird. Very weird situation indeed. So, so hopefully everyone can get to the checkered flag here as well. We've had a couple of little problems. That was just a self-spin uh, on, uh, on, the, uh, on the part of Olympus there. And... Uh, uh, there we go, <laughs> just about uh, getting that car spun back around in the right direction. Uh, but yeah, we're in the very dire moments uh, of the season now. Battle for P2 in LMP2 still raging on between Presenter Nomad and his WSR Esports butt kicker. However, after Behrman has gotten that pass done, I see no reason why he shouldn't be able to gap WSR here. It seems like he does have the pace to be able to. Yeah, absolutely. The question is, can he bring? If the five second stand, uh, you know, gap stands, and if you get five seconds, can he still manage to break away five seconds and last in the six minutes, six minutes and thirty, and uh, then be safe without losing a position? Because I think a P two, I might be wrong. I might be very wrong. Oh, he's this one point off call. He's one. If he finishes P two, he's one point off call. Ah, uh, okay. So it's still behind. So it, it won't change anything for P2 in the championship. Unfortunate. Yeah. So uh, so so that's the situation there. It's uh, again unfortunate, but you know, yeah, so close yet so far, I guess, in that sort of uh, set of circumstances. Uh, meanwhile, of course, we uh, you know. With this, you know, last moments of the race here, we, of course, we have the uh, uh, the cup car still circling. Impulse Racing having a, a massive uh, advantage over everyone else. They won't win the championship, of course, but uh, it will be a very, very good showing um, in in the final race for for them to take into potentially uh, the next season or whatever they're doing next. Yeah, absolutely, points banking and everything as we look into the race leader in cup class, Adam Kotarski. Unfortunately, Impulse is not even closing the point standings to contend for that top two spot there in P12 in this championship. Of course, Mar with, I think, if you want to call a car with bad luck, and I think Impulse in this championship probably it is one of those cars, always been involved in early incidents, that sometimes DNFs for them. Uh, while their sister car in sport class finding themselves in a much better spot right now, battling against RGD come Curva do Sol. Third place in sport, flashing of the lights happening as well. RJD versus Impulse Racing inside the final five minutes of the race. RJD will not fight that. They will not fight that. They've obviously backed off in that situation and has just let that 457 through. At the end, this at this current point in the race, there is no point battling uh, for everything. So, looking forward to see how that uh, one will unshow, unravel. Meanwhile, uh, Visceral 997 and K Kramer uh, battling for position two, and uh, for today to go worse in uh, in the 997 camp, they have a five second uh, penalty. They're probably gonna have to serve this post race. Yeah, I, I think that is uh, is the case as well. And uh, well, they are uh, they have a decent points buffer over there of their closest competitors, so I wouldn't necessarily worry too much about it. But uh, uh, but yeah, it's, it's not really a way that you want to be finishing off your season there. But you know, that's that's just the situation they've been handed. Spinner ahead. Oh, prototype around as well. Prototype missing its front clip. Yeah, so we we had. I was just trying to see what the, who that prototype was. Was that was? Oh, it was WSR. Oh. It's WSR. They've lost their front clip. Yep. Three and a what? half minutes left to go. No, yeah, no headlights as well as pointed out by our by our producer. They're they're driving blind now. Hopefully, you know, thankfully it's not going to get too dark out there. But let's see what happened between them and Olympus. Olympus tracking out, tracking out, and coming together. And front clip goes flying. I think, uh, from my perspective, I think WSR kind of, you know, closed the gap way too quickly on... Uh, yeah, they cut in a little bit, didn't they? They cut a little bit on uh, Olympus line on the exit, so I think caught Olympus by surprise. Yeah, Luckily so for them, uh, they, they, they have about two laps to go in, in this race, so uh, they're probably not going to get uh, 
uh, two to three laps, so they're not going to get disqualified or a black flag because of this. Yeah, they, they, they don't have a meatball flag, so uh, at least they've uh, they got that going for them. But, uh, but yeah, again, drama towards the end. Balfour second in cup class is also still going on. SimCity Racing, Orion race team. Uh, that's an, an undecided uh, battle as well um, that we potentially might have to focus on for the, for the very final uh, couple of laps. But, uh, but yeah, hopefully nothing, you know, no more incidents, right? No more incidents. <laughs> Please. There we go. But um, but yeah, you see, again, just the difficulty of the traffic here. It's so, so hard to try and work your way through it. I mean, this since Largo Circuit, probably, um, I would say, you know, one of the worst potentially circuits for traffic. You know, I guess you do have that long straight to try and, and get past people, and you have the back straight potentially into the city of the Largo mm -hmm. to, to deal with traffic. But this middle sector, if you get stuck behind a fighting pair of cars, you can do nothing if you're in the faster class. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know what's worse now for uh, WSR is that they have to survive this without a bonnet, and not far behind there's Graham Sanders. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, they're having to survive. It's down to within a second now. So this will be the cherry on top of the cake for Graham Sanders and GDZ62 because not only are they currently winning the LMP3 championship, but they might have another position they can gain before this race is done and finish it on a high with a podium finish. Yeah, and next lap, I think is going to, this could be the white flag of the white race. Flag. It is a white flag. There you go, Barney. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely, Dan. So, well, that's something for Geodesic Racing to chase in their number 62 for the end of this race. But we do have the confirmation that these guys uh, are indeed on their final laps right about now. As we are right on board uh, with that number 62 car, let's see if they're able to catch and indeed pass a struggling WSR esports car that has no headlights and no entire front clip assembly. Uh, it's going to be a, a tough one for WSR to try and defend. And in fact, I don't think Geodesic will take too many risks in this situation. Although saying that, they do go to the right-hand side of a three wide on the way towards Ferratura. So who, who am I to speak? But, uh, uh, but right now, as they wind their way through into this middle sector, Graham Sanders half wanting that extra position, half wanting to just park it behind and, and, uh, and call it a championship win. Uh, but, uh, you know, a lot of racing drivers will just go for the carrot on the stick uh, directly ahead of them. But what a season it's been. What a race it's been for geodesic racing. It's the 64, piloted right now by Austin Young, which will come across the line and take the LMP3 race win here in the final race of the season uh, in the Ivra Club Sports Series. It's a fantastic race for Geodesic, but it's not that race winning car that takes the championship in the LMP3s. It is this one, piloted right now by Graham Sanders. Geodesic Racing 62 come across the line in fourth place in class. However, they take the championship in LMP3s. In terms of other classes, however, of course, they've got all of their championships and all of their race winners to talk about as well. In terms of ones that have come across the line, well, we are just uh, sort of waiting uh, for those to get themselves all sorted out. It's Geodesic again in the sport class that will come out on top. In terms of uh, in terms of that one, the 462 just coming out of Yun Sao right now, four and a half second advantage over the Geeks Energy car uh, in behind. Here comes Judizik for 462, and they will also get themselves a championship win in the sport category in the Ivor Club Sport Series, flashing the lights as they head their way across the line now. And of course, Impulse Racing in the Cup category come across the line for a race win there. Fantastic race by the 415. Actually ends up 15 seconds ahead of their closest competitors. In TCR, it's a race win and a championship win for Team Heusingfeld, the 148 through the final corner. And we'll be able to come across the line and uh, take this one. Fantastic performance from, uh, from those guys. Fabian Siegmann will bring it across the line. 
Fantastic stuff there in TCR, doing it in quite a convincing fashion as well, all things considered there in TCR. In terms of your ATRS uh, eSports car, of course, they um, have already uh, come across the line to take the championship win uh, in the Cup category as well. We didn't uh, uh, quite get them on screen. There they are, as they are flashing the light, celebrating their well-deserved championship. But that's it, at least in this particular iteration of the GSI Close Sport Series by Ivra here on iRacing. We have champions, we have race winners, of course. These, these are all provisional, pending the rest of the steward reviews and, and uh, investigations, but, uh, but we can give you the unofficial race order as these guys come on towards the pit lane. In terms of LMP3s, it's Austin Young that takes the race swing for GDZ Racing, number 64. Uh, Behrman comes across the line for Byzantine Nomads in second place uh, behind as well. Then you've got Nathan Moore in third place. Then you've got Graham Sanders, Hydro Race Geodesic Racing. Number 62 is your LMP3 Championship winner. Then you've got ATRS Academy, then Core Sim Racing. Then you've got Geodesic 72 uh, in seventh place. You've got uh, Geeks Energy Fiercely Ford in eighth. Then in ninth, you've got Olympus Esports with Kramer Racing Esports in tenth place. Then you see the rest of the LMP3s, those that unfortunately didn't have a fantastic day here today. Team Hoistingfeld number 49 in 11th with Maradnus Ember Squad in 12th and Delatraz Automotive by Majors Garage uh, rounds out the 13 runners. Down in the cup class, however, it's Adam Kotarski that brings the Impulse Racing 915 home in first place place fantastic race win for impulse then you got a ryan race team in the second place with sim city racing getting themselves a podium finishing off the podium but ending up getting the championship win regardless it is uh atrs esports in their 913 with a decent performance here today and of course getting themselves the championship sealed as well. Hydro Race Studio Desert Racing in the 962 finishes in fifth place with Visceral Esports, Crema Racing Esports, Olympus Esports, SRN, another Olympus Esports card, 946, rounding out the top 10. And of course, our final runner in cup is the Visceral 901 in 11th. Then looking down to your sport class, you've got uh, Geodesic Racing 462 taking the race win there as well. And of course, the championship win. Then you've got uh, Geeks Energy by Fiercely Ford in second, Impulse Racing in third with RJD in fourth. Glacier Racing will finish fifth here today with Sabalt Esports in sixth. Huge Ass in seventh with Geeks Energy Sim Racing 435 in eighth. Then you've got Rusty Spatulas and Satellite Racing rounding out the top ten. A couple more cars here in sport to talk about. Eshton Esports in 11th with Hyperion Racing in P12. XPD Emerald in, uh, Racing in P13. Archer Racing in 14th. And then Boosting VDS by Undercut finishing 15th here today. Corsim Racing in 16th. Of course, those latter two had a bit of an instant towards the very end of the race. Then you got Scrama Racing Esports in P17. German Sim Racing and Wave Italy rounding out the 19-car field in that class. Then we only had seven TCRs. It's uh, Team Hoisingveld taking the race win and the championship in the 148. Then you've got Bravo Beast Watts in second with Hydra Race Geodesic Racing in third. Then you've got Impulse in fourth, Obsidian in fifth, Wave Italy in sixth, and Core in seventh. So that was the top to the bottom of the entire field uh, in this final race of the season at Interlagos. The 700 kilometers of Interlagos in the GSI Club Sport Series by Ivra. We have our champions, we have our race winners, and perhaps we'll get a little bit of a conversation with the folks from the 64 first, um, because uh, they did end up taking the race win, although uh, it's the executive decision of the producer who we bring in, either the 62 or the 64. I'm not... Uh, I'm not uh, um, but we'll, we'll uh, actually, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll talk to the 64 first as the uh, as the prototype and overall winner um, in this race. And well, we've got uh, Austin Young uh, in the commentary booth now. Austin, of course, all of the pomp and circumstance and all of the celebrations will, will definitely be more towards your sister car at the moment. But you didn't have a bad race yourself in the 64. Uh, just tell me how it feels to to win this race, and of course, uh, you know, as geodesic as a whole, taking the the, the championship wins not once but twice today yeah uh, first off for the overall team great day absolutely great day 
Um, yeah, for us, we had a uh, we had a substitute um, with Brandon. He came in and put in a lot of work this week and drove incredible. He a lot of this um, is is from him today. So I'm proud of him. Very pleased. Yeah, absolutely, uh, and of course, with, with, with your view of the of the race, especially towards the end there, because he had a, a bit of an interesting strategy dynamic with that final caution. Of course, Core went with the gamble. They might, have, the hand might have been forced with drive time, depending on what the situation was. They stayed out. Everyone else came in. Um, uh, what was your what was your approach to that sort of situation? Were you worried, or were you just sort of okay? This will work out for us in the long run, especially if we don't get another caution before the end of the race. What was the situation from your view? Yeah, so we had initially kind of planned to do two stops after that. And I came out of the last corner and they came over the radio and told me to pit because there's a, a safety car going to come out. Mm -hmm. And so we did that. And then as the fuel kept ticking down and down and down, I, I was able to realize we, we didn't need tires. Mm -hmm. um, so that first stint was all about managing the tires. And then the second stint, I could just push. But I, I liked our strategy and thought we had the upper hand um, with the strategy from the jump. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, yeah, but but you know, I, I would say go and go and enjoy the race win. Go and in, enjoy celebrating with your teammates because there's a lot that Geodesic have to celebrate right now. So I, I would say go and enjoy that, and we'll get to speak to your to your sister car here in a moment. Absolutely, we will. Thank you, guys. There we go. That was uh, Austin Young in the 64 um, overall race winner here today. But we'll also get to speak uh, to the drivers from the 62 car as well. Uh, me, we have Miguel Vigo and we have Graham Sanders here. I'll go to Graham first, but uh, of course it was a fourth place here today, so off the podium. But you got the important job done, right? You you got the championship win. Uh, just take me through your feelings right now. Oh, uh, sort of no words. It's, uh, it's yeah, it's, it's, ecstatic. It's pretty incredible. Um, we've, uh, you know, after last year, both, both in endurance and club sport, they were both pretty rough, uh, rough seasons aside from John and Justin winning the championship last year. So coming into the, into this season, there, were, there was so much that we had to prove, you know, and, um, being able to come, uh, out with a championship, um, four wins on the season and, uh, back-to-back -back title for John and Justin in the, in the 462 is, it's just incredible. Yeah, they did. Uh, amazing job with all the team. Um, I'm just happy that me and Graham finally locked down a championship after trying for so many years. So that's, uh, that's what I'm happy about. Yeah, it, it was great seeing you, you, your guys' performances there, and of course, uh, Miguel. You know, you were uh, you you handed the car off to to, to Graham to, uh, to to end up finishing that race. Was, was that a, um, a sort of okay? My job is done now, Graham. You go and you go and get it and finish this thing off. And then, did you have any nerves associated with that? Oh my God, man! I mean, my heart rate was like 160 plus for the for the qualifier. I mean, all these guys were just super close in qualifying and uh, you know i'm glad we were able to provide a show and you know our goal coming here we knew we needed to get the halfway points and it's just something that we've kind of never really did for the season while core has you know great job to them um and so we knew we had no matter what we just needed to stay ahead of core and um you know um, unfortunately we got that uh five second penalty that kind of hampered us a little bit uh, but we were to able to capitalize on, you know, their mistakes essentially because they kind of made a wrong pit pit call, um, and so that kind of really helped us out. So, um, so yeah, towards the end there, it was just hand the car to Graham and just stay clean and stay ahead of core, and you know, we we were good. Yeah, uh, Graham, just take me through that final stint though, because that was an interesting dynamic that you guys had going on. Because of course you were. Uh, dealing with ATRS uh, being, uh, for all intents and purposes, a bit of a nuisance. Um, w w did that rattle you a little bit, or, or did you know that you know even if that you lost out to ATRS, you still had the pace to keep ahead of core? You know, um, it's that's kind of funny you say that. I I kind of thought they were working with me pretty well, especially because I, mean, I had passed them the first time, and then the mm -hmm. very next lap I get a slow down, had to let them by, caught back up, and then it it, it didn't seem like they were fighting too hard. Um, but all I was trying to focus on was that core was behind us and that where we were, even if we had finished P5, we were going to win that championship. So I just had to keep that in mind and, uh, and just keep the car clean and just make it to the end. 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I would say go and uh, enjoy a, a well-worked championship. Like you said, it was uh, it's a very long time coming, but but finally you guys have gotten there, uh, and just take just take the moment to, to to enjoy it because you know it is a it is a massive achievement. You guys have been working at this for so many years, so uh, um, so yeah, go, go go and savor it. And well, I guess you'll be back for uh, for another season of endurance racing soon. Yeah, thank you so much. I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, our sponsors, Hyder Race and uh, GSI. Uh, they've been with us for a long time, and I just want to give them a shout out uh, for all the help and, and all that stuff that they provide for us, for the team, and uh, and all that stuff. And uh, as well as Ivra and you guys for broadcasting. You guys are awesome. We we love watching you guys. Uh, so props to you, and, and thanks for, uh, for for all the broadcasting that you guys do for us. Uh, you, you guys are more important. If we had no drivers, we would have no race. So it's, uh, uh, yeah, but it is much appreciated. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you next season. Take care. Well, that was the number 62. Um, that was the LMP3 championship winner uh, here in the GSI Club Sport Series by Ivra here on iRacing. And uh, Lorenzo, I'm just going to uh, call on your services uh, just for a moment because we do have the uh the w the race winner in uh in in the cup category uh with us right now one the the one the, excuse me the 915 uh pascal costa representing impulse racing team take it away lorenzo absolutely so pascal congratulations on the win and after a tough season for you guys it must be uh bittersweet to run out this uh championship with a good win yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the great goal was to end it with a bang because um, yeah, the season was not uh, what we expect from the season. So we had a lot more to give than we showed up to. But uh, yeah, um, Adam and me practice a lot, and uh, we we push ourselves uh, to the limit and uh, practiced exact for that race. And um, yeah managed the tires in the window and that got us the win that we could double stint it with uh, giga pace nice you know, i was actually going to be asking that uh was there any points that you guys saw comfortable comfortable uh, and being comfortable actually to double stint tires and uh which point do you, do you think was that uh you know threshold of oh, oh we can double stint tires without being ever concerned of uh you know saving them at the end uh, you mean uh, from fuel wise which uh, tire wise fuel? tire wise tire wise yeah we we, we practiced um, for that cause and started to refine our inputs so we do not demand that much of the tire by being consistent overall and fast overall and that uh, just yeah got us the win because we had so much uh, percentage left uh, on each uh, stop uh, that we decided to do a half, I, I think it was half a, a fuel tank uh, on the on the same tires, and still had a lot uh, or s some tire left at the end. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, Pascal, I will let you you know enjoy your win, and uh, hopefully we can see you next season here at Ivory Club Sport, and uh, and uh, and hopefully you guys get a better season, of course. Thank you very much. Yeah, I hope so too. Uh, we will give our best. Thank you very much for having us. And thank you for the great broadcast. It's a pleasure. There we go. Another problem. 915 Pascal Costa representing Impulse Racing Team there. And uh, we will get the opportunity uh, to have a little bit of a chat uh, potentially to the 913s. Uh, uh, well, the well, the 913, um, the, the, the championship winner here. If we can uh, find a particular representative. I think I think Sebastian is, um, is going to be from ATRS. So we'll get Sebastian uh, into the commentary booth here. Uh, I gotta say congratulations, Sebastian. Uh, ATRS have themselves a championship win in the cup category. Uh, of course, you, you know you uh, Magnus Nielsen f finished that car off uh, for you. Of course, you were a part of it as well. Uh, just take me through emotions at the moment because it was a, it was a long and hard fought season, but uh, at the end, you you were able to get it in the bag. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. It's been a long season with multiple uh, teammate changes along the season. Maunus came in here in uh, the latest week and has made an incredible job to get up to speed and yeah, finishing off this way is uh, just perfect. Yep, it, it was 
pretty much perfect uh, for you you guys in, in this particular race. You, you know, finishing a, a very healthy amount of points ahead uh, of your next closest competitor. So uh, I, I imagine in this race, uh, for you guys, it was more of a don't mess this up situation rather than we need to go chasing for something. Yeah, it was uh, probably a, what you would call just survival racing, mm -hmm. just keeping it on the, on the track. And uh, yeah, don't get any penalties. So uh, yeah, it was a very great race and turned out nicely for us. Uh, so, so what's going to be happening in the future then for you guys? You know, uh, well, what's on the immediate horizon and, and potentially what might be further in the future? I know you guys have got yourself your, your qualification <laughs> into the higher tier, but uh, I, I just want to hear it from you. Yeah, I definitely think that, uh, of course, we will be back for the next season. And uh, yeah, let's see. It's not me taking the big decisions at the team, so uh, <laughs> let's see. Yeah. Well. Oh. Well. It'd be. It'd be. It'd be very nice to see you again uh, as sort of you know at this level of competition and higher. So it would be. Uh, yeah. It would be. It would be great. But uh, uh, thank you very much for joining us, uh, Sebastian. And uh, of course, give give Magnus the the congratulations as well because he you know he brought that car home uh, at the very end of the race. But uh, congratulations, guys. Yeah. Thanks. See you next season. All right, there we go. So that was uh, ATRS Esports, the 913. That seeks the championship win in uh, in the category. Uh, and now we, we change gear a little bit because, well, we, we have to interview two winners of their classes and also championship winners of their classes. So, Lorenzo, I'm going to call on your services again, and we're going to have a little bit of a chat with the sports category, not only winner, for this race but also winner of the entire championship the 462 geodesic racing another championship winner lorenzo you got this one yeah so john beta for with me i know justin is not around here i think he's busy maybe he's doing some other stuff but uh, john man i think this has been the john and justin show in gt4s uh, what is the trick to get around these cars first and foremost uh well first of all justin did a great job putting it on pole so it makes it a lot easier for me um, but yeah, overall, I think we just put a lot of time in the GT4 and we, we prep a lot for these races. So we're ready to go on race day. Right on. And, uh, talking about this race in particular, right? Uh, a race, I think you guys saw more, you know, comp competitiveness from other drivers. You guys had to, you know, get out your way to sometimes get into the lead, sometimes, uh, you know, try to survive the whole ordeal of the traffic. How was the race for you guys, uh, as a whole? Um, I think the race went really well from start to finish. Uh, the track felt really good. Um, Justin put on pole and was able to lead some laps and then um, kind of stuck around towards the front. Uh, I think we were he won at halfway and then um, you know towards the end I, uh, I think we were we were in a good spot. We pit early just in case there was a safety car and so I think we had it pretty well planned out and I think we executed everything to perfection today. Right and now uh, with the you know you guys not only get the uh the automatic entry into the 24 hours esports next season you guys have already a car into that uh, justin drives that car and you guys are coming back next season what are the plans what are what is the team uh, concocting uh, for next season yeah the plan is definitely to come back and um you know try and defend this championship it's back to back for us so i think a, a three-peat would be a fun challenge um you know this class is a lot of fun to battle in with uh, the other teams impulse did a great job all year um you know, you know the, 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 this is a very deep field, so it's always fun to race them and, and see uh, how we turn out as far as strategy and pace goes. Absolutely. Well, John, we'll let you rest, you and Justin, and we'll hope to see you uh, the next season and, to, and, like you said, defend, and, like you said, defend that tree peat. All right. Thanks very much. Well, there we go. That was the conversation there with the 462 Hydro, uh, Hydro Racing Racing Gold, who ends up taking the sports championship winner. We've got one more championship winner to talk to. That's the 148. That is Team Hoisingfeld. Uh, F uh, Fabian Siegmann uh, joining us uh, from that particular team. And uh, Fabian, it's... Uh, uh, again, it was a hard, uh, you know, hard work all season. You guys, of course, came into this uh, event in a, in a pretty good spot indeed. Uh, but you just, you guys just needed to finish it off, and you did do in in, in a very, very good fashion. Just take me through what it's what it's like to be a, a championship winner. Yeah, thanks for the nice words. Uh, it, it feels great. Um, I mean, it was the target, obviously, uh, coming into the race with uh, quite a solid margin. 
Um, but nevertheless, it's. Uh, I mean, you still have to bring it to the end. And today's race was really chaotic uh, in a in a weird way <laughs> somehow. So uh, we had uh, these these multiple cautions, and um, even during the cautions, I felt like everyone is kind of going crazy <laughs> in some way. So the, those restarts were were crazy, and and uh, we also had some close checkups under the cautions. So. Mm. Yeah, we just try to avoid everything, and in the end, we managed a good good strategy. And uh, Patrick did an amazing job to to hand me the car uh, with a very close distance to the leader and uh, only one off track, so I could uh, <laughs> really push for the end of the for the end of the race with 49 off tracks to spare. So yeah, really great race. Yeah, I mean, it's a whole part of the game, right? <laughs> you know, trying to, to manage those those instant points uh, at the very end there. But you, you guys win in, in, in such a, uh, emphatic fashion, right? Um, you, you are you guys looked relatively dominant, of course. You know, with the uh, um, with the cautions coming and going, of course, you were put into some weird circumstances sometimes. But it, it seemed like overall that your pace wasn't easily matchable out there today. Would that would you credit? you know most of that to, to, to you guys ended up winning the season or is it some extra little thing that we don't know i i, I think it's uh it's a little bit of everything um i mean you you can't win a race or or can't win a whole season if you have no pace so it was uh important that that um we had good pace today but um in tcr today especially wave italy also had a really really strong pace and if they would uh, would have done a clean race, then it would have been a close fight with them. But uh, somehow they collected dozens of penalties, <laughs> uh, which was of course uh, good for us. So they disappeared quite quickly towards the back of the field, and um, from from then on, I th I felt like we could control it quite well. Uh, yeah, and, and it was very well controlled as well. It's uh, you, you didn't seem to really have that many situations where we were concerned for you. So it, yeah, it was it was a, it was a great run today. Um, what about the future though? Uh, what, what's happening in the uh, Fabian Siegmann and Team Heusenfeld camp over the next couple of months? Have you got anything exciting? <laughs> um, not not sure really. I can only speak for myself um, and also some some of uh, our drivers in the TCR crew. So after winning, I think for me personally, it's the third time in a row now, uh, TCR class, uh, we we really consider switching classes for for next season. Mm -hmm. um, nothing is certain yet, but yeah, I I kind of got a got a nice taste in driving prototypes during the Sebring 12 hours recently. So yeah, maybe maybe you'll see me driving a prototype next season. Oh, ah, well, hearing hearing it here first. There we go. Fabian Siegmund <laughs> in the prototype next season. Let's 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 get it. It's going from the slowest class to the fastest class. Let's go. Um, but uh, but th thank you very much for joining us, uh, Fabian. And I'll I'll let you get back to your team and celebrate. Thanks. Bye bye. All right, there, Fabian Siegmund from the 148 Team Heusingveld car yeah, down in TCR. There, Lorenzo. So we had a conversation with all of our championship winners, all of our race winners. And I'm at a loss of what to do now. It's the end of the season. What do we do? What do we do with that ivory? I do, yeah, what do we do? Well, we still have the Endurance Championship. Of course. Right, uh, of if course. we want to talk about it. Uh, just going to grab the schedule right here because I know the last race is going to be a Fuji. And we probably know it's going to be... It might be a rain-filled race. It's, it's right around the Japanese, you know... Uh, Spring, spring, but we know it, it, it raises a lot of lottery right there uh, from time to time. But, time. but uh, it's going to be a compelling race and lots of things to be decided in the championship over there, in my point of view. And I know, like, for example, uh, Hoisy Vader is going to come back next week at uh, the 24 Hours Esports. So uh, lots of things to unravel. There's still a lot of interest championships to unravel on, not only for them, but here at RacePod as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So while this is the end of the club sports series for this season, still yet more Ivra action to keep you excited uh, coming up very, very soon. We can even have a look at the schedule for that as well. Um, so this is for the Ivra Endurance series, uh, series, which is not quite done just yet. It's an old graphic, so ignore the 16th of March one. But as you can see, the 12 hours of Fuji. 
um, is going to be on the 27th of April. So we got a couple of weeks until then. So you might have to wait to get your next bit of Ivor fix. But, uh, but that one's going to be super, super fun. Especially, like Lorenzo said, uh, the time of year where it's taking place there in Japan. We might see the iRacing weather model rear its head there and uh, give the drivers something to think about. But as far as the Club Sports Series is concerned, we will have to draw it to a close. Thank you very much for everyone for making all of these seasons possible. Thank you for uh, so much to the drivers. Congratulations to the teams that ended up taking championship wins. Uh, thank you to the sponsors of the series as well, our title sponsors. Of, uh, of, of GSI and of course you know VCO for their uh, particular support as well us on the broadcast with the commentators and the producers that we've had over the course of this season we really could not do it without any uh, of those people uh, uh, it's, 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 it's really definitely not a one person show here when it comes to running a league but with that we of course we will have to say goodbye here from Interlagos but it's not the end of either action in the the next couple of weeks. But until the next season, we all have to say goodbye from the Club of Sports series.